<laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Can you guys hear me? Uh, there. Can you hear me? Uh, if you can hear me, type one. You know, and if you can't hear me, type two. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I fucked up again. Yes, yes, one, one. Is there echo? Echo? No? Well, okay. And uh, if you see my visage and you're screaming now, uh, press uh, F. <laughs> okay, so I'm so sorry. I fucked up again. The fucking tech is just fucking beyond me because I'm a boomer and fuck you very much. Uh, let me see to the other... There are like 112 people waiting. Shit, in the other place. Can you guys just go over to the other... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, to the other uh, thing and just tell them to hop onto this, the correct stream, the I Can't Do Fucking Tech Sunday stream. You know, you're going to have to uh, be so kind uh, and to go over there to the other one and tell them that we are all here. I hope we are all here. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me just uh, put it in the chat over on that one. I don't know what the fuck happened. You know, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just a boomer. I'm just an old man. I'm 50. You know, I remember when I was a young man and they brought electricity to our home. I remember when they brought running water. I remember when I was like 12, 13 and, and having to spend hours to learn this thing they call the toilet, you know. It's new to me, new technology, what the fuck? You know, don't expect that much from me, okay? So, uh, listen, you little shits, there is a Discord server, my Discord server. Uh, let me figure out a way to create an invite for everybody. Copy. Uh, let me, and let me just check the chat. Chat, all good? Uh, see, calling out the games. Echo to his voice. I'm adding an echo to my voice. I don't know how to stop that. Yes, I did see Godwinson's reply. Fix the echo boom. Shit. Okay. Um, Do I have an echo? Press one if no. Press no if one if no echo. There's still an echo. Let, let, give it a minute for the chat to catch up. Mute the stream. Yeah, I did mute the stream. Uh, did I mute the stream? Yes, I did mute the stream. The, okay. Uh, one, I assume, no echo. Okay. Okay. You know. No more echo. Good. Okay. So, we're going to have some guests on. I'm going to send them the invite now. So that they, uh, well, the thing is, see, okay, sorry, I'm a little frazzled. I'm a little frazzled. What can I say? I'm a little frazzled, and I'll explain why. Because I get into the studio at like a fucking ungodly hour. I get in here at like 5.30 in the morning, right? And that's okay. I wake up normally between 4.30 and 5. It doesn't matter what time I go to sleep. I just wake up between 4.30 and 5. Uh, and it's not the kids, it's just a thing. Okay, so anyway, I wake up between 4.30 and 5. Um, I find out that Godwinson did a video about me. Uh, yeah, I made him sweat, visibly sweat on the video. That was kind of funny. Um, I check that out as, a, as I'm showering, right? And uh, then walking to my studio. And then I get to the studio and the fucking internet isn't working, right? Fuck! Right. And so it, it was a minor, minor thing. I just had to reset the router and shit. But, you know, I'm fucking panicky. And then I'm doing the OBS and I can't get the fucking right fucking stream key and shit. You know, I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm old. I'm old. So anyway, um, finally figured out the um, the OBS, but I wound up having two fucking streams going on simultaneously. One is announcing it and the other is like actually happening, which is the one here. Um, and so, anyway, how many people are showing up to this? I have 400 fucking people! 383 people so far. 
bless your hearts and, and clearly you must go out there and get a life for yourselves. I'm, I'm telling you, just go out and get a life for yourselves. If you're watching me, this is sad. It'd be, you know, come on. You know, yeah, there's so much promise in your life. Don't throw it away. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to take questions because this is my thinking on the stream issue. The stream issue is it is supposed to be an interaction between you, the audience, and myself as a content creator. Okay, and the Discord server, uh, let me put it in the chat. Um, I have a Discord server that you are all welcome to join up to. And I'm, put, I'm dropping it in the chat right now. There we go. And I'll drop it a couple of more times uh, so that, uh, you know, you guys... Um, by the time you guys catch up, the chat catches up, you know, it won't be so bizarre that I'm dropping that in. But the point is, you know, I want you to hop on the Discord if you're, if you're on Discord, because I'm interested in getting your live questions, okay? Live questions, you know, ask me anything. Because remember, there is no such thing as an indiscreet question. There are only indiscreet answers, okay? Words to live by, words to live by. So I'm dropping the Discord one last time, and now I'm going to go to Discord. Oh, and before that, I'm going to send off to Daisy Cousins, this lovely Australian girl who's going to be joining us, and Ethan Ralph of Late of the Ralph Retort. He's also a lovely, lovely person. And now I'm going to the green room I'm going to the Discord, and I'm doing this thing where I pull in somebody. And hello, Mongoose, how's it going? Oh. I, uh, I need to meet you for a second on your screen. Okay, let me see here if, if this is happening hello. properly. Hello. Good, hey. how are you? Pretty good, Daisy, how's it going? You're looking really good. very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, Mongoose, do you hear Daisy and myself? Uh, yes. Daisy, do you hear Mongoose? Mongoose, say something. I do. I hear everyone. Great, great, great. It's uh, tech issues. I was, I was explaining to chat, you know, I'm like a boomer and this whole tech thing, you know. The advent of electricity has thrown me for a loop and now this computer shit is just beyond yeah. me. So anyway, uh, Mongoose, what's your question? Uh, question, comment, critique, whatever. <laughs> talked about your life, but I don't necessarily know what you work in to the point where you were able to travel around as much as you have. Like, what field are you in exactly? Oh, okay, Mongoose. That, that's a very good question. I'm going to put you out. I'm going to put you back in the green room. Um, the, what, the field I started in originally, I was a writer. I, I, th this is my life story, if you want to be bored by it. Um, I was... Um, I was living in Chile and I went to college when I was 17 to study business administration and economics, kind of like one of those uh, five-year Wharton type programs. And I went twice and I got kicked out twice because I was basically chasing girls and just partying and just not being a very good student. And so uh, after that, I was like 19, 20, and I started bumming around uh, Latin America and working as an English teacher, English as a second language. And that's when I realized that I had to get like a real job, like a real job and, and, and like a real career and like real, like grow up, you know. Teaching English was one of the best experiences of my life because um, it just taught me just to be a, an adult, you know. And after that, I went to college uh, in the U.S. I was, uh, what, 23 when I went to college and I graduated in 95 uh, with uh, degrees in uh, history and philosophy. Russian history specifically, and in philosophy, I specialized in uh, epistemology. And uh, Hegel, Hegel's uh, philosophy of right was like a big thing for me at the time. And uh, then I went to Hollywood. I went to Hollywood to make it as a screenwriter. I was me marginally successful as a screenwriter, uh, but I got into novel writing, and I made a lot of money as a thriller writer. And from there, I just sort of like graduated into film production in Chile and film directing, and then from there, I sort of like migrated over into venture capital, 
and just doing different things. And in 2008, I started worrying about the financial crisis and I was heavily invested at that time in the financial crisis and I started writing thoughts about it in a blog and that blog got really popular. And, uh, and I did that for a bit like publicly, you know, like doing the blog, but um, privately I was just doing investments, like I said, venture capital, you know, basically putting money into things that might become good businesses. And then I dropped out of the online world for a few years because I focused on one very big project. It was a solar energy project. It was basically to acquire, you know, fuck you money. And after that, uh, after that was all settled, I started just uh, getting into YouTube as a hobby. As a hobby and also because, you know, I have small children. And I have, my daughter is five and my son is three and uh, I'm 50. And so I wanted to put down on video like things that I think would be useful, especially to my son, because girls are easier. Girls are smarter. Guys are stupider. Okay. We're really, really smart in like tech problems, right? Uh, we're very art autistic. We're able to focus very <laughs> carefully on, on tech things, right? But in so far as life, you know, and thinking about my own situation and my own life experience, I realized that I wish I'd known when I was 20, the things I know now. And had I, even heard, but not really paid attention, but just heard some of the things that I know now, I might have made better decisions. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why I started doing the videos. Yeah. So anyway, Daisy, sorry about that. Um, no, that's okay. Oh, and, and I see that uh, Ralph Retort is here. Ethan, how's it going? Going pretty good, coach. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Um, how's life treating you at Stream Me? Pretty good. Pretty good so far, man. You know, making do, trying to turn uh, lemons into lemonade here. You know, I'm not allowed to, uh, to own a channel on YouTube anymore, but you know how it goes. Yeah, uh, Daisy. Daisy and Ethan, I don't think you guys know each other. Uh, I don't believe so, no. No, Daisy. Oh, don't know each other. Yeah, Daisy is this lovely woman. Uh, she runs a channel, and she's, uh, she's from our neck of the woods. She's like a typical, like, one of us, kind of like she started out as a lefty <laughs> and migrated and is now like a crypto fascist like all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I know how uh, that see, goes. Here's oh, the thing, shit. though. I was I was never a lefty. Technically, I used to have fights with my very left wing friends on Facebook all the time when I was promoting the Conservative Party in Australia. But I had a few very kind of misguided, shall we say, feminist beliefs that were pushed upon me by the fashy feminists in the mass media, and I had no other information to sort of disprove it. But then. Um, I discovered um, the lovely Miley Yiannopoulos who completely red-pilled me and I thought, well, feminism is stupid. They've done nothing but lie to me and they're making me unhappy because they're making me angry and resentful. So F you to them. And so now I'm, I'm with you all as, a, as an anti-feminist crypto-fascist, I guess, if you want to call yeah. it that. Yeah. Oh, oh, to the chat, you know, after the live stream, we're all going to go march with tiki torches down uh, yeah. Constitution <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> you know, so you're cordially invited. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, Ethan is like, uh, well, you know, he's the, he was the biggest, um, uh, live streamer. What, what would you call yourself? The, well, the tagline that we had was the biggest, uh, late night show on YouTube. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. which is, was factually correct until a few weeks ago when they rudely, uh, sunsetted us from, from the service. So we're, yeah. we're making do over at streaming now, so. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a violent sunsetting. It was it was uh, <laughs> nasty, nasty, nasty. And uh, well, yeah, it's a um, Daisy doesn't know the lore that that we're basically in the middle of an internet war uh, between the uh, <laughs> Sargonistas and the and everybody else basically. No. Yeah, I've heard I've heard about it. You mentioned to me uh, you mentioned it to me briefly the other day, but I don't know any of the kind of gory details. Oh, they're so, gory. So I'm interested, <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to find out what's going on. Ethan, I leave that in your capable hands. Oh, uh, well, I mean, so which part should I start with here? I mean, <laughs> talk about V uh, and Vor. <laughs> That's a great place uh, to start. <laughs> Well, we've been, I don't know, we've been making fun of Sargon and V and all of them for, for many months. Uh, and actually, uh, I did a charity stream. Uh, September the 29th was the heel stream. Mm. And it was partially to raise money for St. Jude and partially to troll Sargon. And it went pretty good for a month or so. I uh, didn't hear much about it, and then all of a sudden, uh, the Wall Street Journal, mysteriously, I don't know who put them up to that, but uh, wrote a hit piece about me, and uh, uh, that's why I got kicked that's off. Terrible. 
That's yeah. terrible. It is. It is terrible. How frustrating. It's awful. Yeah, well, it wasn't my wasn't my fondest day, but we've got we've gotten a lot of support and people have been yeah. uh, following us over stream dot me slash the Ralph Retort. I'll do my cheap plug there. So no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, as much as you want. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> well, it's uh, the thing is so frustrating is that because YouTube is essentially a monopoly, uh, uh, mm. if you get kicked off of this platform, you're screwed. And it really, really hurts the possibility of bringing in new audience members. You know, when when uh, when Ethan was uh, doing the Ralph retort on YouTube, he was peaking out at eight thousand live viewers, and it was only wow. growing. Yeah, and he was on the trending page of YouTube and the whole bit. And that oh. trending page just you know takes on a life of its own, and and more and more people mm. show up and stuff. And and so you know, it's it's no fucking fair. And I, no. I think it's it's grossly unfair because uh, Ethan's show was just, um, y- you know, I'm not I'm not like trying to like uh, curry favor with you or anything like that. But your show is always very careful to toe the line and never act in ways that would be considered untoward, or or talk in ways or refer to anything that would break the YouTube TOS. I think it's incredibly unfair, and it's uh, <laughs> the the the, um, the goddamn Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Well, yeah, fuck the Wall Street Journal. I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it is harder to to like get new uh, audience members. A lot of people followed us over, but when you're not, so it's also YouTube is just. I think it's like the number one or number two biggest website in the, the world. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people just they're on YouTube all day long. You know yeah. what I mean? Um. So getting them to come to a new service, some people just aren't gonna come. I mean, that's just how it works. They're not. You probably won't see them again. Uh, but the uh, majority of our core audience has, has followed us over, so um, it's, it's been going good. It is a little uh, disconcerting, but, you know, you just have to keep rolling. We, we're also getting a lot more podcast downloads now. I've noticed those have pretty much tripled. Really? Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I don't know. We'll keep it moving. Well, anyway, um, the point of this uh, stream was to do a, an AMA and asking me anything. So um, before we sort of like move on, let me do the quick super chats because um, because why not? Hang on. Victor Drenza, Dresna, say, uh, hello, Victor, says, hey, coach, what's it like in Ukraine right now? Do you hear them test sirens? Were you awake when the catch, catch trait incident happened? I don't know what that is. Good luck. Well, yeah, <laughs> supposedly something horrible is happening between Ukraine and Russia. And I'm in, in East Ukraine. But to tell you the truth, nothing much is going on. But oddly, through my window, there's like some explosion. And I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing much is happening. Uh, no, no, look, this is a very big country. OK, it's uh, bigger than France. It's uh, frankly the largest country in uh, Europe. And so, you know, the things that are happening in one part of the country or the other don't affect really where I'm living. So it's not that big of a deal. Thoughts, uh, Rawhide76, uh, thank you, Rawhide, says, uh, thoughts on IRS thought patrolling, Ben Snapchat. Oh, ban Snapchat. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of that whole IRS uh, thought patrol, the, the whole thought gate? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll, let, I'll, I'll just go ahead and get my take real quick. I just think it's funny. Uh, personally, I try to avoid any uh, unneeded, <laughs> unwanted contact with the authorities, so I'm not going to be uh, turning anybody in. I don't, I don't really like interacting with them much, given my history. But uh, I mean, I'm just sitting back laughing at it, kind of. So, yeah. I mean, uh, Daisy, do you know what's going on there? I I vaguely know it's it's something to do with women who post suggestive photos of themselves on Instagram are getting paid money for it or getting reported to the IRS because they haven't paid their taxes. Is, is that, is, that's, that's the, that's just what I've, yeah. that's the, oh God, well. <laughs> it's goddamn Look, funny. <laughs> it's, it's, I hate to laugh at it because I, I feel really, really sorry for them. And as, as, you know, small government conservative, I believe in low, low taxes. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, if, if you do the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing. Um, but I just think who has that much time on their hands that they will sit there and report random Instagram accounts of girls taking their clothes off? to the IRS for not paying the taxes. I mean, like, you mustn't have much of a life if you're doing that. Um, But the the ir I feel really sorry for them, but the irony is not lost on me. And I'm trying very hard not to laugh. (laughs) No, I I personally find it- That is tricky, it's tricky. I I find it funny. Uh, My thing (laughs) is, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, nobody likes getting like, oh, I'm I'm like uh, gonna flip it up on the, on chat insofar (laughs) as my my screen. Uh, Yeah, I think it's funny. 
I think that also, Daisy and, and Ethan, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think a few of these women sort, were sort of like bragging about the fact that they were getting away with this, that they weren't. Yes. Oh, that's just dumb. Wow. Like, <laughs> why, would, why would you do that? I know it's this generation, I'm guessing they were all like kind of young in the, in the 20s. It's this generation of, of people who think that everything in their lives needs to go on social media because they, they've, they've grown <laughs> Including up. Including that, that they're ripping been, off the IRS? <laughs> yeah, like even, even that, they're, they're, they're so obsessed with it and it's so, so sort of important. I mean, you know, remember when David Hogg, who I hate, um, was posting stuff about not getting into colleges and Laura Ingram made fun of him for it. Well, that was perfectly justified because it's it's so stupid. Like, why would you do that? So um, just the idea of putting anything about the IRS or taxes on the internet, particularly Instagram, well, that's just dumb. Like, <laughs> just dumb for doing that, and it makes it a bit funnier, actually. It is probably best to keep your blatant criminality under wraps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like that uh, Chipotle, yeah. the Chipotle uh, Dash and Diners, you know, the whole Chipotle thing. I don't, Daisy, you probably haven't been on top of that. It's uh, like an American cultural no, thing. No, no. Okay, well, Enlighten like, me. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, it's, it's very simple. What happened was that this, um, this manager at Chipotle decided that uh, these diners who had come in, she knew that they were Dash and Diners or, or uh, diners and dashers or whatever it's called, right? Where they would eat and then leave before paying the bill. And so mm. she demanded that they pay up front, which is perfectly, in the United States at least, it's perfectly within the rights of the manager to do so. And uh, they, uh, the, these kids filmed the whole interaction and they said it was oh, racism. Oh, I know, I blah, know blah. this story. It was the black kids, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> it was racism. Oh, yeah. That's I, racist. I saw, <laughs> oh, I saw, I saw all of that um, unfolding on on Twitter, and um, I, I just I just thought you you, you could tell um, that the manager was kind of permanently frustrated by these kids. It had nothing to do with the fact that they were black. It had to do with the fact that they, as she said. Well, you don't. You never have the money. You never pay for the meal. And as you say, it's perfectly within the rights of a manager to do that. But it was—it's just so typical of them to take it and turn it into like a race war issue, and for everyone to kind of pick up on it and perpetuate. There's this white supremacy, this huge uprising going on in America, and businesses are, are suffering for it. This kind of stupid social justice push from the left that gets fanned the flames of social media. Um, you know, and people, are, you know, businesses pitulate to it as well because I guess they think they have no choice. But um, yeah, it. I, I just looked at it. I thought, are you anyone um, with a scrap of critical thinking skills would look at that situation, look at all the videos, and think, okay, I can see exactly what happened here, and it has nothing to do with the fact that they're black. But no one, <laughs> no one seems to kind of go with that. They go for this sort of knee-jerk emotional reaction, and next minute she's fired for doing her job, and the the sender's having to go sort of cultural sensitivity training. That was the last I heard of it. Yeah, that, that that's basically it. Uh, and the thing is, see that the these morons had uh, posted on social media of previous times that they'd uh, uh, dined and dashed. And so it was sort of like the, the thought patrol issue that, that they, they if, if you do a crime, don't tell anybody. I once committed a crime when I was 16. OK, uh, I'm not going to say what it was, but it was a fairly serious crime that I realized retrospectively could have put me into, you know, juvenile detention or whatever. I mean, possibly I I mean, had I been over 18, I would have gone to jail for it. Right. It was it. it, it nobody was hurt or anything like that. I just want to make that very clear. I never told a soul about it, the specifics about it. Because if you tell somebody, if you tell one person a secret, it's no longer a secret. Everybody knows yeah. it. Splashing it on social media, you're just, you know, just cruising for a bruising as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, Daisy, I want to ask you something. You know, like, I, I sort of, like, came on your channel recently, right? And I'm kind mm. of curious as to how you got to be where you are. Because, Ethan, you might know it, but Daisy's like a big wheel. She's like, she writes and shit, you know, whole sentences, things that you and I struggle on yeah. daily basis. <laughs> yeah. I did more research. I saw her channel and saw some of her, some of her writings and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank I, you. That's very nice of you. Thanks. Oh, you're um, I fell into it. I, I, I'm an example of someone who has literally fallen into this whole thing. I mean, like in Australia, you know, I write articles for a number of different publications and um, at the 
beginning of last year, I got picked up just from things I was writing by the producers of a show called Q and A. And I don't know if any of you know British Question Time, but it's basically like yeah. eight people on a panel who get asked questions by the audience. And um, the ABC, like the ABC in America, is like full of raging leftists, like the absolute like worst regressive kinds so of no one in Australia on the conservative um, commentary landscape wants to go in Q&A because you will just they they stack the panel against you and then claim that they're not biased. and It's really stupid. Um, but it was my first ever um, television gig and it was just after Trump had won the election and it was hosted in Melbourne, which is the most left-wing city in Australia like the it's in the state of Victoria and I call it the Socialist Republic of Victoria like they're so stupid and I remember looking out at the audience and they were all kind of in their 20s and they were literally when I was talking about Trump I said I like Trump and I thought oh my god my life is never going to be the same now like I've done it I've said I like Trump on national television on the most left-wing show in Australia and they were just staring at me like they wanted to kill me it was <laughs> It was fr like it was scared. They were close to the stage. I thought someone's yeah, going to throw Daisy, something. Daisy, Daisy, sorry, sorry, but come oh, on. Hey, fess up, fess up. Don't you feel more alive when you have a room full of people who would like to kill you? <laughs> Look, you, you're not, you're not wrong there. And I was really pleased because I said something about the Trump ban, and the audience booed me. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'm doing the right thing. They're booing me. So I just turned around and told them to settle down, which they really didn't like, but it felt good in the moment. Um, but yeah, from that, I got asked on more and more um, TV shows, um, mainly Sky News. I'm sort of, a, which is basically like Fox News, but in Australia. So I'm a regular contributor there. Um, but the YouTube thing, um, I was just, I was advised by some very sensible people that I should um, get into it. They're like, look, you, you already have a platform. There are people who follow you. Um, cable TV, it's not the way to go because it just doesn't have the audience, whereas YouTube has an infinite basically an infinite amount of, well, not, you know, an infinite, but it has millions and millions and billions and billions of people that, like, that you could be projecting to. They're like, you know, they said, look, you have the camera experience, you have the writing experience, you just need um, the equipment. And, you know, why don't you just give it a shot and put, you know, because print, print media and, like, written media, they don't get as much of an audience as visual video media does. Yeah. So they just, like, put your articles into YouTube videos. So I did. Um, and I'm so glad that I took their advice because it's just it's so much fun because I get to combine all of the things that I love to do. I get to I write down all my transcripts verbatim, like out like a script, um, because, I, you know, that doesn't work for some YouTubers, but that's I'm quite, you know, <laughs> single minded like that. I have to sort of have everything written out. So I get to write um, combine my writing skills and my to camera skills and I've had a bit of theater training so the kind of theatricality and then I get to like edit and create a video and then I get to interact with you know tens of thousands of people I mean what's not to love about that and it is such a great platform and I'm trying really hard to sort of fly under the radar of the YouTube lefty gods for as long as I can because I hear I say what happened has happened to people like Ethan, which is atrocious, and I'm like, please just just let me <laughs> somehow manage to cruise along for now. But um, yeah, it was it was literally sort of a dom a really happy domino effect with me. I'm so glad um that I decided to do it. It's so much fun. I I love YouTube. I think that uh, it's mm. the the idea of preform videos for me. I I find it really interesting, and and the experimentation I'm able to do on it is, is just. Mm. Because here's the thing, see, uh, the technology that, that is of the current year, 2018, is incredible. 20 years ago, it, it, this was inconceivable. The, the notion that you could shoot at this kind of resolution, casually shoot at 4K, when 20 years ago, shooting at 2K was cutting edge. And here, 4K, oh yeah, sure, you can go in down, down to the store and buy a camera for $1,000 <laughs> and you're set and shooting in 4K. It, it's incomprehensible. I mean, keep in mind, I come from a producing background, a film production background. And so the, the kind of technology that is available now in order to do videos, and you can do whatever you want. And some of the times you do things that are really stupid and silly, but sometimes you do things that look extraordinary, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's something for me it's, as a hobby, it's terrific. And what I like is the kind of audience that uh, I'm trying to get are sort of like, Look, I mean, not to get too, too high a horse on it, but it, it seems to me that so many young men don't have a father figure in their lives, and they're raised by women, and so they wind up not knowing how to interact with women, which is the paradox, because, see, 
they're, they're taught by women to act a certain way, but it's a way that most women do not like. Women don't like the nice guy. Uh, you know, I mean, let me ask you, Daisy, why is that? Why is it that women, single mothers, and the society in general raises men to act in ways that turn off women? What's that about? Oh, um, it's hard. I find that women who don't like the nice guys, which is a lot of women, are generally kind of unhappy in themselves. Like, I, I'm the exception to the rule. I, I've, I've never liked the bad boys. I've always liked the nice guys. And a lot of women are like that, but they're generally kind of happy, confident women. So women who raise their sons to behave in ways that they that women are not going to, most women are not going to like, I think it's a power trip. I think they do not like men um, intrinsically or resent them somehow. And so try to project what is essentially femaleness on their young men. And the, the, the boys just end up unhappy and dateless, but the women get to kind of have some sort of, I guess, validation that, that they're somehow in control. But I, it's, it's a really weird complex. I've never quite understood it, but that's maybe the best explanation I can give. Ethan, what do you think? Or, oh, or are sorry. you silent because you've got Nora there? <laughs> no, no. Wait, what, what? 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 So, what do I think about what exactly? What? Like, which part? No, of you that? zoned out. Don't, don't tell me. What were you? <laughs> I was reading the chat. To? I was reading the chat at the same time. So, what, I mean, what's I was the chat saying? Also, what's the chat but... saying? I can't. I can't do all these things at the same time. What's chat saying? Uh, well, some people are asking for more Ralph. I don't know if. if that's <laughs> <maybe just ego-talking. laughs> that's okay. <it>. Okay. <laughs> Just, Daisy, just... you and I are just gonna have to take a back seat. You know, let let Ethan run the show. Mm. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. No, but which, which specific aspect? Which, which part? Uh, no, I mean, I, I don't know. Tell us. We're talking about is. how great YouTube is. I mean, that's not really. That's a, <laughs> I, mean, I have to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not too high on YouTube. Well, moment, no. But... My my thinking is that the ban hammer is coming for all of us. We're all gonna get banned. Okay, uh, because YouTube is so hell bent for leather uh, on becoming like TV. You know, so. Uh, CRP should sunset himself. Ouch, that hurt my feelings. So this is what <laughs> yeah, I'll do. Oh, that right. hurt my feelings. Yeah, I should sunset myself. Damn. Okay, so this is what I'll do. This is what I'll do. We'll do super chats right now because there have been several, and then we're going to go to questions, comments, critiques from the Discord. Okay. So in about, it's going to take me about a few minutes, just three minutes or so, to read the super chats, and then we'll go to questions. Guys in Discord, get ready. Okay. So. Ken Weiler says, uh, hi, coach. After catching sexual assault accusations at Yale, did you end up going back or go straight into the workforce? Okay. Uh, I didn't go to Yale. I went to Dartmouth. And um, yeah, I was uh, accused in my first term at Dartmouth of sexual assault, which is very serious. And it was a lot like the uh, Christine Blasey Ford situation. He said, she said. And uh, the exact allegation was that I had tried to forcibly kiss somebody, which I don't quite know how exactly that is even an assault if you try but presumably fail to do something. But anyway, um, I was suspended for three terms. And the evidence was, all the evidence that could be proven was in my favor. Uh, and all the evidence that couldn't be, that, that, that everything that she said that could be shown to be a lie turned out to be a lie. And yet I was suspended for three terms. This is back in 91. So this regime of believing women at all costs, this isn't a thing of like the Me Too movement. It's been going on since forever. And it has to do, I think, with the, um, the whole issue of uh, like, frankly, Victorianism. So sort of like the, the woman is always right. And why would she lie? And of course, like, and we all know that women are people and they have interests and jealousies and angers and stuff like that, too because the girl in question who made these accusations was a girl that I had hooked up with and then sort of like unceremoniously dumped. And that's a lesson, you know, if you're going to dump somebody, be it, do it very carefully because you never know what, what's gonna happen. Real Reason says, thoughts got guy fired from his job. He then uh, repeated, oh, then reported to the IRS. Oh, I didn't know that. So, so these, uh, these Snapchat girls got him fired from his job and then he reported it to the IRS. That's interesting. Uh, Rando number says repeal the 19th immediately interesting thought psychotic cognition 100 says what's up everybody hey coach do you still watch diversity in comments and if you do what do you think about comics gate as it stands now uh diversity in comics is a channel that uh does like two three videos per day on the comic book industry or reviewing comic books and what have you i don't follow him religiously i just sort of like keep him on my feed sort of like to see what's going on and yeah i understand that there's like a big suit going on 
uh, between Mark Wade and um, Ethan Van Scriver. Uh, Riqueda Law, Nick Riqueda, is following that. He's really the guy you should follow to follow that particular case. Um, and it seems like Diversity in Comics, uh, Zach, he's launched his, uh, his comic book series. It seems to be doing gangbusters. Good on him. I mean, congratulations. I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, the comics book gate thing is sort of like Gamergate, and it's sort of like something like a, like, a, like a shockwave going through all of media, which is basically that you have people who are social justice warriors who have an agenda, trying to impose that agenda on an art form and just ruining that art form. We've seen it in, in, in comic books. We're, we've seen it in, in games. We're seeing it in films. You know, the last Star Wars was a complete fucking disaster, right? And, um, and I, I came from publishing. I saw the thing in publishing back in the 90s, how SJWs just rolled up publishing and uh, eviscerated serious literature. So, you know, it's, it's the way of the future. So anyway, uh, let me quickly go over to the Discord and just bring some people on. And I'm just going to go um, at random here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Kool-Aid Man. I'm going to bring in Kool-Aid Man and... Hello, Kool-Aid Man. Unmute yourself. Hello, Kool-Aid Man. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? What's up? Hey. What's your hot... Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, what's up? Tell us what your what your comment, question, what have you. Um, I want to see what folks thought about Mingtel and how is that diff different from Red Pill. Okay, good question. Thanks, Kool Aid Man. Uh, guys, what do you think of of Mig-Tel versus Red Pill? Ethan, I'll throw that question to you first. Um. Well, I mean, I'm married, obviously, so I kind of, I guess, I kind of rejected the McDowell <laughs> thing. But I mean, if that's what people, you know, if that's what people want to do, I do see the the merits of the argument, uh, not getting uh, trapped in a marriage or, you know, uh, having a kid with somebody who ends up uh, dumping you and forcing you to pay them money for the rest of your life or whatever, 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can I can see the merits of it, but um, personally, I I didn't go I didn't go that way. I went another way. Uh, to use the uh, MGTOW phrase. Yeah, you cucked out! You cucked yes. out! <laughs> Daisy, what do you think of the whole MGTOW uh, movement? Oh, uh, look, I, I don't have much to say about it um, other than I, un I understand it um, totally, mm -hmm. um, how men could, m men could feel like that. Um, I think it's a shame um, that a lot of men seem to feel like that, and obviously something's gone quite wrong in society to push men in that um direction but look you know um if that's what you want to do then that's what you want to do and and good luck to you and i i hope i hope it makes you happy that's really really probably all i can say on magtow yeah i uh pretty much agree that the fact that MGTOW exists because uh, there's no question that a lot of men have been seriously abused by mm -hmm. the system and uh, this um this bias towards women in, in a lot of uh, divorces and family custody situations where, uh, again, there's sort of like this Victorian notion that women can do no wrong, which we all know is not true because women are people and people, there are good people, decent people, and there are awful people, irrespective of their sex. So I, I feel saddened for the fact of MGTOW to be so organized as it is and to exist. I think personally that there are times in your life, in a guy's life, when it's smart to be MGTOW. To, to, you know, especially in your like 20s and 30s when you're building your career, sometimes it's just smarter to just be like a monk and focus on your career and focus on building resources and, and your, your place in the world. That's understandable. If you haven't found a woman who can be your, your partner, your helpmeet on that, on that journey, on that adventure, sure, no, no question. But the idea of being MGTOW forever, I question that because I think that as a man, as a man of 50, I can say that the, the greatest satisfactions I've gotten are now with children, the children of my own. It's just, it, it's just enormously satisfying. Everything from the, from the big moments, like when they were born and all the rest of it, to the little moments, you know. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing lovelier than coming home uh, and, and I got these uh, two little goblins running up to me and saying, Daddy, 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 you're home. You know, oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's terrific. It gives you that's such a cute. sense of happiness, right? Because they are truly happy to see me. It's not like, you know, like, 
Oh God, here he comes. Oh, but we have to be happy to see him. Okay, let's, let's get all the, hi. You know, it's not like that at all. They are genuinely happy. They, they live second to second, moment to moment. And, uh, and their, their emotions are genuine and real and true. If you go make to how you deprive yourself of that possibility, okay? And that's just, it seems to me kind of tragic, you know? Uh, also, I think that a lot of guys who go MGTOW, who have been burned by women, sort of like went into their relationships with women on a very naive basis. On, on, again, that Victorian notion that women can do no wrong and they're these perfect princesses, instead of taking them as people. Uh, I think that, that that is a little bit of the source of the problem. To, to think that women are these, uh, these, these perfect princesses on a pedestal. I think it's a mistake, but um, yeah. So, sorry about that. I hope that answered your question, um, um, Kool-Aid man. Let me do another one. Kravyada. Hey, Kravyada, how's it going? Hello. Hello, Kravyada. What's up? Kravyada? Oh, well, I'll, I'll catch you later because it doesn't seem to be working. Peter Mexico. Peter Mexico, how's it going? Hello? Oh man! I'm sorry to feel my pain, Coach. Oh yeah, now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is not working. Yeah, two for two. Okay, let's try the third one. Come on, Spacebird. I'm bringing you in, Spacebird. Are you there? Hello, Spacebird. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. One hey, second. how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty okay. Uh, I just wanted to comment. Uh, the thoughts should be audited if they want to be. Uh huh. Uh, is it went from audit the Fed to audit the thoughts? Is that, is that what we're... Mexico, and also, where should young men go? Young men in the United States go for uh, industry purposes. Well, the industry. Let's let's go backwards. The industry question of where to go for industry. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm like a, I'm personally I'm a fly by my seat of the pants kind of guy. I just go wherever the things are interesting. You know. So I, I wouldn't know. That, that I can't answer. What do you guys think of the caravan situation? Uh, I mean, I think it's a, basically a foreign invasion on our southern border, and they should be repelled. That's what I think. Mm. So. Pretty much the same. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's... I can't believe how the media is actually defending them and acting like they're sort of a bunch of, of angels, you know, coming in with the best of intentions. No, they're not. They're illegal immigrants. We don't know what they want. A lot of them, are, you know, have shown that they're aggressive and willing to do anything. So I think they need to be held off at all costs and not given any leniency. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, the Braving Ruins here. Uh, I'm going to ask him if he wants to join. Right, that'd be good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, Braving Ruin is a YouTube figure uh, from from our neck of the woods. He, who sort of like went underground. He he left the internet, all of the internet, but he's sort of like hanging around in the background. And uh, I'm seeing if he wants to get back on. Now about the migrant caravan, um, I think that I think that, yeah, it's a it's a it's an invasion, and yeah, whatever the fuck. I I don't quite understand it. And um, oh, hang on a second. He doesn't even know. Uh, sorry about this. I'm telling him to hop on. Uh, how do I know I want <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, sorry about that. It, it's, I'm so disorganized with this, this thing. And this is a live stream. This is the second live stream I've done in a long time. And the first one where I'm trying to interact, deliberately trying to interact with people, with audience members. And it's incredibly difficult. How the hell, Ethan, did you manage to do it? I mean, how? I, 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 well, find it, I can't do it. It's, it's just something you, you kind of get the hang of. And even then, I mean, a lot of times there's tech issues or somebody's muted. Now, I mean, I understand, too, because a lot of times, you know, you might be waiting for 30 minutes or longer by the time I get to you because there's a lot of people calling in and we're trying to cover other stuff, too. And when we finally bring you in, you're doing something or you didn't know you're supposed to be unmuted and... Uh, I don't know. This stuff's always going to pop. I mean, that shit happens on radio too. Like if you listen to talk radio a lot, so um, it's just part of the part of the ball game. You kind of have to get used to it, I guess. Uh, yeah, because I I I find it extraordinary. Because I, at first, you know, as a guest, I just show up and talk a little bit, and you know, you guys are running the show with uh, with Zidane and Gator, 
And so I'm like, uh, oh, you know, I, I don't have to worry about anything except making a little bit of sense while I'm on the topic of whatever is being discussed, right? But uh, th this is just fucking hard. But anyway, something else I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, Godwinson made a video about me. Did you see it? I did not see it. Uh, well, I saw about two or three minutes of it. Uh, a 50 I haven't minute seen it. video. It's pretty, yeah, it's 50 <laughs> minutes. Like, look, a 50 <laughs> minute video. Uh, I'll probably skim through it. I usually, I mean, if it's 50 minutes, I'm probably going to be watching like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, the hot castle or something. That's what I've been trying to get through lately. But, um, but yeah, I did see. I did see part. Of it. What did you think of? It? Have you seen the whole thing? Yeah, I did see the whole thing this morning. As a matter of fact, well, it was about you, so I, yeah. I figured you'd probably already <laughs> seen the whole thing. So, what, so what yeah, because because well, it's important to see everything because you know whenever yeah. anything is about me, I have to see it. It's the most important thing. <laughs> but um, no, it's what happened was that uh, Daisy doesn't know. See, I have a second channel, the shit, shit stream, which is. Basically, a stream where I just talk about the scene, the, the, the YouTube scene. Because on my main channel, mm -hmm. I try to stick to just the topics that I, I think are interesting to me and to the audience, right? But in the shit stream, I just, you know, bullshit and talk about the different players and what have you. And what happened was that um, I talked about Godwinson. I did a little video about him because he went away. Now, Godwinson is this very interesting figure. He's this young man, Brit, smart, educated. Uh, you can pretty much tell by the accent that he's kind of like upper class, right? And he is a very astute observer of the scene. And he does these delightful little videos that are very funny, uh, sometimes very creepy. Like, Ethan, remember the one about Neats? That was that was seriously disturbing video. Remember that one? I do remember that. And the one he did, la the last one I saw of his, what was that guy's name? Uh, oh, yeah. Something 666. Yeah. I forgot the guy's name, but yeah. it was... A Pretty strange character, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit too much for me, to tell you the truth. I, I couldn't quite take that video. It, it just sort of like crossed that line of just beyond a little weird, right? But anyway, Godwinson is this very smart guy, but he sort of like he's on the scene, and then he shuts down his channel and just disappears for a few weeks or, or a couple of months even. And then he comes back, and he's, he's never... He's never he doesn't plant both feet on one side or the other. I just invited Braving Ruin to join us, right? And Braving was like, nah, I'm happy to listen to your live stream, but I'm not going to join. Because, yeah, he made up his mind that he's going to be an observer of the scene, but he's not going to participate. He's not going to plant both feet into the scene. He's just going to watch, which is fine, which is a perfectly respectable position. But Godwinson is sort of like, he, he's like a moth to a flame. He wants to be on stage, and yet he doesn't, you know? He, he wants mm -hmm. to go in and, and be like at the center of the attention and be like, ah, you know? But <laughs> at the same time, he's sort of like, no, and, and he runs away. And, and I think that what it is is that he's scared that, you know, there are the peaks and troughs of, of every YouTuber's career, trajectory, what have you. And I think that he's scared of the troughs. And so I did a video calling him out and saying that he should be a little, you know, he should just grow up and, and just shit or get off, off the pot. You know what I'm saying? And he did, and my video was about five minutes long, and he did a 50 minute video <laughs> response to it. I hope he took it to heart, and I hope he's watching now or watches it at, at some point later, because um, to Godwinson, and, and sorry to, 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 to do this right now on you guys, but to Godwinson, say, my notion is you could be anything you want to be, okay? It's not just, you, you made your video just about YouTube, and it's not just YouTube, it's everything in your life. You could be anything you want to. But you just have to make up your fucking mind. Just decide that you're going to be something and then be that thing or do that thing. But don't dither so much because my suspicion is it's not just in YouTube. I think it's in all of his life. And I think that that's why the video was 50 minutes long, his response video, was because I think that um, I think some of the things that I speculated about hit a little bit closer to home than, uh, than he anticipated or I anticipated, quite frankly. So, yeah, I think that he, he could be a great guy. I mean, a very successful man in anything he does, but he's just got to, you know, shit or get off the pot, you know? Sorry about that. That was... To Daisy, Daisy has this beautiful look of complete confusion. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about well, that. I'm, That's like in, in our lore. What were you saying? I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in it because I've only been on YouTube for like the past five months and it's only the last couple of months that I've been getting some, some traction. So, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm grasshopper. I, I'm, I'm interested. I didn't even know there was a YouTube scene. So, I, I'm fascinated. I apologize at all. I'm very interested. 
Well, it's really interesting that that you hadn't noticed that there's a scene or or no. how could it played it, it. It's it's quite bizarre because there are some YouTubers who stay away from the scene altogether and very big ones and very successful ones like uh, Black Pigeon Speaks, like um, Shoe on Head and Armored Skeptic. They they're sort of like marginal to the whole scene. They exist and they do very well, but they don't socialize. They don't really interact with other players on the scene. Uh, whereas yeah. Ethan and myself and Godwinson and Jim, I don't, you know Jim, Mr. Medica, right? Yeah, I've heard of him. You've heard of him? You don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> just... No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me who he is. <laughs> oh, Ethan, you gotta, you gotta help me out here. You, she's a babe in the woods here, you know. <laughs> uh... Mr. Medicare, well, I mean, how could I describe him succinctly, Coach? I don't know. He's been around for, for a long time, I guess. What, what almost 10 years now? Well, he's a MGTOW. Uh, he, he's a MGTOW. Uh, uh, Diehard oh. MGTOW. No, I don't know. Total woman hater, you know? But he's, he's the, the sex slave of this little uh, Asian woman, you know? And, and awful things happen to him. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, Jim, I, he just makes funny videos, and I've always uh, enjoyed his content since I first came in contact with it, probably about 2014, with a little event called Gamergate. Uh, that's where. Now he's been around a lot longer than that, but I first came into contact with him back then. So, oh, okay. Well, uh, G uh, Jim, uh, Mr. Medicare, uh, before it was called the Internet Aristocrat, and he was the one who really sort of like. Uh, made some videos that set out what was going on insofar as Gamergate and was instrumental in creating the dividing lines, the battle lines as to what was actually going on. Because there was like a lot of confusion, a lot of interaction going on and people not quite clear as to what was the overall narrative, what was the, what was the shape of the battlefield, if you will. And mm. uh, in the middle of Gamergate, uh, Jim, who was then called the Internet Aristocrat, he made a series of videos called The Quinspiracy. Or, or conspiracy theory. Not even the middle, basically the beginning of Gamergate. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he was he was he was instrumental in in being that defining uh, uh, that that figure who defined everything so that everybody knew what was going on. And those videos are actually very very good. I mean, they they hold up today very well uh, uh, because you get a very clear sense of what was going on at the time and sort of like stepping back and having like a macro perspective on the situation. It's it's really okay. interesting. And so he was also ahead of the game and saying that uh, all this is gay. And uh, he left. <laughs> I see him in the chat as well. He says, my AI bot given to me by Monday Matt has alerted has alerted me to my name being said. So there you oh, go. Oh, he's, he's in chat? <laughs> Tell him to hop on. Yes. Oh, well, that's, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, if he wants to hop on, sure. Yeah, t tell Jim to hop on. I'd love to have him. I haven't interacted with him in like the longest time. I think I, the last time you did was actually on my program. Uh... When? When I said that he wasn't artistic enough? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, cause I said that, uh, that uh, Jim wasn't artistic enough in his videos and that he had, he had to do more, more, uh, more art in his videos, and, and he took offense to that. Oh. Yeah. Well, being, being artistic in, in, in videos is fun, you know, but then some people aren't. You know, everyone's got their own, their own unique style, so, yeah. <laughs> No, it's interesting hearing about um, all the different YouTubers. Like, I'm, I'm still really learning um, the whole because it is a whole, it is a whole other world. This, this online world. You've got the, the tangible world, and then what goes on in the online sphere, which is getting more and more pronounced. Um, the more social media continues to um, explode. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening here, going, "What?" I'm quite, I'm fascinated by it. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, because yeah. Uh, on the one hand, it seems to me that the online world is trivial and ephemeral and, and not important. But on the other hand, uh, the things that you're doing online, uh, on the one hand, do have an impact on what people think. And they also have a, a, a very severe uh, detrimental impact on your reputation going forward. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's actually a, a double edged sword. I mean, one little tweet can destroy your life. Remember that that woman who went to South Africa and did that silly joke yeah. about uh, AIDS in mm -hmm. Africa and her career yeah. was ruined? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of exactly that incident as you were talking about that. It was literally a, a one tweet, a couple of characters, she got off the plane and her life was in ruins. And that's that's scary that that can happen and it's got progressively worse because people are putting so much stock now in in social media so you know i used to think that the online world was oh you know it's just like you know it was sort of irrelevant but it's kind of not nowadays because 
like employers can just Google your tweets from five years ago. And if you've, you've said something remotely edgy, well, then you're fired or you don't get a job. It's little things like that to large scale things like making a joke about AIDS and not having a job of friends or anything anymore. Um, you know, I used to think that, oh, Facebook, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, it's for, for teenagers. No, 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 it's not. Neither is Twitter. You've got to be really, really careful um, of what you say because the information spreads so fast aside from anything else. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, too, is that humor especially is, is lost or can be easily twisted around to, to be used against you as a cudgel. And uh, like, like the AIDS joke, it was a bad joke, big fucking deal. I mean, how many times have we uh, made a bad joke? I've made 20, you know, in just the space of this <laughs> stupid stream, right? So I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I, or let me rephrase that, I do get it. And I think it's a nasty habit. And I think it's... it's how can I put this? Um, I don't want to sound like an us and them kind of guy, but it seems to me that a lot of the leftists are especially prone to twisting jokes around to hurt people, as opposed to the conservatives who are, is it me or are we more forgiving in that? Or, or am I talking out of my ass? No, I think, I think conservatives are much more forgiving. And it's part of the fact that we don't kind of operate um, in a pack mentality, because conservatism is, is about the individual and individual potential, whereas being a leftist is all about towing the party line to the point where they will ditch friends of 20 years for expressing one wrong political view. And I would hate to live in that world. I think it would be awful. You'd just be unhappy and anxious all the time. Um, but because conservatives believe in the individual, we know that individuals make mistakes. You know, we know we know that individuals make bad jokes. We know that individuals, um, you know, say things that can be misinterpreted. So we're more likely to kind of stand back and go, okay, you know, no, it's fine. We'll give you one. But the left will sometimes, in fact, a lot of the time, quite deliberately misinterpret things um, that their opponents say in order to damage them as much as possible because they never attack the argument. They always attack the person, you know, the left's only argument is character assassination. Well, so I would because, totally agree with you. Yeah, because the left doesn't have the arguments to win the debate. No, the, e the, exactly. That's the issue, you know? Exactly. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I would say I'm probably a little more forgiving, but I'm also a fan of... Uh, you know, playing by the same tactics the other side plays by. So uh, a scalp for a scalp. Sometimes I do understand that as well. That, that's an interesting well, point. Kind of, I'm sorry, Daisy. Go it's ahead. kind of no, 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 sorry. It's kind of I so it's kind of got to that point. I mean, I've um I've started really mudslinging on social media um, much more than I used to. Like before Good I was in. Like when Good I, on yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. I've 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 said I've said some things on Twitter to people I don't like, but only if they go for me first. Like, that's my principle. I don't I don't punch down unless someone is being awful. I always punch sideways or I punch up. And I only punch sideways if, they'd, if they said something about me first. Because, you know, I think, you know what? You're a little bitch. I'm not going to let you get away with that. But I used to, I used to, I do that with a lot of feminists. Like, they're just awful people. Um, but I used to not be like that. I came into this thinking, no, no, we're conservatives. We take the high ground. We don't do that. But I've realized these leftists are not innocent parties. They go out there and they deliberately try to ruin people. Um, and if we kind of just sit back and let them do it, then we'll, you know, we just end, we just end up in the mud. <laughs> so um, I've, I've kind of softening my, my stance on that, I think, I think. Oh, okay, good. Oh, and by the way, the mm. uh, gentleman, um, Mr. Howell has arrived. And, and it's a pleasure to see you, Mr. Howell. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? Pretty, pretty good. good, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this is Jim, by the way. He's the, he's the um, MGTOW who's a sex slave to this Asian woman, and uh, he lives in her basement, and uh, he's been fortunate enough to join us now. <laughs> How have you been? Well, there? I really could, I couldn't go my own way if I was a sex slave, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, clearly not. You can't. I, I'd have to be masturbating angrily on a Sunday night to be a MGTOW. <laughs> How have you been, man? Uh, I've been doing good. How about yourself? Well, trying to master the tech of this uh, OBS shit and, and failing miserably at it. and uh, Yeah, I see, I see you walking around like you're on Adderall, just uh, <laughs> back and forth like an uh, old man at a fucking uh, nursing uh, 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 uh. Yeah, totally. No, but uh, w what about you? What's happened with the fun streams? Uh, I, well, you know, I, I've kind of taken the week off. I got, uh, I got punished on Twitter for making a joke about suicide that they didn't like. So I was like, whatever. 
Okay. I went, I, went, I went and played video games. I don't, I don't fucking care. No, but uh, okay. well, no, you do care. I mean, if you didn't care, you wouldn't be on Twitter. Now, would you? No, no. You're asking about the streams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the streams. What happened with the, the streams? Yeah. Just, just yeah, no, I'll, I'll eventually hop over to uh, stream me. I mean, that's where I said I'm going to uh, go do stuff. Yeah, because uh, you figure that your days are numbered on YouTube or what? Well, no, I mean, I just figured, it, you know, what does it matter? I mean, I, I read off like an hour and a half's worth of uh, aborted baby jokes for Super <laughs> Chat. So I think I'm fine on YouTube, but, um, I, you know, I stream me's kind of grown on me. I, I've been watching more and more of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's mostly you know really really small channels, but I I, I kind of like it. I mean, they they were better than D Live. I mean, they seem to be willing to to put shit up and let people kind of do what they want. And I can watch Murdoch Murdoch there, so that already makes it a better platform in my eyes. Yeah, I love Murdoch Murdoch, and I can't I, I can't believe that. Well, I can believe that they, they they'd never be allowed anywhere else except Stream Me, and where else are they allowed on? Apart from their own video, uh, their their own website, rather. Yeah, I mean they've got their own their own site to host it and stuff. But I mean, if people don't mirror it on YouTube, it's kind of either BitChute if they can get it up there, or you know, streaming service like Streamy is what I've seen. Yeah. So anyway, I gotta ask. Uh, so is the the war with Sargon? Is it still on, or are we on a hiatus, or 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 a ceasefire? What is this? Is this uh, North Korea, or is this like? A, a, is there a DMZ? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, there's a DMZ full of uh, deviant fucking Romanians just lined up in between us. <laughs> okay, what the hell happened As everybody there? looks at their F list list of fetishes, that's oh, what's uh, separating us. Oh, yeah. I, I missed out on the V lore. What happened there? Because I was away from that. <sighs> I am, the dude likes fucking orcas. What can I say? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you gotta ask him about that. Like fucking, like, what do you mean orcas? Oh. Like, uh, like I'm talking, <laughs> let's go to SeaWorld and jump in the tank and I'm going to fuck a blowhole until somebody arrests me, kind of banging orcas. Okay, yeah, wait, I'll have I, to send you the I, link, I, Coach. I, 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 don't, I don't know if you're being euphemistic or if this is actual. No, it's, how's, he's, how's, he's, uh, how's, how's your lady guest doing? Is she enjoying this conversation? <laughs> I, I, I'm listening with with um, awe and amusement <laughs> to, to what is going on. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm enjoying myself. It's all good. <laughs> I mean, you're in Australia. There's are, Aren't there actual orcas in the area around there? I'm not familiar with their territory. Exactly. Uh, the orcas, we got some of them. They're more kind of towards Antarctica than Australia. We get a lot of sharks, okay. a lot of really big, deadly sharks that eat people semi-frequently. Um, so I guess that they're like orcas, but with sharper teeth, more aggressive, and they're closer to land. I'm yeah, not sure if he's into the shark thing, although he likes vores, so maybe maybe that would be something. <laughs> yeah, sure. Maybe. No, no, it's a, it's a, there are, it's a, it's a dangerous place, Australia. Like in, in terms of the kind of creatures we have here, like you could, you could die quite easily um, if you're out in the desert from any kind of snakes because they all come out at night. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a hazardous, hazardous place to live, very much so. Well, we're talking about V, who is the um, capo of uh, Sargon. He's like, he's like this lieutenant. He's, he's like this. Uh, Jim calls him a carrier pigeon. Who just mm -hmm. sort of like takes messages because Sargon never like interacts directly with people. He rather has V go and interact for him in his stead. And and the weird thing is that I think that we're all in agreement that V is actually smarter than Sargon and <laughs> is a lot more sensible. But I missed out on this whole blow. Well, whole see, I, I would have agreed with you that maybe he was smarter uh, yeah. until he until he basically outed himself for paying for access to a hentai fucking Discord that translates Shota. So. I don't know. I don't know how clever he is. That was kind of a shooting yourself in the foot moment, if you yeah. ask me. I, I caught a little bit of that. I, I didn't quite understand it. What is this point? I have to. I'm, I'm kind of like afraid to ask. Okay, because I sort of like caught a bit of it, but I had other shit going on. I I don't know. I mean, I called him. You know, I called him uh, some funny things. He called me some funny things, and then uh, he, he somebody tweeted out and said, "Hey, this guy's showing up in our Discord asking uh, for." <laughs> for retweets in your internet slap fight. And they're like, we don't know any of what any of this shit is. And it's this uh, hentai discord. You have to pay for access via Patreon, I think. Mm -hmm. And the Patreon's associated with a, a group that does like translations and uh, hentai games. Uh, and uh, <laughs> some of their content is Shodacon. Uh, okay, so what is Shodacon? It's like Lollicon, but little boys instead of little girls. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. 
Jesus. I, I don't know. And then the F list thing dropped, so it's been a painful week the for me. The F list thing? I, What's that? I, well, that, I, I don't know what the site is, but it was a, a fucking account that looked like it could be his that had a list of uh, a lot of fetishes, orcas and... Just look, well, Ralph, you went over this. Why don't you tell? Yeah, what? Uh, what? Uh, I mean, I can pull it up here. Uh, some of the fetishes. Hold on, you have to click a special button. I, I think, I think, button. Daisy, you're like, you yeah, know, I don't know. I'm not talking sure. a we lot are in more the shit. Of the lady, but uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, you're, you're totally well, gripping our style. proclivities and cum baths and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. It was, it was... Uh, look, you, you, you know, I believe in free speech. So <laughs> these are not the things free. you guys want. No. <laughs> if you want to you want to talk about that well you know I'll, I'll listen and maybe i'll learn something you never know <laughs> there you go good attitude. good attitude good okay, attitude okay so what what is it uh if, i if, sent you the link i mean look there's a whole lit polar bears uh swallowing semen uh, oh my god <laughs> Holy uh, shit, you know, I'm Ukraine. He's into anal grain. sex receiving as well. <laughs> and I'm getting a warning if I really want to get into this shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's the link there, Coach. Uh, we, we did about an hour of it uh, Friday. Oh, my God. So how, how was, yeah, and I, I saw people kind of talking about it. Uh, so how was the F-List account found anyway? Uh, it was posted, uh, and then I, I'd seen it for a couple days, and I didn't talk about it till Friday. I'm not sure how it was discovered originally, though. I just saw it posted, and but it was a thing where it wasn't logged into for like three months, right? I mean, yeah, that yeah. had been sitting up there for years and years and years. Yeah, the account itself is like almost it's like eight years old, I think, uh, and it hadn't been logged in for like two or three months. So. Digital dragon, that's the species listed. Uh, so is this like, it, do you think it's legitimately V's or do you think, it, is this kind of like his version I mean, of Monday Matt's Odin account? I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't say for sure. It, it does, a lot of it lines up with him. I'll put it that way. And he did seem to get very upset uh, on Twitter about it. Uh, and I remember he was on the kill stream a few months back. I think you were on that program too, where he was just like, well, I hope I hope they really don't discover my real fetishes, mate. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't say for sure, but it definitely lines. I think the orcas thing made me laugh. Like that, <laughs> that's stuck in my fucking head. What is like actual actual wanting to have sex with an orca? Oh my god! This is, I, I, I'm just so I'm such a boomer. I, I, <laughs> Can you picture a little Romanian man <laughs> fucking a whale? Like uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's obviously not banging an actual whale, but that's just actually on his favorites list too. There's three <laughs> different it. lists. There's there's favorites, yes, maybe, and no, and that's on his favorites, and it has a target, and I'm being informed that the target means that the person who made the account wrote the description on their own, uh, and it says, big buff water studs, yes, please, anytime, though natural equipment on them is a bit freaky. That's how it was uh, described. Now, when he's saying water studs, are we talking like a Bunty King thing where he wants to drink people's piss? Is that water uh, sports? Is that oh, God. What, what, this, this, the Bunty <laughs> thing, I didn't hear about that. That's new to yeah, me. Yeah, see, well, you yeah, see, you keep telling, I, I heard, I'm watching a little bit of the stream, you're talking about the scene, as you put it. You, you got to inform her of the scene involving an amazing amount of degenerates. Like, there's one dude named Bunty King. He's given multiple interviews talking about his love of eating piss shit and period blood. <laughs> you got V that wants to fuck whales. You got, uh, what, what's the other one? Who was doing the lollycon debates for like fucking- Oh, Louis Laval? Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's it's a good look. It's a good oh, look. yeah, and Daisy, Daisy. All these people are allied with Sargon. Okay, so-, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I just find She's this- just like, what did I walk into? Yeah, what did you No, 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 into? I- Ah, what did I walk into? No, <laughs> it, it it it's all right, you know. I, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning as, as I go. It's, it's, that's, that's the spirit. That's, all... that's the spirit. That, that's the spirit. Yes, yes. That, that's what you say when you walk into a room with this kind of discussion going on. But I I, I kind of find it shocking because look, I have to admit that uh, you know porn is not like a big thing in my life uh, in general. You know, I figure that you only are into porn when you're not getting laid. Quite frankly. And but this kind of stuff is just just beyond bizarre. I, I, I can't even imagine. I, I find it hard to believe that anybody would would actually go to the trouble of imagining this weird shit. OK, it's just it, I don't know. I I'm, guess I'm just naive. Sorry, I'm inarticulate. Please, somebody save me because I want to talk about anything else except the, this stuff. But why don't we time, talk about the Worski Tonka fight? Oh yeah, the fight that's never going to happen. Sure, so I want to talk about that. No, I mean no. It's both. It's signed. They both uh, signed the contracts. 
Uh, me and Worski have a place rented out in Knoxville. Uh, that's going to be the uh, the what fight fight HQ there. Uh, so uh, and and I won't reveal everything, but I'm under I'm under the understanding that uh, there is a backup plan in case uh, in case Tonka doesn't show up. So. Oh, it's going to um, be you and Andy are going to go toe-to-toe? No, cool. no, I'm not going to go. I, I think that's against the terms of my probation. I'm not sure. I'll oh, have okay. to double-check on that. But, uh, but yeah, that's it does look like it's going to happen. At, at least I hope it does because I already rented the place out. So Really? How much did it set you guys back, if you don't mind my asking? Um, so it was like, so, I, you know, I went on Airbnb, uh, it was like, it was like $612, uh, for four days. Nice mm-hmm. little condo there in, uh, downtown Knoxville. 612 and, bucks for four days. What are you guys sleeping in a fucking shack? No, it's really nice. Uh, actually Airbnb. I don't know if you've ever used it, Jim, but there's a lot of good. I'm not going to sleep in some motherfuckers apartment. No, I'm not <laughs> using Airbnb. Well, a lot of times it's not a place. So it's it's not a there's nobody else there. So a lot of times it's people who have extra properties. Either they're trying to sell or they just have them as rental properties and they'll put them up on Airbnb. You're going to get some crazy meth head popping out of the closet on like day two. Who's going to fuck you? (laughs) It's going to be an uncomfortable story. They have very good (laughs) reviews. There are places that you can stay on there where you're actually in somebody's house while they're there. But I I don't want to do that. So it's just. It's just like renting an apartment, basically. So it's, somebody, it's somebody nice. in chat said you rented Venti's apartment. If you did, bring, <laughs> no, a fucking, no. bring a fucking vacuum cleaner and something to clean the cat shit up with, because you're in for a treat. <laughs> no, it's it's nice. It's nice. I won't I won't tweet out pictures of the place because you could probably easily find it, you know, by reverse image search. But it's it's pretty nice. So. Rawhide asks in the super chat. So is Ralph streaming the Donga fight? You're going to be doing that. Um, so, uh, I'm, so it's my understanding they're actually going to have a pay-per-view thing. Now, okay. I'm going to be at the fight, uh, you know, basically in Warshi's corner. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. if if we're not doing some type of thing where we can stream it, uh, we'll be doing some type of live programming there from the fight where I'm like, I don't know if you've ever seen boxing on, uh, on HBO back in the day, but uh, the guy who comes in and gives his take in between rounds on on what's happening, I might do something like that. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll definitely be doing a lot of uh, okay, a lot let, of programming there. Okay, months. contracts were signed. Fine. Where are there at penalty clauses in that contract that if you don't, I up, don't, I can't, I don't know. I mean, you're not, you know, you can't reveal. It's got a non disclosure agreement, so I can't. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you know, Worski knows about the. I don't. You know, he hasn't told me anything about the contracts because that would be against the rules. So I don't, I don't know anything about the contract. Okay, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, from what All I understand, right. I think that uh, the, uh, what you may call it, Donga, actually genuinely has some sort of uh, issue that he was injured in such a way that if he does, does get injured again, he could wind up paralyzed. So it seems absurd that he would potentially expose himself to physical damage danger that could render him a quadriplegic that seems crazy but you know maybe his well i do is- know that he on the contract and traditionally there is some type of you know in contracts usually there's some type of penalty i know that they're putting a lot of promotion into this um so I- i'm assuming that there probably is some type of uh penalty jim what do you think you think it's going to happen uh, well, you know, I mean, here's what I would have loved to have seen or at least see going forward from Andy mm-hmm. in particular. Yeah. Um, I'd like him to do his fight montages in a wheelchair <laughs> so, he could put, so he could put Donga at ease that they're on even footing. I shouldn't say footing because his legs don't work. That they're on <laughs> even asses. <laughs> even wheels. I did it again when they crawl into the ring to fight each other. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, it's weird that Donga wouldn't put up a promo picture like Worski did. That was yeah. strange. I mean, there he is, you know, flexing it. There's his pale ass, his pale Canadian ass flexing for the camera. He's ready to fucking do it. <laughs> Signed the contract, sent him in, got him all done. Um, I, I don't know. Donk has gone on and on and about, you know, he's not internet people. He'll fight anybody fighting in real life's the greatest shit on earth. So he's going to look like a massive fucking fag if he doesn't show up. That's what I, that's my whole point. Like, he has to do it, right? Like, I mean, what will be his excuse after, you know, a year, you know, straight of talking about let's fight in real life, let's fight in real life. And then even this fight, he's saying, I'm going to just destroy Andy. He has no chance. You know, saying that over and over again, you can't not show up, right? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe he, he, he has to show up. And then uh, yeah. somebody was saying that he wanted me to bet my channel on this. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, yeah that's what yeah, I heard. Yeah. 
And, and, and yeah, I think that you're remiss not to have done so, Jim, that you should bet your channel, of course. Well, here, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you <laughs> what, Donka, I'm willing to bet my channel. If you win, I'll delete it. It doesn't matter to me. But if Andy wins, you have to put on a fucking dress and lipstick and walk <laughs> up and down the boulevard after the fight telling people that you're a fucking $2 whore and you got your ass kicked by a coke <laughs> Yeah, and I want that. I want that filmed and put on the internet. I mean, you're so tough, right? You're not worried about losing or anything, so you put a fucking dress on like the pretty girl you are and walk up and down the boulevard like a whore, won't you? Oh, good God! That's my counter offer. Yeah, I, if he's I, willing to do that, I'll put my channel up. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, 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 I would, um, I'd spring for the lawyers to make that contract happen because, yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to see that. I don't think that it's going to happen. I mean, I, th I think it's all bullshit. I just think it's fucking gay to have a fucking real life fight. It's stupid. Okay, that's the whole point of the internet, that you're supposed to fight with your words to sound incredibly pompous, but no, that's basically it, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't, but wait, I, you don't want to see this? I'm, Come on, it's folly. I mean, it's still, it's like, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm getting caught up. I've watched a lot of fights and boxing matches over my lifetime. Maybe I'm getting caught up in the hype, but I mean, I can't, at this point, I was very bearish on it for a while, saying it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Now that the contracts are signed, I've just... I've, went all in on it so uh i'm very excited hopefully hopefully it takes place hey daisy could you be like the the the, the little the the girl with the card you know between the rounds you should go to there you you'd, <laughs> you'd clean up yeah it, it would be it would be great <laughs> well i i don't, I don't <laughs> I'm know sorry if I have the speak for that you know <laughs> it's a very particular type of woman with a very particular build who's able to do that but thank you i take that as a as yeah, a, take it as a compliment I am actually, fellas, unfortunately going to have to bow out, and you will love why I have to do it. I have to cook a roast. Like a, good, like a good little, I have to cook a roast for having friends over for dinner, and I've seen the time, and I, I need to put it on and chop the vegetables and do all sorts of, of womanly things. Okay. Um, but thank you, thank you so much for having me, though. This was, was... really, really fun. <laughs> um, I'd love, it was really, it was educational, it was fun, it was a good chat, and um, I really hope we can do it again. It was great uh, to meet you yeah, guys, and thank you, you Coach. We'll Take speak to you soon, okay? Bye. 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 Is she out? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, think the I whale think thing. Freaked her out. I think that. I, I only only be... took me saying faggot <laughs> talking about eating shit, and that was like ten minutes. That's good record. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that she was very that, polite about it, though. Oh yeah. Well, you know, she's a, a polite young woman. I, I I think the world of her, to tell you the truth. I think that her content is really great, and so definitely go check out her content. I put the link in the description below. So anyway, um, oh, this fucking thing with Donga, he's a fucking idiot. I wanna, what, I'm wondering about Godwinson. I want Godwinson back because he did that fucking video on me and he refuses to release it. And I want to see it. I want to see what the little shit has to say about me. Yeah. Um, or am I being too egotistical? Oh, well, why not? Yeah. But what's up with Godwinson? Why, why isn't he back? You know, did you, Jim, see that video that he made? Uh, no, but I mean, I, I you know, I know Godwinson will make a channel, put stuff up, and then uh, kind of recede into the background and kind of do that like once every three to six months. Yeah. And it's kind of standard practice. Yeah, I, w I wish he'd just like stay on the scene because I like the continuity of it. But anyway, um, what, Donga and what other gay shit is going on? Because we've been going on for, what, an hour and 20, I think? So let, let's, I just, oh, sorry. Sorry to, to interrupt. I got to do super chats because I've been remiss on the super chat issue. So let me do that really quick. Um, let me see. Wow, a lot of super chats. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. So is Ralph streaming the Donga fight? Uh, you guys are gonna, they're gonna do a pay-per-view. Uh, Jackie Chun says, coming from a single mother, it's partly internal like emotional instability, criminality, and then you learn female behaviors which make working with male environments difficult. Well said. Priyanshu Chatterjee, Sorry if I'm mis mispronouncing that, Priyanshu. Coach, like your YouTube activities. Keep them up. Thank you, Priyanshu. Timothy Hazelow, Daisy, are you coming to America ever? I would love to hear you speak, meet you, and learn from you. You're awesome. Okay, Timothy. I'll pass that message along. Roman Vidya Vidyayev, is the universe infinite or finite? I understand that it is finite, though expanding. Uh, Mechaflair O, 148 quack quack. Well said. Roman Vidyayev. I like turtles. Me too. 
Timothy Hazelow. He sexually identifies with whales. Maybe the fat acceptance feminist types are for him. Good point, uh, Timothy. And an unnamed source. Kitty Style is a Danish pole smoker. That is too obscure for me, but well said. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thank you very much to the super chatters. And uh, you guys there, or am I left alone? No, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm just watching the restream. Now, Coach, you're going to let the restream go on, aren't you? Because I know one guy in the call that's got an issue with that. What? No, I might, as well, I might as well talk about that. They thought I wanted it taken down. I did not. I told them the next day to restore it, so it's back up. Oh, so, what's the lore on that? Uh, what, what, what's that? Uh, some people thought yeah, I had this. Give us the lore on that, Ralph. What, what happened? Well, the streamy oh. people thought that they were just like restreaming my stream with nothing added to it. Uh, I guess they're a little protective, so uh, they took they took the restream down, and then the next day I saw that it had been taken down, and I messaged them and I said just let them let them do what they want, and uh, they restored the channel and everything, so they're back. I, oh, there I, you go. I, I, I just like to say publicly, you can restream my shit anytime you like. I'm a good guy. <laughs> All right, Caesar over here. That's why he got stabbed. All right, he's always starting killing people. I had it got restored because of me. I don't get any credit for that anyway. But yeah, they're back and it's all good. So okay, and and well, I I don't have anything to say to that. Um, what else have we been going? Uh, you know, this is kind of like winding up. You know, I suck as a stream host. I'm just really awful at it. Um, I'm just You're not. Uh, I'm not a very interesting stream host, and I don't quite know how to do it and try to how to make it funny. And I always like admire other people's streams, and my own are just sort of like yeah. You know, the only thing I sort of like am good at right now as of late is the whole uh, shit stream videos. I'm enjoying those. Uh, those are a lot of fun. Oh, and I'm enjoying uh, Kraut and his uh, history lessons. That's, that's been very interesting. That's, let me ask you something, guys. Why doesn't he just quit, poor fella? Oh, he's never going to quit. He's, uh, you're talking about Kraut? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not going to quit. He, he's, he's, he's walked through the flames. He's had his little baptism by fire. Now he wants to play. He loses subscribers every time he posts a video, and his, his videos get fewer and fewer views each time he posts. What exactly is he trying to win? What is there to be won, quite frankly? He's just trying to prove the point that you can't drive him off the internet. At this, that's, that's what this is all about right now with him. Oh, man, that, that motherfucker is just insane. And the thing is, that the, the stupid videos that he makes about history are about as dumb as the ones that he made about uh, biology. I mean, I don't know anything about biology. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched any of them. I know he's doing, like, World War II shit, right? Camps <laughs> and Japan and stuff. Yeah. Ralph, have you seen any of this shit? I saw, I saw he did a video, uh, was it yesterday, on the Allied bombings? Yeah. Were justified? Allied, yeah. I didn't actually watch it, but I saw that he put it out. And I know his subs keep dropping, and pretty soon he'll... Looks like he's on the path below 100K, which, yeah. according to uh, the Discord leak, uh, is really fucking with him mentally. So hopefully that happens soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, apparently he's it, the, the thought that he'll cross the 100,000 mark, which I personally think is in trivial. I mean, it was funny. And oh, and Jim, thanks for uh, putting up Susan in your last uh, Sunday fun day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I it was fucking hard to I, do. Yeah, I, I liked it. I, I liked it. Matt needs the piss taken out of him more. I mean, that, that was uh, some good stuff. No, it was hard to do that performance, to tell you the truth, because I kept cracking up, and, uh, and it was just, like, really just hard. I, a couple of times you can spot that I was sort of, like, laughing because I couldn't keep it in, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and the light was fading, and it was, like, a whole nightmare to shoot that fucker, but I'm so glad that it fit with Whitney Houston. It just, ah, it's just, the, you know, Kino experience. That's what I loved about it. But about, Such a great song, too. Man. Yeah, it is. Actually, I yeah. actually watched it on the way to Baltimore and almost drove off the road because I was laughing so hard. So it was, it was good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But no, about uh, poor Kraut, he did a video, um, the one that he was talking about uh, historicism and historiography and shit like that. And, and, and he was talking about Voltaire and, uh, you know, and he's saying about Voltaire's opinion about the French Revolution, right? which is impossible because Voltaire died a decade before the French Revolution. So how the fuck could he have had an opinion about the French Revolution if he was safely dead? You know, and it was just like that kind of level of mistake, you know, and it was just so laughable. And I understood now why JF had gotten such a huge kick out of his uh, videos on biology because I'm incompetent in biology. I don't know a thing about biology, right? And, and so I just took, uh, when Kraut did his videos, I sort of like, well, it seems logical, some of the shit, but, you know, J JF really knew what he was talking about. Insofar as history and the stuff that he's talking about, 
I, which was my specialty, I can say unequivocally. He didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. He was just talking all kinds of bullshit, you know. And even the guy who bombed, who ordered the bombing of Dresden, Curtis LeMay, even he said that if the Allies had lost the war, he would have been going to the gallows and, and, and hanging for war crimes for having done Dresden, right? I mean, he, the guy who did it thought that it was a war crime, okay? And Kraut doing his... It was just like... What is there to be won? I just, I just don't understand that. I mean, like, um, I don't he know. constantly talks about shit he doesn't know anything about. That's that's something that gets me. Like, if you, and there's no shame in not knowing everything or, or about a topic. But like, why, why do you keep doing videos about stuff you have not even really a baseline knowledge of? Uh, it's kind of baffling, but well, actually, you know what? I, let me take that back. I, I do think I saw part of one of his initial World War II videos. Mm -hmm. Didn't he go to like a Holocaust camp? Yeah, I saw part <laughs> yeah. of that one. The Holocaust yeah, but like, he, there's no stabilization, so like yeah. it's shaking all over the fucking place as he's walking through this, and it's just. I, I saw like two minutes of that, and it's like I'm I'm done. This is where I hit out. No, yeah, yeah. It, it, they're going to the the concentration camps, and see, there's nothing to be learned by going to the concentration camps. Quite frankly. I mean, you know, so if you go, you better shoot, like, good, good material. I mean, you're, you're going to use it while you're going to have a, a voiceover, right? But, like, shaky footage of a concentration camp, what are you going to get out of it? You're not going to learn anything there because it's, it happened 70 years ago. Anything to be learned from that is you can find it online or in textbooks or what have you. So you're only going there for the images. So if the images suck, what's the point? I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get the man. Well, actually, I do get the man. He's living on his mother's dime, building models all day, sniffing that, uh, the, the modeler's glue all day, and doing fucking nothing with his life. Jesus Christ, and he's 29 fucking years old. Get a fucking job, for crying out loud. I mean, geez, uh, I, I find it incredibly, incredibly frustrating. But uh, yeah, and I think that he's starting to have like uh, crazy ideations, to tell you the truth. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like planning on like uh, you know, having his revenge on his enemies or some shit like that, but like... You think he's gonna go full Shadow Strangler? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going kidding. out there and teaching people liberalistism the hard way? Yeah. No. I, I do think so. I, I think that he's going in that direction. That he's going to... I, I genuinely believe that he's gonna be going so insane, especially when he cracks the 100,000 mark, in the wrong direction, of course, I think that he's going to go so out of his fucking mind that he's going to start thinking that he should, you know, you know, uh, direct action in the real world, you know, and and he's going to justify it to himself with all kinds of weird, you know, nonsense shit. But yeah, I think that I, I mean I don't know if you guys think that I'm full of it or I'm, I'm you know. well yeah he's in I don't know is he like in Germany or Austria? I mean, there's not really yeah. much to lash out at in real life there though. It's pretty <laughs> pretty hard leftist, isn't it? Well, I personally think that he might show up at my door. <laughs> I, I honestly do. I, I would, was going to bring that up, Coach. You keep making these predictions. If anybody yeah. would want to lash out, it would probably be you. Yeah, so. I, I, I actually said so in one of my shit stream videos. I, I know that it sounds paranoid. I'm not a paranoid person. Uh, but I genuinely believe that he might flip his shit and hop on a plane to Ukraine and show up here and uh, God knows what. I, I, I am not kidding. Yeah, and I don't have a problem saying it. I don't have a problem if think, people think that I'm paranoid or out of my mind or something. But yeah, I get the vibe that the guy's going to lose his shit, you know, especially as people start peeling away from him. Because I think that by this point, a lot of his followers, a lot of his little coterie, they must think that he's out of his fucking mind for crying out loud. Well, how fucked up would you be if there's a knock on your door and you go to answer it and there's just a trout laying there? <laughs> like, is that... <laughs> Is that going to send you into, like, a fucking tizzy? <laughs> like, <laughs> tizzy law. Here? Yeah, tizzy law. <laughs> that would be fucking funny. I mean, that would actually be kind of witty if you left a trout there. Yeah, you know. What would I do with the Coach trout? Coach sleep with the fishes. Is a... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, if, uh, if he left a trout at my doorstep, um, well, I'd probably, you know, fry it first, you know. And, and then I'd be, like, thinking, you know, so, man, that was... I'd film it, you know. Oh, man, that would be fucking funny. You know, actually, I might make a video about it, you know. It, it would be fucking funny, yeah. But, no, I think that... Uh, <laughs> Just filming a guy running in and out of the forest in construction, uh, <laughs> construction worker outfit with fish in his hands. Yeah, yeah and Ray-Bans, you know, uh, Wayfarers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like uh, like, like the whole skeptic... Uh, 40 fucking cigarettes in his mouth, yeah, pot of coffee. <laughs> 
Oh, poor crowd. Poor crowd. It's, it's that I, I, I have to admit that there's something grand about the self-destruction of a man's life like that. Okay. I, I, I find it just hypnotic. I can't look away at this point. You know, and it's so that, it's so fucking self-inflicted with him, though. I mean, it's the group that he runs with, it's shit rat and the others that fuck up. Well, one that he makes him do gay ops because they they brought him into it, but two that always fuck his gay ops up. Like he'd be so much more successful, I think, on his own trying gay ops than he would with this group of fucking screw ups. Uh, I I know no, I'll never understand it. I don't know why he tolerates their fucking complete and utter repeated failures. Well, no, it's that the guy's fundamentally dumb. You know, I mean, that was my mistake about him. I thought that he was like a clever guy, uh, just misdirected. And it took me a long time to realize, no, 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 he's just stupid. He's just a, a, <laughs> a, a, a low IQ. Yeah, exactly. Z low IQ. That, uh, that's it. And so somebody stupid like that. Yeah, he's going to do all kinds of stupid shit, you know, and surround himself with the wrong kind of people who just manipulate him or use him or abuse him as they see fit, you know, including a uh, shit rat. Yeah. Yeah. What's happened with shit, right? Is he transitioning yet or what? Davina? I don't know. It's probably, you know, it's going to be a while till he can get that dick chopped off. It's still problematic <laughs> for him. But uh, one day, one day soon, I gave him a year and I said that about a month ago. So he's got about 11 months before the transition happens. But it's coming. I know it's coming. Uh, I mean, you're unironic, I take it. I'm absolutely unironic. That's the kind of dude that's going to become a tranny to use that as a shield for criticism. Yep. That is absolutely what he's going to do. Good God, I, chopping your dip, dick off. I mean, the, I'm going to put it. Troll shielding Troll by chopping your dick off. That's a little extreme. Well, he's playing catch up. This is shit SA was doing back five, six years ago. This is weird Twitter shit. But now he's, I guess, struck upon the same idea that, oh, my God, if I become a super PC liberal tranny, I can get away with fucking anything. And I, I guarantee he's going to go that route. Ethan, what do you think? He hangs around with a ton of trannies, too. Yeah, I mean, it seems, to me, it seems likely, yeah. And I mean, he, like I said, he surrounds himself with all these trannies. He, it looks like he's already becoming one if you just take a look at his physical transformation as well. So, And he had that big, long, I think this was in the summer. Uh, he had a long uh, tweet thread. I don't know if Jim remembers this, where he's like questioning his sexuality and he's talking about all this discovery he's went through. And uh, yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's likely, yes. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it's it. They they feed each other with their delusion. <clears throat> when you get a group like that, where one or two of them transition, they all start doing it. So Davina's hanging out with a bunch of people that this is the new thing, and Davina's going to do it. And what's the suicide rate again? Forty percent. Yeah, something like one percent. Yeah, yeah <laughs> half of them aren't going to make it back. So it's a coin flip, David. I don't know if you want to take that risk. Actually, I think that um, uh, uh, shit rat is kind of like a cockroach in that regard. He'll survive it, you know. Uh, yeah, in, in five years or something, he'll detransition or whatever they're calling it. But I'm just wondering if he'll, <laughs> if he'll like uh, chop it off before he detransitions. You know, you know what we should do? We should basically start saying to them, you know, if you if you haven't chopped it off, you're not a real tranny, and you're transphobic for not chopping it off. See if that will get him in the direction we want him to go. Your that penis would... is cultural appropriation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need to get rid of it if you really truly believe in the cause. <laughs> you think he'd fall for it? They already tell each other that. So it, 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 he's being fucking wined and dined on that kind of messaging. Oh, my. Oh, God. I, it's, I just can't believe it. But I, I read recently, unfortunately, I don't have the link uh, on hand. Chat, maybe you guys can help me out. That there's like this uh, this article, this study that's coming out that a lot of girls are transitioning or are becoming transsexuals because of basically group dynamics of just hanging out together and just convincing themselves in a closed bubble that they should transition, that it's a good idea. And these girls, like groups of, uh, of, um, of you know, between five and, and ten girls wind up sort of like egging each other on. Because one of the things that they've discovered is that the group that is most heavily transitioning are teenage girls, you know, between the ages of... You know what this, uh, you know what this is? What? It's the same shit that you know what this is. It's the same shit that happened in the '80s and '90s, where chicks would be bisexual when they were in college. You know what I mean? It was yeah, the but that phase was sexier. That, went that was sexier. Yeah. I'd I'd bang a lesbian. I wouldn't bang a girl transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. It's the oh, you know, it's a it's the end trendy thing to do, um, and then they fall out of it once they leave fucking college and aren't you know taking beer bong hits while the fucking quarterback fucks them in the ass on a pool table. 
Yeah, but here's the thing. See, uh, if you go lesbian, if you're a, you know some 18-year-old co-ed, right, and, and away from home for the first time and go lesbian, see, it, it doesn't render you sterile, but transitioning does. And this is serious shit. You know, all these uh, human replacement, horm hormone replacement th um, treatment drugs, what have you. Sorry about that. Uh, they render you sterile. Okay, both sexes, by the way. I mean, this is some serious shit that you're fucking with. This isn't like dropping acid or some shit like that. This is like really permanent. And I feel... We, you should take a look at uh, Games Done Quickly. Uh, you can watch the progression of this happen to that uh, group, right? They, they do uh, speed runs and shit for charity money. It's like an event that happens, uh, you know, a couple times a year. Uh, but if you look over the last five years, it started with like one tranny. But now it's gotten to the point where like, they will eventually have dilation stations. There are so many of them. And they're put front and center. Like, it, it, it spreads. It gets into the community, and then it spreads. Yeah. Because they bring in more, and then they influence others. And the next thing you know, everybody's Narcissa right, and they look like they've been beaten with a shovel, and their hair is falling out. No, I, I, I find it... Well, there's a reason that 40% of these poor people wind up killing themselves, but I'm kind of interested in, in, in the percentages insofar as people who truly weren't suffering from uh, sexual dysphoria. Because y y y we have to recognize that there are two classes of people right now. There are, there are the people who truly have this problem, and I pity them, quite frankly. And then there are the people who are doing it for fashion's sake or for group dynamics' sake, you know, that, that they're being literally pressured to, to remain fashionable and transitioning. How many well, of yeah, those they, are going they to have kill a themselves? term for that. I mean, they call it transgender. Yeah. 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 It, it's doing it for the, the social value of it. Yeah. How many of those are um, going to wind up I, killing themselves? I, I don't know. It depends on how committed they are. I mean, I think with Davina, it's not that he's a transgender. I, I don't know what you'd call it, but he's, he's becoming it to shield himself from criticism. That There is a subsect of people that do that. Trans uh, shield? You know, trans shield. I mean, it's kind of like um, Sargon did with claiming he was black. <laughs> like, I'm black, so you can't call me a racist. Well, I'm a tranny, you can't say I'm whatever. But yeah, well, he, he was transracial. Yeah, I know. Um, oh, God, that was fucking funny. You know, yeah. The, the, but yeah. what y'all are saying with the with the social trends, I mean, there was a study that came out in, in late August on this uh, where it talked about teen, teens and young adults uh, who identify as LGBT. A lot of it's just peer, peer pressure. Uh, so there was a whole study on that, and the person who... Who did it caught a lot of shit over it because it was, you know, their left wing colleagues weren't too happy with it. So, I I don't know. Uh, you guys been keeping up with TikTok? Oh god, oh god, I'm afraid to ask. What is that? I, I've gotten really interested in it. Like I, at first, I thought it was just going to be a, a shittier version of Vine. It's a Chinese run company, kind of a mobile thing. You put up short form videos, mm -hmm. uh, but they have like a really I, I don't know how to explain it. The, it's a majority of teenagers using it, but. Like, there's some weird shit going on on TikTok I can't really put my finger on, but I have a feeling TikTok more than Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube is going to play a big part in the upcoming election. Did you see Boogie on there? I saw that. No, I'm talking about, like, the kids that are putting up videos where they want furries to be put in gas chambers. <laughs> no, and, I haven't seen that. <laughs> uh, they're, like, girls that, like, they're, they, like, put on extra clothing, and they're like, we've got to help the boys out for No Nut November. Uh, another one where they talk about how it's a woman's place to make sandwiches. Like, it's really, it's a really weird mixture. It's kind of like poll posting in teenage video form. <laughs> and uh, the weird thing is, like, I, I'm, I'm split on it because I can kind of see what the mentality of the user base is like, but it's a Chinese company, right? So how is that going to factor into the election? Because I, I get the feeling that's going to have a lot of social media credit with the upcoming election, but if Trump is doing, you know... Uh, what, what I, tariffs and that kind of shit with China, will they clamp down on pro-Trump shit? Uh, you know, during election season, I, I have no idea how that's going to play out. I know the popularity of it's definitely exploded. I haven't really investigated, but I saw Boogie on there acting foolish. I, I didn't realize there were like po you know poll posting going on. There oh no, they've got, they've got one like yeah. There's one that was up. I, I was watching like compilation videos of this shit like. Where they put like something on the door, like free tits and shit like that, and then the guy walks in and he shuts the door and it says gas chamber, and they start laughing. <laughs> Nazi music plays. So like, you know, it's it's a different shit you could never put on Twitter or Facebook, and the Chinese just don't fucking care. Yeah, they don't give a shit. 
It's all about money for them. Uh, and yeah, I don't I don't really think that they're probably going to crack down on it. Uh, maybe, though, like you said, in order to hurt Trump. I didn't think about that, but possibly. I, I haven't looked into it that much. I've just seen some goofy clips on Twitter about it, uh, but I, I didn't realize there was all that stuff going on there. I just like how much they hate furries. I mean, that was the hook for me. <laughs> like, That's they amazing. fucking hate them. Yeah, it's pretty great. I, I, I'm digging that. So what's uh, what's the update on the furry situation? The, the, the one, well, Kiro, he got arrested. Uh, am I wrong? Akira's under police investigation. One guy was investigated and let go. Uh And then apparently, from what people are saying, the South American guy that did the ants in the ass of the animal uh, has been arrested. What? (laughs) What what was that? He's in Cuba, Cuba, right? I think he's in Cuba. Oh, it's South America or Cuba. Yeah, some fine, whatever. It all blends together. (laughs) What the fuck happened? What? Ants up some animal's ass? Oh, God. Well, yeah, they they were in more to... It wasn't just bestiality. It was like torture. So they they tortured animals with fire ants and other horrific shit yeah. uh but this guy was involved in some of the really grotesque stuff and from what i understand he's been arrested so or it's yeah. speculated he has but I, it depends on if that really is him jesus christ there's a couple of articles about it in like um uh whatever diaspora media because you know cuba they don't even have a free press there but uh, some people outside of cuba run like media stuff and i saw a couple of articles about it yesterday uh josh from kiwi farms talked about it a little bit uh, as well i think on his stream yesterday so yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, I, I haven't really looked too much into it. I've been playing video games. So I, I, there's a lot of shit that's happened over the last week that I've kind of somewhat uh, been paying attention to. Okay, what else? Because I've, I've, been, I've had real life shit pop up. And so my past week has been a little bit... Uh... Uh, nice stream. What else? Give me topics. I don't know what to talk about. Well, what, what, am I, what do you want me to say? You know, I, I said, I have said that I, I suck at streaming. It's a, I like the experience, the excitement of the live experience of doing it. Um, and, and I prepare shit. I actually have like notes and crap of like what I'm going to talk about and all the rest of it. And they usually f- go out the window because I realize that, oh yeah, it's kind of like interesting for a podcast, but for a stream, it's sort of stupid. Oh, okay. Have you talked about the migrant caravan? Cause they've reached the border now. Right. So yeah, you've yeah. seen the picture of the tear gas getting shot at them. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's, so do you think these... that's, do you think that's a photo op? Because I mean, I've seen pictures, standing pictures of where you can see photographers placed and the people aren't running away from the tear gas. They're running at the photographers. And there are videos up on live leaks mm-hmm. of Syrians faking attacks on themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like you know what I mean? It really reminds me of that. Like where they'd yeah. have kids pose for injuries, and then the kid would get up and walk around and laugh. Yeah. And like uncut videos of those are up on live leaks. So I know that kind of shit happens. Yeah. And then you're seeing this migrant caravan stuff. Oh my god, the kids are getting you know tear gassed. Make sure to run towards the reporter rather than away from the fucking wall. Yeah, exactly. No, I I, I do believe that most of the images that are being shown on on the mainstream media are probably doctored or fake somehow or staged somehow. I mean, yeah, but I learned that when I was living in Chile because I would see these uh, foreign photographers like taking pictures of like protests against Pinochet, right? And in the picture, and that would appear in Time or Newsweek or wherever the fuck. It would be like it, it seemed like hundreds of people, but you know, you, when you were there, there were like a dozen guys with signs and, and everybody else walking about their business in downtown, right? And these a dozen people in the photographer would say, "Get closer together, get closer together," you know. It's like Jesus Christ. So, yeah, I, I, I've I've seen that since I was a teenager of recognizing the the everything that you see on the MSM is probably a bull, bullshit. But as to this uh, caravan and the images, I haven't seen it because I'm in Ukraine, so I don't get MSM. Uh, oh, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some news stories up of it. I mean, you can see some of the pictures. It's this fat chick wearing a fucking frozen T-shirt lugging around two eight-year-olds in diapers, <laughs> which raises a whole fuck ton of questions about what's going on with that. But um, I, I'm curious yeah, what your my, both of your opinions on this would be then. Do you think Trump will, now that the media is doing what the media, everybody knew they were going to do, waiting for the opportune time to take a photo, do you think he's going to back down on his stance? Or do you think he's going to say, fire another round at these faggots? I don't personally think he's going to back down, but I, I do take what you're saying into account, too, that uh, I mean, and I've heard other people just mow him down, just, you know, get him out of there, whatever it takes. Uh, but also, like, if there was some massive violence and a bunch of people were executed down there in the border, that would actually probably be a PR uh, bone for the left. So uh, maybe think twice about that. Uh, I don't think he's going to back down in terms of letting them in. Uh, but, well, didn't um, didn't Mexico offer them citizenship and they turned Mexico down, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they yeah, said, yeah. no, we don't want to live <laughs> Did in Did you see the mayor of Tijuana with the yeah. make Tijuana great again hat on yeah. walking around the other day, too? That was pretty good stuff as well. Yeah. No, I think that Trump's only out for this situation is to cut some deal with Mexico and have them bottled up in Mexico and never actually cross the border. 
you know, catch and release back to Mexico, not back into the United States. You know, I mean, I think that that's his only out. Uh, I think also that if he caves, his base is really, really going to be pissed uh, uh, because this this has become an issue. Yeah. 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 I I think that he's uh, I hope that he's smart enough to realize that his base, his support is is really going to turn on him if he caves on this issue. Uh, you know what? If he if he was smart, what I think he would do yeah. as a as a you know way of tabling this and talking about building his wall, yeah, is to show footage of the migrants at the walls that exist. Because I've seen nothing but video and photos of people crawling between gaps that are wide enough to walk almost you know full shoulder length through, yeah. kicking over fucking crappy little concrete rebar fences, mm-hmm. hopping over fences that are like three feet tall. If anything explains why you need a better border wall, it's That's showing. It at the fucking border going right over through and under your fucking walls that already exist. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the thing to me is that the Democrats are in a weird position um, because they, they recognize, Pelosi recognizes that the only way that, that the Democrats can win in 2020 is that they show like actual progress, that the Dems are doing things for the people as opposed to showboating and doing the socialist shit and, and identity politics and Ocasio-Cortez kind of crap, right? So they, they want to do this infrastructure bill. If I were Trump, I'd say, sure, let's do your infrastructure bill, and I'll, I'll add a few more tidbits to that bill, but you have to pay for my wall uh, and, and make it a sine qua non. Sort of like, you know, we'll do the infrastructure stuff that you want, Dems, but you got to build my wall. And that has to be, you know, top of the priority list, and we'll do all the other shit. And so that way, if the Democrats say no, then they look like, uh, you know, they don't care about the border and they don't care about working people. So it, it would put them in a box. I mean, it would seem to me that that, in so far as the system that we currently have, that would be the smart move. I don't know if uh, Trump's going to do that. I, I don't know. Maybe he'll take, like, I think it was Truman Wright with the Do Nothing Congress, where he basically was like, these guys are a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Uh, fuck them. I'm not yeah. going to sign shit until they do what I want. Yeah, that that actually worked for Truman, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, but he had to hold out for quite a while to make them get so much bad press, they've eventually buckled. Well, he nearly lost the, the 48 election over that, right? So, but so, it worked. It was a hell of a gambit. Yeah, it was a big gambit. Do you think that Trump has nervy enough to pull a gambit like that? I don't know if he's interested in the second term, and he might just do it for the fuck of it. What? Like, yeah, second, I, no, he's definitely going to do a second term. No, I, I, but, well, yeah, I, I, I'm not doubting that he would run, but I don't know if his heart is in it. I think he's seen the reality of what it's like to be at the head of the power structure in Washington, and... Uh, it's just a clusterfuck from every direction. <laughs> yes, it is. I, there, there are nothing but leaks, people stabbing you in the back. The Congress won't do shit. Your party won't do shit. You're constantly fighting with fucking people. And so, Mueller's trying to fuck him over, too. Yeah. yeah, everybody's up his ass. So I don't know if his heart's in it. But maybe a Truman approach would work. Maybe if he's just, you know, lock, sock, and barrel, fuck it. Let's, let's see how far we can push this. And uh, if I'm going down, I'll take them with me kind of mentality, maybe. Yeah. Plus, a lot of the Democrat voter base is uh, dependent on, you know, social welfare and stuff like that. Programs, not just welfare itself, but social spending and, uh, you know, urban spending and stuff like that. So if that if that spigot gets cut off for too long, uh, they they'll really be putting the bond there. So, ah, who knows? Yeah, who do you think's gonna Who do you think's gonna run on the Dem side? Do you think Hillary's Kamala gonna get Harris. it? Or do you think go with Biden? Kamala Harris. I'm calling it right now. Kamala Harris is gonna be the nominee. Isn't that that dumb fucking 20-year-old that doesn't know shit about Palestine? No, and that's Ocasio-Cortez. You're, you're mixing up your women of color. God uh, damn yeah. sexist that's the thing. thing. In California. I actually saw Sherrod Brown talking about running today. Uh, now he's a you know white male from Ohio, so I don't know if he could get it. But actually, I think that would be a pretty good candidate for the Dems. I, I don't know if he could get through the primaries, but I saw him talking no, about it's today. Be a chick. It's Obviously, be a chick. Elizabeth Warren's going to run, probably yeah. Gillibrand. It's no, going to be no. a massive. Gil- Gil- Nobody's going to vote for Warren. Why would she waste her time? No, no. Gil- I don't Brand think she could get it either. But. She can't run because she's up for re-election. And Gillibrand is smart enough to realize that Dem is not going to win in 2020, or the odds are long. So she, she'll, uh, she'll uh, wait until uh, 2024 because her Senate seat is for re-election in 2020. And so she'll like, support whoever's nominated. But I'm betting, I mean, Absolutely I think in New York moment. you can do both, though, right? You can run for president and run know. for your Senate seat. I, I don't know. Yeah, in a lot of states you can, so I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Uh, the field's going to be massive, though. So. Yeah, but I, I'm betting Kamala Harris. I think that what's going to happen is that it's going to it's going to be a woman thing. That it's going to be everybody's going to agree that it has to be a woman. And I think that that Congresswoman from um, from Hawaii, what's her name? She she could be a contender, kind of. Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. 
But I think that uh, it's going to be like uh, between, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Warren, Elizabeth Warren, you know, Pocahontas and um, Kamala Harris. And, Warren's uh, just terrible candidate, though, like Jim says. She's so shrill. Even Hillary comes off as more likable than Elizabeth Warren. It's just uh, like this prof professorial tone and just so shrill, always pointing and, you know, running. I don't know. I just don't think that that's going to win. Did I somebody mean, in your so fucking cool. chat actually say Bernie Sanders is a threat potentially? No, Bernie <laughs> Sanders is a threat to nothing. He lets fat <laughs> black women steal microphones from him. He's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, he I agree. I would have lost all respect for Sanders if I was a Sanders supporter when he bent the fucking knee to Hillary when she stole that shit from him. He should yeah. have fucking gone in swinging. Yeah. Fucking it. Fucking it. Yeah. I mean, why? Why did he bend the knee like that? I mean, I, I, I think that it speaks to something deep in his soul, that he's fundamentally a weak, you know? I mean, because he, he, they stole it. And, and it came out later that they actually had stole it. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Hillary that's is definitely why, the one. Yeah, that's why he was crying. If you look back at the footage, mm -hmm. he's literally in tears as this is going on. And I know that he knew. Yeah. And absolutely, he got fucked and stabbed in the back. And I will never understand why he didn't fucking raise hell and uh, go for blood on that. Because he's basically a cuck. I mean, that guy is the definition of a cuck. Okay? But look, the, Hillary is going to run. And that's going to be fucking hilarious. I mean, I can't wait for that. Because she's going to pull out all the stops. It's going to be fucking ugly. And she's going to fling so much shit at the other candidates because she's going to recognize that this is the last stand, you know, uh, of the of the Clinton of the Clintonistas, right? And oh man, I can't wait to see that. That shit show is going to be spectacular. That that's my my fearless prediction. Yeah. Do you think it pisses Hillary off that more Bushes have been in office than Clintons? Do you think that's what this is about? <laughs> Perhaps. No, I also I, I think it pisses her off because she put in all that time with Bill and stood by him throughout all the allegations. Like, I'm going to make this work for me. Got to be a senator. Uh, you know, did, bided her time, lost to Obama. She's like, okay, I'm going to get in after. It's all right. Just chill out. And then lost again. And now you have people telling her, why don't you just go away, Hillary? Even people on the left, like, why are you still here? Why are you, you're hurting us uh, politically? Why won't you go away? Uh, that's why I do think if she does run, there's going to be a lot of heat on her from the like the actual left wing of the Democrat Party. So uh, I still think uh, there's a good chance she will because uh, she wants to be president. So bad. you know, speaking of left wing Democrat parties, uh, who was her assistant? Right, that was married to Weiner. Oh, uh, yeah, Huma yeah. Abedin. Huma Abedin. Okay, what? The, okay, I, I was following this, and then it completely dis disappeared from the news cycle, and I've always been curious. Uh, Weiner and Huma Abedin and the Clintons. They were somewhat tangentially related to a couple of guys that were foreigners that were working as tech people in Back the Congress. In yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. What the fuck happened with that? Because that, oh, they, that they had holds. all this weird <laughs> shit, right? Fake identities, lots of money going in and out of the country, connections to basically terrorist cells. Yep. And they, they had access to stolen fucking uh, Congress computers, and they're getting into systems and doing shit. And that's a big story for two days, and suddenly... Nobody's talking about it. It's completely disappeared. There was never any follow-up on it. It just got memory old. Yep, yep. Uh, the the story on that. A one. Yeah, there we go. It was. Uh, I, I forget the name of the. I, for, I forget the exact relationship. But these uh, Pakistanis, these brothers, they were uh, essentially Pakistani intelligence officers. That's basically what they were. And so they were passing along all kinds of information to the Pakistani government. And of course, the Pakistani government is, is split between those who are pro-terrorist and those who are not, right? And so it, it's like, what the fuck? It, it's really clown world. And the fact that those people weren't prosecuted and the people who knew about that were prosecuted. And hey, we've got, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, I forget if it's Pelosi or, uh, or Feinstein's chauffeur was a Chinese Feinstein. agent. Yeah, oh, that's right, right. I'm, I'm sorry. Was it related to Aberdeen or was it related to Wasserman? Somebody in chat said it was Wasserman. Debbie Wasserman. Wasserman. Schultz. Wasserman that's Schultz. right. Yeah. Yeah. And she was the one that helped steal it for fucking Clinton yep. from Sanders. So yeah. you'd think this would have kind of an impact. How did that maybe play into what was going on with that? You're so naive. Yeah, again, <laughs> fucking memory hold, right? Just, just gone. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's the Clintons. What do you think? It's Wasserman Schultz. It's that whole crowd. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering, did these Awan brothers have barbells fall on their heads? Like, is that what happened? And that's why nobody... Did they get robbed and shot in the head twice and nothing was taken? Is that what we're talking <laughs> it was, about? Yeah, robbed and shot twice in the back of the head and it was suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know about that story. Yeah. I, I think it's something like that, you know. But uh, I had heard about uh, the, Anwan, the Anwan brothers. That's what they were called. I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't heard anything about the, um, the Feinstein's uh, driver who was a Chinese... Uh, 
Secret Service agent. And the other thing also that they don't really want to talk about is that a whole pe bunch of people at the NSA who are of Chinese descent are likely working for the Chinese government. And I mean, like real Manchurian candidate kind of shit. And, and uh, nobody really wants to talk about it, but it's, it, the odds of that are astronomically high because they keep turning up. And, uh, you know, they don't know what to do about it. I, I love the spy shit. Did you ever, um, I think it was uh, wires at WikiLeaks released. Did you ever see the South African and Israeli spy wires that were released from WikiLeaks? No. What was that all about? I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain this was what it was. It was a story that I read uh, that was posted when this leaked, uh, essentially. But um, they fucking hated each other. Right. Right. And they would basically kidnap the spies that they found and kill each other in creative and imaginative ways. But from what I understand, they took an Israeli spy and fed him to like fucking alligators or something. It was some wild fucking shit. Are you talking white Actually, South no. Africans or, or black South Africans? Black, like South African government, South Africa. Yeah. Why would they hate each other so much? I don't know. They, the South Africa fucking hates so, Israel. South Africa, um, the ANC is a long time supporter of the PLO uh, and stuff like that because they're like whatever brothers in the brothers in the struggle or whatever. So uh, they have a lot of heat with uh, Israel because of that. Oh, that's funny. Fed him to the alligators. Well, that's pretty. Cool. I wish I wish I could find <laughs> where this. This is yeah. This is around the time the wires got leaked from WikiLeaks, and the stories started popping up about these these two groups going against each other because they kept fucking sending spies over. But it's just it's a two groups you wouldn't necessarily think are going to try to gun for each other that are fucking going. I love that spy shit. That's always entertaining. No, I I, I think that that's just. Just wild. Uh, oh, by the way, what do you think of talking about WikiLeaks? What do you all think of uh, Assange is actually going to be indicted? What the fuck, man? I mean, he didn't do anything in the United States. I think it's absurd. And I think that that is much worse than the Jim Acosta shit that the press is freaking out over. Because Assange was actually releasing pertinent news. And he, he published stuff that was worthwhile, that should have been in the public domain or, or uh, under public scrutiny. And the fact that he's going to be prosecuted, even though he's not an American citizen, his revelations occurred outside the borders of the United States, and therefore the United States does not have any jurisdiction over what he did. How the hell are they going to square that circle? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think Trump should just issue a blanket pardon of Assange. I don't know if he'll actually do it, but uh, that's that's what I wish he would do. I, I agree. And also, Assange sitting in that embassy, What is how many years has it been now? Six, seven Six. years? I don't know. It's It's Six. been a long time. Six yeah. years? Yeah, I, d I don't see how he's doing it. I, I would almost just, at this point, just come out just to get out of that embassy. Of course, you're going to be put in a cage somewhere else. So. Well, he's going to get picked up. I mean, even if even if uh, Trump gives like a, a blanket waiver, he's going to get picked up. Uh, they want him in Britain. They want him in, yeah. what is it, Sweden? They want, they want like, four or five countries want his ass. Yeah. So, I mean, even if America ta you know takes it off the table, he's going to get nabbed by somebody. He's fucking stuck in there. Well, I think. Well, I should. Have... I should say the hologram is stuck in there because he's dead. <laughs> he's been dead for a while. We all know this. And the new Ecuadorian uh, power structure there don't really want him there in the first place. So I don't know. We'll see how. Yeah, he's a fucking hassle. You know, he's just yeah. A, yeah he's a, a, somebody called him a stone in their shoe. Yeah, yeah. The, the new president of Ecuador, Lenin, whatever he's called. Yeah, he's. Lenin. His actual name is Lenin. Yes. Yeah. 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 His first name is because he's you know red yeah. diaper baby. Yeah. But. Um, no, I think that uh, the, the, he should have taken his lumps. And I think that he's an object lesson as to just take the hit. Just take the hit up front and don't wait around. And him trying to um, find, uh, you know, asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, that was foolish. I think that just uh, standing still, you sure, arrest me. Because back in 2012, what would have happened? He would have gotten arrested. There would have been a big brouhaha. And the Obama administration would have caved because it would have looked really bad for them to actually do anything about Assange. And they would have like moved him here, moved him there, done a little, you know, song and dance, and then, you know, like Chelsea Manning, you know, he would. I, 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 I disagree. I don't think uh, in his situation you can take the hits and walk through it. I mean, they would have brought him in initially for the bullshit charges that he had, right? But it would have been used as a fracturing point for WikiLeaks. It would have been used as a way to try to break him, to get him to infiltrate, to fuck with what they do. Uh, they would have added more stuff on top of it. He would have sat in a prison cell. It's not. Chelsea Manning is nothing compared to Assange and WikiLeaks and what they do. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a way for him to walk through it. Um, he's, he's fucking stuck. He can't leave that room. He's going to be there until he dies or until somebody can secretly, you know, smuggle him out of the Ecuadorian fucking embassy into 
I don't know, no, some Asian can't. country or African country. Yeah, because I, I passed by, when I was living in London, I passed by that location, you know, just some, basically a sightseeing kind of opportunity, right? And there were cops all over the goddamn place. They, they are sitting, waiting for him to try to sneak out or anything like that. And I'm sure that they must have some sort of, you know, monitors, cameras, what have you, to make sure that he can't get out from some sort of underground exit or some, you know, some discreet exit that, the, that all embassies have. So, yeah, I think that he's stuck in that box, uh, presumably forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's, let's be honest. He's a dead man walking. And that, that's what Assange is. They're never going to let him go. He, he's either going to be dead or he's going to be sitting in that room until he dies. But that's what's been decided. Well, unfortunately, he never, uh, um, he, he threw shit in everybody's direction. I mean, he, he, he was like, he, he never got a base of support that would actually champion him. Because the liberals want him, the conservatives want him, everybody wants him. I mean, I want him in prison, I mean, okay? He doesn't have any friends. And for a guy in that kind of situation, politically speaking, that's a disaster. And he burned a lot of his friends, uh, especially in England. True. When, when, uh, when he, you know, uh, when he skipped out on bail, and a lot of people took the financial hit. It wasn't so much the money, it was the fact of it, you know? And I think that, you know, he well, doesn't he have any friends. Well, he so much stuff from so many countries. It's like Jim said, I, I would just like to see Trump pardon him just for the, you know, the optics of it. Uh, but as far as it actually keeping him out of jail. Uh, well, yeah, we're, we're talking about jail, but, you know, yeah. I look what the Russians did with, what was it, polonium pellets and shit, despise <laughs> it. They would oh, run sure. their mouth, they'd fucking tap them with an umbrella, and then the asshole would die from radiation <laughs> yeah. three days later. Like, yeah. they don't fuck around. And he's, yeah, he's... That was, God damn it, yeah. Spy versus yeah, spy shit. Himself, yeah, he, well, he's put himself on a list where he's going to, you know, if he, if he leaves that place, he's dead. So I, I don't know what he's going to do. I really don't. No, uh, I'm kind of curious about uh, England. Well, you know, uh, Ethan, your your better half is is over there. I'm curious That's about the true. whole Brexit situation. Um, I don't see how May is going to get Brexit through a uh, parliament. I think that there's a better, you know, 50 50 chance that the conservative government collapses next month uh, and they either do call an early election or have a new leader. Uh, but that being said, I really don't know. The EU's already said they're not going to negotiate another Brexit plan. So uh, is Brexit even going to happen at this point? I think that there's also a chance that they do some type of other. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Your, your, your chat's correcting me. Yes, the umbrella thing was rice in their thing. I'm thinking of Litvinenko, uh, the guy that literally was killed with fucking radiation poisoning. Yeah, they, they put it in his tea. But no, no, no. The umbrella, tea, guy, yeah. the, the umbrella with the pellet gun thing, that was in the 70s. That was like a USSR kind of uh, shit. Some defector that they off that way. Uh, and let me look it up real quick. But yeah, they they um, they killed a guy with a with a pellet gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's an umbrella right in his like thigh or something. Yeah. And he thought he just got bumped into, it and then uh, he's dead. Yeah, umbrella uh, poison. Well, the Russians just tried to poison somebody in the UK earlier this year. I mean, allegedly the uh, script script balls or whatever. Uh, so they're known to go pretty hard. Yeah. Oh God, that damn! They it wasn't even a spy that they offed. It was a fucking novelist, uh, Georgi Ivanov Markov, Bulgarian. Uh, killed in September 11th of 1978. Um, he was originally worked as a novelist and playwright in his native country of Bulgaria until his defection in 68. After relocating, he worked as a broadcaster, journalist for BBC and Radio Free Europe and West Germany's uh, Deutsche Welle. Markov used... Uh, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Didn't he? Did he? Didn't he write like a book saying that like uh, a Russian officials like gay or something? Like he did something that really pissed them off. I don't know, but the thing is, he he was assassinated on a London street via a micro-engineered pellet containing ricin, fired into his leg from an umbrella wielded by someone associated with the Bulgarian secret service. Oh, it was a Bulgarian op, you know? Yeah. It has been speculated that they asked the KGB for help. Man, that that is just. I, I don't know why they would kill a writer. I always think it's stupid to kill somebody like that. Um, I mean, for, of course, the morality of it, I'm opposed to the you know, indiscriminate murder of anybody. But uh, just the practicality. Well, of it, did it work, though? I mean, were people <laughs> writing the same shit afterwards or they were looking for motherfuckers with umbrellas on the street? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if it were today's London, they probably prohibit umbrellas from now on, you know? Good They'd God. give them a medal and say how diverse that was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But oh my god, yeah. So no, I mean like 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 the the, the Assange thing. I just cut the guy loose. I mean I, I see no purpose in in having this. Who is going to be convinced? Who is what is there to be won? I, I, that's what I always think in in situations like the Assange case 
And insofar as the, the Brexit situation, you know, what's there to be won by this deal? The deal is horrible. I mean, have you guys even looked at it? What uh, what deal? The Brexit, Brexit deal that, yeah, that May it's is terrible. pushing. It's oh, the horrible. Brexit deal where they've got to pay 60 billion pounds and they have to abide billion. by the laws and all the other crazy shit. Yeah. Indefinitely. And no representation in the EU parliament Wait, as well. was it 30? I thought, it was, I thought they were asking for like 62. No, 39 billion. I thought that that was the agreed upon number. Chat, if you guys know... Uh, yeah, I thought it was 39 billion and they have to be part of the customs union, but they can never leave unless the EU approves their leaving. So it's like yeah. it's like the worst of all possible. I mean, it's worse than being in the EU. What the fuck? The These e- guys are fucking the EU and, and Britain have to both agree on their leave. Yeah, you're, you're anyway. right. It is 39 billion. I don't know where I got 62 from. Doesn't Maybe matter. Right. <laughs> it's absurd amount anyway, you know. But Jesus Christ, I, I, I don't quite understand. And they kept saying that Theresa May was a you know, bloody difficult woman. The woman is a fucking idiot. You know? and, and to tell you the truth, I'm really disappointed in Rhys Mogg because he was not able to kill the queen. You know? I mean, uh, what the fuck? If you're going to make a blow, if you're going to go for the queen, you've got to kill her dead. You know? So uh, what I'm curious about is this takes place in March of next year. Right. But if it really is Brexit in name only... Are the Brits still under obligations to follow Article 13 and 11? I mean, is Europe going to go... We have to talk about this eventually. I mean, is Europe going to go dark in a couple of months if they fucking pass this thing? Because YouTube has said they're not letting you upload or stream if you're from Europe on YouTube anymore. Like, that's their solution to avoiding the copyright issue. What? Run that by me again? They're cutting Europe off. It's going to be fucking segregated. They can't deal with the new copyright laws under Article 13 and 11 with the link tax... And anybody being able to basically hit you for anything, you're done. Really? Oh, man. Yeah, they've been bitching about it uh, a lot lately. I'm starting to see why, why uh, Sargon went to the uh, EU parliament there, was so involved with this. Uh, well, no, he went I mean, to LARP. Was, he went to LARP. It was the excuse to. Well, you know. that too. But I mean, uh, you know, if they sudden, suddenly he can't upload or do any streams anymore, I can see that that, that eating into the old. Uh, the old wallet there. Well, I mean, see, that means that, uh, coach, how are you going to get your videos to us? I, mine is all original content. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, you're well, see? You're golden. not in the EU, right? <laughs> no, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? No, I, I mean, first of all, the, Ukraine is not part of the EU, number one. No. Uh, number two, um, all my content is original, so n- no worries. And number three, worst case comes to worst, I'll just get a VPN that'll send me from fucking Ecuador or wherever the fuck, you know? Some place where you don't have these crazy laws, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in three months' time, on two or what? It's December, right? They're voting December nineteenth, I think, on this. I mean, we may never see Sargon or V again. They might just disappear. <laughs> it's just like, like, just gone. Oh, like, like, like V and Sargon had been devoured by one of uh, V's fever dreams. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nobody got my joke. Are, oh, are you oh. trying to turn us pro Article 13? Is that what's happening here? But no, nah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, From everything I've read, it looks like they're going to pat, they're going to, you know, give it the final go ahead. So. What I'm also curious about is what are sites that use European hosting for their shed to get around, you know, problems in America? Like, doesn't Ed host their content in some European country that's covered under the EU? If 13 goes through, won't they get fucked? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's in what is it? I want to say Slovakia. I'm not sure. I have to I have to double check on that. But yeah, I think it is an EU country. Yeah. So I mean, what the fuck's going to happen with that? And I don't even know where Josh hosts Kiwi Farms. Is Kiwi Farms going to get fucked by this? I don't know. I'll ask him. See if he's around. Um, uh, I don't know if he's around or not. Uh, uh, do you see him? I'm I'm looking for him real quick. Uh, I'll I'll message him. I mean, it sounds like a great business opportunity to set up an alternative fucking hosting service in like Africa now or fucking Asia somewhere that people can jump when Europe goes dark. China, China, they don't give a fuck about anything. You know, so long as you don't mention Tiananmen Square and a, and a few other keywords, they could care less. No, I, I think that, uh, yeah, because, you know, these big co- companies, the easy thing, the easy solution is just to cut it. Right. And so, yeah, that YouTube would cut out Europe altogether. It's fucking harsh, but um, I, I'm trying that's to... What I, that, that's what I heard. I mean, I don't understand. And the reason I believe it is what is the alternative? They can't impose Article 11 and 13 standards on the rest of the world. So yeah. how are they ever going to cope with the amount of European content coming through? They'd have to 
analyze every fucking video, every frame of every live stream. And the oh, instant no, something came it. through, they'd immediately have to act. And then you have to pay taxes on links and shit. I, I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. I think Josh is actually in, in the Ukraine with you, Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's like eight over. in the morning here, you know. And, yeah. And so he might not be awake yet, you know, or just. Okay, he, he's actually up. So if you want me to. Oh, yeah. Him. Send him a link. It'd be great to have him on. Shoot the shit. But I, that's a really good question. I, I, if, look, if I were YouTube, I'd just say, fuck Europe. And I just allow, like, designated content creators, uh, like, like corporate uh, content creators, What's to have stuff up. And uh, fuck everybody else. It would be the easiest solution. I mean, don't you agree? Hey, it has to be something like that. I, I don't know how they're going to manage it otherwise. Yeah, because you, you can't alienate your American base, right? And, and your American viewers and your American uploaders. Because it's, it's, it's not so much an issue of alienating your, your uploaders in the United States. It's the fact that your users would be sympathetic and very pissed off if you're not allowing um, people to upload wherever the fuck they want in the States, in North America, right? But Europe, frankly, the population of Europe is more docile. They, they like, uh, go along with whatever the EU says. And they'd be like, so, okay, sure. Josh, are, are you protected if Europe goes dark? You, you're not hosting over there in the EU or anything. Hey, Josh, right? how's it going? Oh, fuck no. Dobre okay. utra, uh, coach. <laughs> Dobre utra, yeah. Uh, no, never, ever, 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 for any reason whatsoever, put anything in Europe. Don't. Just don't. Ever. It is, uh, it is awful. Uh, the, the countries in Europe are retarded. The people in Europe are retarded. And the worst are the British. The Anglo menace needs to be eradicated peacefully. Uh, they are just, no, don't put anything in Europe. Okay, do you know if Ed, Ed's not hosted in the EU, is it, or is it? No. Okay, all right, yeah, because was, was, that was the only thing that I was really bothered about, because I read both sites, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't really care if British YouTubers are fucked off the internet forever or whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> Edie and QE Farms are, are hosted in various locations. I actually host uh, one of the front ends for Encyclopedia Dramatica right now uh, just to kind of help out with that. Uh, but no, nothing, nothing's ever put in Europe. Uh, it just in principle, the, even Switzerland and Norway and Iceland, they don't have good laws. Iceland was the surprising one. Iceland has very strict defamation laws, so putting Kiwi firms there would be impossible. Well, how do you think this is going to play out? If uh, Do you think 13 and 11 are going to get passed? And if they do, what do you think uh, is going to happen with Europeans on the internet? Oh, is this what this Sorry, I haven't been watching. Ralph gave me a random invite. Oh, no, so. yeah. We, we, we were talking about uh, Article 13 and 11 because it looks like, I mean, it, it's went through the initial round. They're going to do another round of voting in December. If it passes that, um, you know, I've heard speculation. I, I'm fairly certain YouTube has commented on this where they're just going to kind of cut off uploads and live streams from Europe. Cause they oh, yeah, they're going to have to. They're going to have to, like, okay, like, you upload to YouTube. So everybody here uploads to YouTube or used to in the, in the case of one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but you guys know how like I I was shocked. I got on YouTube and I started uploading stuff like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna play an intro and an outro song to my streams because I like I like music. I like setting tone with music. Like the fucking copyright system on YouTube is just uh, unimaginable. I will get copyright strikes from UGM taking down my videos over three seconds of shit, and that's within the United States. So it's like. I mean, what's going to happen? I predicted this on a different stream. I don't even remember what stream I was ranting. I think it was Nick Rikita's, one of his videos. I was saying, what's going to happen with the internet? Especially as different countries are reacting to internet problems differently. China China's already done what I think is going to happen. But Russia is going to start doing it. Uh, it's going to happen with Europe because of their IP laws. And it's going to happen with America. Is you're going to have... The internet as we know it right now, as a global infrastructure, a global network of independent uh, corporate providers working together and sometimes quarreling with each other to detriment, but in general talking to each other, you're going to see that collapse. And you're not going to have a big I, the internet anymore. You're going to have continental little I internet. And it, it, like if it happened, like it happened with China already, you already have the little I internet there. But you're going to see it with Europe, and you're going to because Europe's getting pissy with both the United States and Russia, and other places. You're going to start seeing it in the Middle East as though like the only reason why the Middle East is still on the big eye internet right now is that the the people there don't know a lot. They don't know the technology, but they're catching up. They're getting there, and when they get there, you're going to have a Arab Union internet. You're going to have the European Union internet. 
that Switzerland, Norway, Iceland probably will join. And then you're going to have the American internet, which is just North America. And, you know, there's going to be big companies that communicate with each other across these boundaries. And that'll be the remnants of the big I internet. But no, you're not going to have, you're not going to have this shit by 2020 or not, not 2020, but 2030. By 2030, it'll all be gone. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. I think there's going to be a push for real ID too. I mean, I think yeah, that's going to be yeah. a big, big portion of it. Yeah. Already, already in China, if you connect, you have your uh, like. There are anonymous quote unquote sites in China that are kind of like 4chan, but to register, you have to give them your your identification well, number. Well, the thing too is like uh, when people talk about this, they bring up China, and then people say, "Well, that's a communist country." All right, well, look at South Korea because they do something very similar there, where you're pretty much known. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Even even with like MMORPGs, you can't play. A, a Korean MMORPG on the Korean servers from outside of Korea, unless you happen to have a government ID from Korea. So no, it's it's <laughs> it's not it's not just a, a communist thing. It's not just an authoritarian thing because Europe isn't authoritarian technically, but they're controlling their intellectual property rights. So even if it's not an authoritarian country, you still have these big dick companies that want to fuck people over, and they're going to fuck people over uh, in in the same kind of fashion. Uh, not to not to be a, a fucking Debbie Downer, but, you know the, the memories of 4chan where the the FBI was hilarious, hilariously incompetent, and people were just posting child porn all over B for for years. That shit's gone. <laughs> they they have robots now that can like programmatically identify child pornography as it's uploaded and bunk it off, and you know that's great. But that technology is is applied to everything now. You upload a video. My I fucking uploaded a three hour stream, right? And as it was processing, I got claimant uh, copyright ID shit for a bunch of. Uh, I played like 30 seconds of the movie uh, Precious. I played some UGM stuff, and that all got that got marked, right? And mm. the video hadn't even been fully processed yet. You couldn't watch the first hour; it was still being processed. So the copyright complaints were processing faster than the actual encoding for the uh, the first hour of the the live stream. So this technology is. Is progressing very quickly, but only in the ways that benefit corporations. Well, yeah, I mean, they've even you know started factoring in like if you put up a stream or if you do a stream or you put up a video and it's got copyrighted content in it, uh, even if you're the uploader, you used to be able to download it. They won't let you download copyrighted no. material anymore. No, and way. even th like third-party sites are starting to go along with that. Like if you go to certain converter yeah. sites or download sites, it'll say can't count down or can't download this because Clip it's copyrighted. If you use yeah. JDownloader, you can usually get it, but as far as third-party sites and YouTube itself, you can't. Yeah, it's this is uh, it, it's fuck. <laughs> and, well, that uh, was a nice positive fucking uh, <laughs> discussion. <laughs> yeah, JDownloader. That, uh, if no, I'm I'm sure all you guys already know about it, but an app uh, called JDownloader uh, will usually pretty much always uh, get you a copy of it, but you can't download. So even if it's just a couple little claims, uh, YouTube won't let you download it from the control panel. Uh, What's it all called? Normal... J, J downloader. I think I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, is that's that all one word. J downloader. Well, learn how to use the command yeah. line. There's something called YouTube dash DL. It's a Linux program, but it's ported to windows and YouTube dash DL will pretty much be able to download anything. And you have to update it like every day because YouTube is constantly fucking with YouTube download. But it's it's I mean, J download probably just uses YouTube download. But a lot uh, of times J downloader it does update a lot. But it's well, it's can't, can't you just every time. watch the video still in Flash? I mean, doesn't it just download the cache on your fucking desktop? You can save the videos like that. Yeah, no, it it does, but it, it'll throttle your connection if you download it through a different means. So it'll it'll limit your download speed to precisely what is required to watch it in real time, but you won't be able to buffer it. A couple now, ahead. Ralph, I, I'm reading the J Downloader thing. I don't know if I trust the author. Uh, did you look at the guy that made this, J Caesar? Who is that? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> That's Jay Caesar, pretty, J Downloader, yeah, I, I don't pretty, know. That's a pretty regal title, <laughs> though. There, though. I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it works good. Uh, somebody suggested that to me because I was having problems because, you know, I take the kill streams and back when I was on YouTube and download them and get the audio and put it up in podcast format. And, uh, you know, I was noticing that I couldn't download certain ones because it had copyrighted stuff in it. Uh, and then all of a sudden Clip Converter, usually I would just use Clip Converter, but they changed it to where if it's blocked on YouTube now, Clip Converter won't work with it either. So uh, YouTube threatened them. Yeah. Why. 
yeah, they're again, all these little downloading companies. Yeah, they're uh, like, yeah. we're going to shut you down. Uh, but yeah, J Downloader works works uh, pretty good. For, now, it might be slow sometimes. Sometimes the actual download speed is pretty slow, uh, but it'll get it done. You can also download like just the audio from from stuff, too, if you want to do that. So it's pretty handy. Yeah, I just I, I just use add-ons and shit to do. Uh, I don't even know what they are. Easy YouTube downloader, YouTube download helper, video YouTube download. Yeah. Like, there are 800 fucking ones for Firefox and uh, Chrome and shit. No, I use Airy, and yeah, it has that thing of like some videos I can't download, but I'm I'm not very terribly sophisticated. The one I use is uh, I think it's SaveFrom.net or something like that, and it puts a little download button uh, beneath every YouTube video. But on the copyright ones, of course, it won't work. So, well, the, the thing that has me really concerned is the issue of uh, having like a government issued uh, email or or something like that. I think that that's oh, real ID is coming. Yeah, yeah, no, you better get ready for that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I think that they're going to roll it out in the UK first. It would, it would make sense. <laughs> of course they are. Why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, mate, you need a license for that uh, internet connection? Yeah. That, that makes sense. Um, Re Real ID is going to suck so fucking bad. Oh, God, is it going to fucking ruin the experience? You know, it could, it could have the opposite effect where people are just openly fucking belligerent now. It's like, what, you want me to say this with my Real ID? Okay, go fuck yourself. I'll say whatever the fuck I want now. I don't have an option. No, I, I don't no, have the, no, the option no, of being no. white with my no, it'll, it'll make everybody like passive consumers of internet. And, and the, sure, there'll be a few people who are going to be the wild men of the, of the online world, but everybody's going to know who they are, and eventually they'll get rolled up. They say one wrong thing, well, it's, one it's, 1488 joke, and they're fucked. Well, it's like the old joke about, like, you know, uh, people would always make jokes about 4chan saying, oh, well, if the government knows what your IP is, and they can tie it to your post in this thread. Like, you get that real ID shit going where your IP and your name is attached to basically everything you're posting. And the, well, how are you going to browse a fucking anonymous board at that point? Yeah. It's a, I, I've given a lot of thought about the whole notion of anonymity online. And it seems to me that what it is is that, you, see, by being anonymous, you're able to explore things and, and test them out and see if you agree with them or not. I mean, how many times, you know, growing up, you were spouting some idea to your friends, some thought, some political idea, <laughs> you whatever. You make this sound so artful. I just want to call people nigger, man. What do you... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, it, it's just, it just seems horrible that, that that's the future. And I think it's going to create a lot more social pressure uh, like we're experiencing now. Th this kind of like pressure cooker environment of not being able to say any fucking thing. You know, in, in China, this whole thing of the social credit situation, right? That thing is going to fucking explode at some point because people are going to be so stressed out, this feeling that, that, that they are under no, pressure. No, I disagree. I disagree entirely because the, the Chinese see it as a game and they love to play. They like to, to crank up their score and, and no, that, that shit works extremely well in China. Really? Because, it, yeah, it's not just like, oh, Big Brother's watching you because you can, you can do stuff that sets out a line. They won't disappear you in the middle of the night, but your, your score is going to take a hit. Right. And it's kind of it's kind of like falling behind. It's kind of like just being penalized, but in a way that isn't um, it's, it's not negative reinforcement. In fact, you get positive reinforcement by towing the line, because if you if you retweet or reblog or whatever, something that the government put out, something like uh, the government puts out a big news article about the South uh, China Sea crisis and how they're, they're doing stuff and how it's theirs and how people need to lay off and just let China control it. You retweet it and you say, yeah, this is right like your score gets a big a, a big thumbs up and that creates the incentive to do it it's not that you lose it that that you know aggravates people it's the the <laughs> so, reward sensation of yeah so, the line. So basically the government gives you hearts gives you likes and and you you go for more you keep on hitting the button oh man that's fucking well, I, I mean the dopamine rush may work in asia I, I know facebook's tinkering with an idea like that over here with their social credit score shit uh, but I'm more interested in if, if China can make the idea work for them, are they going to try to export it through their apps? I mean, we're talking about TikTok. That's an app that's run by China. Is that going to get some kind of weird foreign version of social credit? Oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure that'll be the first 10 steps. I don't know what, like, I've, I only know that that weird hit or miss thing that, that's from TikTok. But you might see something where it's like, if you post something anti-China and the machines detect that it's anti-China, uh, people won't see it and you won't get your likes and you won't get your retweets and you won't get your comments and shit on TikTok. But if you post something that's pro-China, something that flatters Xi Jinping, you might get, you know, like more promotion, like automatically the machines will promote it and you'll get tons of stuff. And you might think, okay, you know, subconsciously in your, in your squishy Play-Doh brain, you're thinking if I post something that is flattering to China, I get 
uh, way more, way more uh, exposure, and people love it, and you that. So I should just keep doing that, and it won't be a direct thought. It won't be them telling you to do that, but it will. It'll stimulate you, and so, it'll so, activate the omelets without so without you knowing. But so basically, you're t- you're saying that we're going to become Pavlovian shills. <laughs> That's yes. basically it. Oh, well, li- listen, I will kiss China's ass if they let me call people faggots on the internet. I don't give a shit. China's That's... fantastic. Let me call people faggots, China, and we're good to go. I had this thought a while ago. It's like, wouldn't it be funny if I ended up in the DPRK and I could convince Kim Jong-un to create like an internet exclave where I can host oh, whatever the fuck idea. I want. Good idea. And the old- the only the only caveat is people in DPRK can't access my sites, but I can host whatever the fuck I want, and they're gonna keep it up. Like that, would, I would do it. I would live in DPRK and eat fucking fried rat if I could do that. That yeah. would be perfect. That would that that would be totally yeah. I, I yeah. Hang on a second. Let me just do a quick super chats because they've been piling up and, and people have been very kind and I've been remiss on on this particular issue. So hang on. Uh, Isaac Jones. Oops, where did you go? Isaac Jones says, Coach, why is there an autistic Lego background? Because I'm autistic. Uh, Penty, uh, pacing while streaming, this is artistry. Jim, take note. Yes, Jim, take note. Uh, Artless, suitless, life is suffering, I understand. Yeah, yeah, you're you're just, you know, artless and suitless. That's the tragedy of it. Naked and and, uh, jejun. (laughs) Penty, if Trout drops below 50,000, he will kill someone. I think he's going to kill somebody if he drops below 100,000. Uh, Constantine's commentary. Trunk, uh, excuse me, Kraut incoming with a truck of peace. That, I'd like to stream that, please. Uh, Leo the Burn Tickler. Leo the Bum Tickler, excuse me. I only know about Dresden from author Kurt Vonnegut's book, Slaughterhouse-Five, and Mother Night. I'm ashamed I don't know about history. Well, that's why we have the internet and Wikipedia. Go read up. Uh, Buddy Killer. Doing good coach... Uh, 148 gang gang Jim come check out Barry O and Danish police on the best streaming platform also Kitty's a massive bundle of sticks well said rando number nine what is your take on Blair White detransitioning oh that's an interesting <laughs> let's pause on the super chats and discuss that Blair White is detransitioning I thought that he and Sargon were going to be an item someday I'm, I'm disappointed so what, what does that even entail? Blair's like, going to stop taking hormones, apparently, and wants to freeze his sperm so he can have kids. Well, well, isn't Blair dating a dude? Can't that dude use his sperm? Yeah, well, what I was told, so that's what I asked, because I was like, isn't that a huge insult to the guy you're dating? Can he impregnate somebody? But apparently, this is what I was told in chat. I don't know. Uh, I guess they watch more of Blair's content than I do, which is almost zero, unless I'm looking to laugh at it. Uh, but apparently, uh, Blair wants to take his sperm and impregnate that guy's sister. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that's what I was told, yeah. So, I guess that's why they don't use his sperm. Uh, that actually made sense, if that's the plan. Is it, wait, is uh, this like a long con? Like, <laughs> I, I, I want to, is this like a long con to fuck some dude's sister, and this has been in the works for like five years? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's what I was told. That's what I was told. And I mean, that actually lines up with it, so... Oh my god, this is some goofy shit. Oh man, this apparently Blair's listen. talked about this on 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 their channel or whatever. So I, I'm just trying to imagine what would happen if I went up to Jade and said, "Hey, listen, I want to have a baby. <laughs> Can I fuck your sister?" Like, you know, like, I, don't <laughs> I think that she might transition you on the spot with a with a yeah, kitchen knife. You know machete. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, that is just some weird ass shit. Uh, my personal relationships are not complicated like that. I, I, you know, Blair, he, she wins on that score. That's just, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me get back to uh, Super Chats real quick. Um, an unnamed source, Danish police are on the case, Goy. I don't know what that reference is. We'll find out. There's a channel on Streamy called Danish Police. So they do pretty good stuff. So that's oh, got to check them out. We'll definitely check them out then. Aaron Shadows, just tuned in. What has been going on here? Ooh, lots of interesting things. We scared a pretty and nice young woman away. That's what we did. Mecha Flare Zero, this is known as cyber balkanization, internet balkanization, the div- dividing and conquering of the internet. The internet is too problematic, it seems. I would say so. Meringue Bad, you are Harlow's monkey, and Big Tech is the clothed, wired mother. I don't know that, what that reference is to. That's some big brain shit that you got thrown at you there. Yeah, who who is that? 
Don't ask me. I'm a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> I, 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 I guess I'm in that club too. I have no idea what Harlow's monkey and big tech is the clothed wire mother. Oh, which movie was that? That that um, is this like? Oh, a, uh, um, you know what? I know what it is. It was they gave a baby to a a fake uh, like a baby monkey oh, baby story, yeah. to a fake uh, like uh, clothes wire replica of of a mother with like milk in like where the breast would be like milk bottles. Yeah, and the baby became attached to the uh, the fake mother. Wait, it's a monkey baby or a human baby? Monkey yeah, there's baby. Video. Oh, there a monkey <laughs> you can't baby. do this with people. <laughs> you know, I mean, shit. Oh, man. Let's hope so. Damn. Damn, that's that's kind of depressing. That's severely depressing, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I think that I'm caught up with Super Chats. So, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about the end of the internet and, and that we're all going to be like slaves to shilling. We're going to be... Well, before to- that, I have a question. Did you guys... Uh... I, I think Ralph knew, but did you hear Jim about Wolf? Yeah, we were we talked about that. That's the uh, Cuban one, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So is that confirmed? He was that was the guy, right? The yeah, that was the guy. Uh, I, I did a little stream about it. It's about thirty minutes it's on my channel. But in short, what happened is this fucking guy. Like we had completely given up on Wolf. We just said Cuba doesn't have any animal rights laws. You know, even if we did find them, it, 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 like they're not going to do anything. Well, this one guy, he detached himself from the spastics that were flinging around shitty fake dogs and bad information. He uh, got into contact somehow with the guy's employer, which was a hospital, and he got fired from it. And through them, he got into contact with every animal rights organization in the country of Cuba. And they recognized him from the pictures uh, the guy had found and said, yeah, he's been adopting animals from us. And one of them had a policy of taking pictures. He only adopted from them once because of their policy. But they had a policy of taking a picture of the adoptee with the adopted animal. And one of the the picture that just so happened to be from that organization was uh, a little black puppy, which was in the, the leaks. Oh. So we had a picture of the guy we thought was him and the same person holding a puppy, which we independently saw from the leak. And uh, from there, the animal rights organization started publishing the shit about him, saying that he needs to be locked up. The Cuban constitution needs to be amended to protect animals. And they said that the police detained him. And the interesting thing about that is there is no law against animal cruelty in Cuba. So what the fuck they detained him on is a complete mystery. But somebody speculated on uh, the Cuban farms that because of the Fidel Castro era policies on sexual deviancy, what they're probably going to do is declare him criminally insane and keep him locked up and doped up on Thorazine. Oh yeah, common, basically common forever. Reason. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. That's uh, yeah. That's so. Are you telling me some fur fake YouTuber is going to get the Cuban uh, Constitution <laughs> amended because of his degeneracy? Because that's pretty fucking spectacular. Yes. The, no. That's what I said. It's like, isn't it funny if this this weird autistic Kiwi farm crusade gets the Cuban Constitution amended? Because they're they have this thing where they're renewing it. And they're they're looking what to do and change in it. And the groups are like, this is a clear call that we need to amend the constitution to protect animals. What as if well. they hang him? Will you make that a banner <laughs> on your website? Oh yeah, I'll I'll put it up there. And I'll be uh, right back. I just don't think we'll ever know what happened to him. I think he's gone. I think <laughs> I don't think there will be any more news about him. If they they put him in like a criminal detention center, or if they keep him doped up like a like a zombie in a mental ward in Cuba. I don't think we'll ever hear about it. Though the interesting thing is uh, the groups looked at the pictures and they said, it's clear that a second person is taking these pictures. They're not mounted on the table or anything. So now the hunt is on to figure out who his friend was and they're looking for him too. Well, I know the uh, snake thing guy got let go. Do you think that... um... No, I, he's I, I not let go. They're, he's out of prison right now because the DA is dropping those charges to arraign him on different, more uh, sweeping charges. Because they have all this information, and they only arrested him on certain animal abuse charges, but now they want to get him on child endangerment as well. So he's yeah, out for right was, now. That was the one that kept talking about his nephew, right? Yes. Yeah, fuck that guy. So, yeah, that, that's interesting. I was going to say, do you think the Cuban officials, if they're going to go after this guy for whatever law they're going to throw at him, like they don't have the same hang-ups that a lot of European or you know North American countries would have, so they can kind of dig through everything, right? They don't really need to fuck around with courts. They could just look at everything. Do you think if they get a lot of damning information, they're going to send it to other countries? 
Oh God, who knows? I mean, it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny? Just saying, if this thawed U.S. Cuban relations, <laughs> like we we gotta <laughs> get these dog fuckers, <laughs> America, Trump, come over here and look at this shit. We need to get them. Well, yeah, because I was talking about when we were talking about TikTok earlier. Like that website fucking hates furries. Like I'm I'm kind of amazed by the amount of younger teenagers that fucking hate furries. <laughs> Like it's surprising to me that it's just built up to a crescendo. They're they're all they're all conservative as fuck. They they they're so angry and they're so prejudiced and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's some funny shit that's going on on that website. But um, yeah, I, I, oh. watching this uh, this unfold, I I hope Kiro gets f- just fucked. I hope they find something that's just extra dirty on that asshole. Well, you know, speaking of because Kiro is really fucking popular on YouTube. Guess what popular YouTuber got in contact with me? Uh, Shane Dawson wasn't that the guy that interviewed him? Was that who? No, got I in my in my little stream I said, look, the entire fandom is guilty of this shit. The entire fandom, in some way, supports, condones, or overlooks uh, animal abuse in their community. And I pulled out that quote from Your Movie Sucks dot org and Adam Johnson saying that animals can consent with body language to sex. And uh, I read that, and he left a fucking comment on this video. A long Saying time. what? Uh, let me pull it up real quick. It's, I got uh, it. Oh, you already have it? Okay. Yeah, um, it. Uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. Getting. Uh, by the way, he's using the little green text arrow here. Getting so triggered over an opinion you disagree with that you... Lo- dis- getting so triggered over an opinion you disagree with that you lump them in with pedophiles and animal abusers. Uh, then he goes on with his own quote. That's some SJW level shit if I've ever seen it. I'm sorry you dislike my opinions on moral philosophy, but treating this as anything more than that is just nonsense. Uh, I don't see it as any different than my opinion on abortion, assisted suicide, or drug legalization. Each of the uh, This is animal fucking he's talking about, by the way. Uh, each of those topics have huge moral implications associated with them, but obviously no one's obsessing about any of those because this is all about trying to paint me as some sort of animal abuser. Sorry to break it to you, but I don't own a dog, and I have no interest in fucking real animals. Uh, the anthro animals I'm attracted to are lions anyway, so good luck trying to convince people I fuck those. Anyway, this is just retarded. I obviously condemn the actions of animal abusers featured in this video. It's disgusting. Attempting to lump me in with them because you're upset over my wrong think is disgusting too, though. And, then- and my response to that is, uh, and sh- my response is longer than his. But I, I just said it's like, you know, you can paint this however you want, but it was an indefensible statement. And the fact that you want to die on this hill is kind of weird. Because from what I understand, his producer is uh, like his assistant for a long time. Uh, Mark, uh, they broke up. I don't know if they were in a real relationship or if it was just like a partnership, but they split. Uh, Adam confirmed it. And he was posting on 4chan saying that uh, Adam cried when he refused to defend his bestiality position on Reddit and shit for him. So, like, I, I bring that up and I say, you know, this is obviously something that's not normal. It's not normal to people who even really like you. And I really like your content, but you should just take a fucking loss and say that this isn't acceptable. And the fact he keeps defending it, like, I, I'm not trying to falsely conflate him with an animal abuser. It's, an animal cannot consent to sex with a person, period. And even if they do, it fucks up the relationship between the animal and the person. You're supposed to be taking care of them. <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> even if they do. <laughs> I'm saying hypothetically, even if an animal could consent, what happens is it changes the relationship dynamics between the animals. And I looked this up. I was curious. If you fuck a dog, the dog tries to take care of you, and it can't because it's a stupid dog. So it gives them, like, trauma because and anxiety because they want to try to take care of you because now you're, like, okay, their I, bitch. I think you dove and a little fucks bit too them deep up. into this shit. I'm okay. ju- no, I'm just saying that's how – that's the situation, okay? <laughs> Don't fuck your dogs. It'll give them well, fucking yeah, anxiety. Well, yeah, but the, it's the, the corollary. Even if they could give consent, from there on, I it just – I think that you should have just axed that part of your argument. But, okay, be that I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it in there because when I talk to these people, I want to give them something that they're going to care about. They're not going to care about decency. But they will care that they're fucking up their dog and giving them trauma. <laughs> just, just the thought. It's just my, uh, my oh, experience. It works. Oh man, I, it, that's pretty goddamn funny. No, it, it, the whole issue of well, fucking you, animals. You know I what? I, it. Actually, I wanted to ask because I was going to have you on my stream to talk about this. But since you're here, what's the fucking story with uh, the people that run a lot of these furry sites? Oh, was it Dragonier? 
you said you had a lot of fucking background information there, on him. I, I, I don't have it. Um, I haven't read up on it, but I just know from what people have told me that he is a continuous spastic. Like the reason why Fur Affinity is in such a dilapidated condition, it's been hacked a bunch of times, is that he's making tons of fucking money, but he's just stuck to degenerate shit and he's not taking care of his shit. Um, there was one guy, somebody corrected me. They said it wasn't Ink Bunny, it was Inked Fur, but it's a commission site. And the guy who runs that is a convicted sex offender against children. Uh, the guy Varka, and Varka is very important because he owns not only Bad Dragon, he owns E621, which is the largest furry pornography site in the world. And allegedly, uh, Varka's former business partners were convicted of, of animal abuse, of sexual animal abuse. So all these fucking people are fucking animals. They're, they're either pedophiles or they're zoophiles or they're both at the same time. Uh, and the community from the, that's what I mentioned to Adam. I say, like, look, you're, you're one of the most popular furries in the world. And all the leaders in the furry community seem to be, uh, uh, implicit in animal sex abuse. So how can you say that it's not fair to paint all furries with that brush when the most visible people in the community seem to be actively engaged in it? And I, I've had multiple stories. Somebody even posted a comment on the, uh, on the video and I'll pull that up real quick. But he says that uh, he's encountered those petting zoos at, at conventions. So it's not, it's not just a couple fucking people, uh, a couple stories. It is a continuous ongoing thing that's been happening for years. And uh, I used to go to Necronomicon, a con convention in Tampa, Florida. I even volunteered a couple years. I accidentally found out about a petting zoo some of these fuckers had set up. I reported it to some people at the con and was told thanks and they would take care of it. Less than half an hour later, I was being escorted out of the hotel and banned from the convention. So I called the actual police, and by the time they got there, the room was cleaned out. So these conventions cover for this shit. And, uh, I mean, if even if you're just a regular person, a regular besides being a furry, and you go to these conventions and you just like the art, you genuinely just like safe-for-work animal art, by going to these conventions, paying the entrance fee, supporting these creators, you are indulging in this economy of animal sex abuse. And I have no patience for it. I don't care what you're into. If you consider yourself a furry, if you put money into it, you are complicit. And I think you should fuck off and stop, stop moralizing and saying, oh, it's not all furries. You're being, you're being uh, overzealous. No, I'm not. It, it's all of them. In some way or another, you are a part of it. Well, and I'm judging it from like what, how we deal with them over here. Coach, I'm kind of curious. How do they deal with degenerates here in the Ukraine? He said, "Yeah, they shoot." If, them. if if there were a bunch like if there were, if this happened they in the shoot Ukraine, them. some guy killing puppies and fucking their skulls, what would they do to him? Um, I don't know, but I don't think you'd take kindly to it. I mean, they uh, probably get the necklace. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I can I can speak with more authority about Chile. In Chile, yeah, just chop chop their nuts off. You know, I mean, come on, it's it's just fucking wrong, and also. It, it goes against like a, a like a notion of masculinity in South America because doing that is just like you're fucking just it, it's beyond merely degenerate you're unmanly which is kind of like worse so yeah they they'd um, they <laughs> I mean in Chile they what they probably do is toss them into some prison into some general population prison where the prisoners were just off the guy. Because there's, you know, it's like in every prison everywhere, you know, pedophiles and real sexual degenerates are just not tolerated. Yeah, that kind of situation, you know. But, but in the U.S., what would they get? You know, minimum security in like Tampa, Florida or something. Nice <laughs> Therapy and, sessions, yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, fucking, uh, what you would call it, the uh, good liberal doctrine got you, you know, like, uh, yeah. Degenerates get to play tennis in Tampa, Florida for on the taxpayer's dime. Great. Yeah, that's... How come this isn't... Why aren't they all arrested? I, I don't get it. Why, why is it in the United States that they tolerate this, this kind of shit? When you expose that thing, Jim, I mean, you started talking about it. And, you know, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you, you sounded deeply troubled when you were discussing that shit. I'm assuming that it's kind of like... Uh, just you describing the imagery of like some puppy spazzing out as it died. I mean, that's just fucking horrifying, right? How come these people aren't just like picked up instantly and just tossed into some jail somewhere? I, I just don't well, get it. It, 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 it was it, especially like snake thing was the one that uh, irked me the most because he was the one that would be like the guy'd be talking about like molesting kids or molesting or killing animals, and then snake thing would be like, aww. 
And yeah. then like hugs and like that kind of shit. And I was like, would somebody just fucking bring them and put them against the wall? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, everything. It didn't matter. Like, Snake Thing was the person, he was blackmailed by other furries into releasing the information that he did. But the weird thing in seeing him interacting with all the other Zeus Hades was that it did not matter how awful it got. Snake Thing was enamored with the cruelty. It didn't, there was no upper limit. You could show him anything. And he would send hearts and little cute cat faces and shit. He loved <laughs> he was it. A fucking psychopath, like a legit fucking psychopath. Yeah. You think it was for real or a put on job? Oh, oh no, yeah. I think it's for real. I think that dude is legitimately fucking damaged. And, in his head. and what's what's scary is that it's like, would it have been as bad if these people didn't know each other? It seemed like they met each. And Wolf, people said, is Wolf really a furry? Yeah, he was showing off fur suits and saying people he knew in the community, and it's like. They they met each other through the furry fandom. They met each other and they found each other on Telegram. They made groups and they started building each other up. Because the puppy thing happened over the course of him talking to Snake Thing. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some puppy stuff next. And Snake Thing's like, Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, that's funny. and it's like they're they're building each other up. The psychopaths met each other through the furry fandom, and that's why the pup like the puppy wasn't just killed. It wasn't just raped. The 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 corpse of the puppy is completely blown out it's like it got hit with an ied and it was just blunt force trauma and it was entirely because these people fucking knew each other do you think i'm I curious is it, oh i was gonna say is anybody taking the time like if they were that interconnected like, what i find hard to believe is that these people like snake thing and wolf and uh carol and all the people that were in this uh telegram group right if they're so into that if they're so into kitty porn and animal torture and all this fucked up shit I find it hard to believe that those are the, that's the only group they would have talked about it in. Like, I'd imagine that their groups they affiliated with and the people they hung out with on other websites were probably aware or into it as well. Like, has anybody made, like, a little diagram, like a, a fucking... Uh, yeah, yeah, just connecting. <laughs> like, connect the dots. Hina, yeah, he knows him here and here and here and here. So and they're hanging out we we should get the chick who did the uh, alternative influencer network to do a piece <laughs> on that. That would have been, like, more worthwhile. Don't you think? Do you think it'll all connect to Andy Worski? Will he be the big black <laughs> <laughs> Or Wolverine maybe it'll connect to V. V is at the dead center of the whole thing. That would be funny. No, I, I think it's kind of horrifying. And look, it, here's something interesting about it. The, see, these people would never have met had it not been for the internet, right? And I bet a lot of them would have gone to their graves thinking that it's just some bizarre fetish that they had or bizarre desires that they have and never actually acted on it unless they had found others who shared a similar proclivity. You see what I'm saying? So Yeah, it's the group supports the delusion. Yeah, I mean, if you were just, like, if this is the 70s or 80s, and you were some guy that yeah. was into raping deer, um, <laughs> yeah. you, you were kind of, like, on your own. The town, the community would think you were fucking weird, so you'd <laughs> yeah. never talk about it or engage in it. Yeah. But you go online and you meet random, isolated people that are into that, too, and now suddenly it doesn't seem like one person. It's a whole group of them. And yeah. it's all inclusive, and everybody's supporting each other. And you go, girlfriend, and dog, go rape that puppy. That kind of shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you got to keep in mind, a community can be can number in the thousands, and yet, in the wider scheme, they're a drop in the bucket. I mean, it's microscopic in comparison to the millions, well, billions of people who are online and who have perfectly legitimate hobbies. I don't know, cars or woodworking or whatever the fuck, right? Uh, so all of a sudden you have thousands of these crazy fucks all gathered together. What do you do about them? Because it goes back to the issue we were talking about of the balkanization of the internet and, and how everybody's... Uh, you make them afraid is, is what you do. What happened was the furries, they got eclipsed by the bronies, they got eclipsed by the trannies and all this other crazy shit that's happened since the, uh, the late 2000s. So they felt comfortable and they, they were safe for some time until this happened. And now I guarantee you, if there was any animal abuse going on in the furry community, it's, it's on ice right now for just a while. Uh, I'm sure they've, they've stopped doing petting zoos and stuff and conventions because they know some fucking psychotic is going to go in there with a camera and record it. And they're going to get busted for it. This really so, needs to happen. I want to see somebody fund a project or do a project about Furfag Undercover where they're going to conventions... They've got a camera in the eye of their fucking mascot outfit, and they're just filming the shit. Because oh. I'd imagine in those hotel rooms and those you know passing yeah. conversations, yeah. you know, after you walk over the corpse that tumbles the stair drag, and you're gonna hear about people fucking animals, 
and yeah. getting together and trading CP or doing some other weird shit with each other. Well, let's just say that if somebody were to have a plan like this, they wouldn't be able to talk about it because they they put people on edge. Oh no, I would openly talk about it. I <laughs> want them. To no, yeah, like some uh, project Veritas point. for the furries. That would be an interesting project to tell you the truth. See, yeah, that's the thing with like the the deviancy and like all oh, the underhanded shit. Like there are laws against it too, but that doesn't put them on edge. So I, I'd imagine they're nervous for a week or two, and then they get horny, and then they're like, let's go steal a giraffe and fuck it to death in the forest. So, you know, I just, I want to I wanna see that. I think if you could present video evidence of these people talking about it, planning it, and even starting to participate in it, that might be a death nail for the fucking furry community. Yeah, that might free be society, well, there's the, always going to be people doing that. You notice you don't hear much about the furry problem in China or Saudi Arabia. Because they or shoot them like that. or chop their heads off or see if they can <laughs> yeah. fly off a rooftop. Yeah. yeah. What was that? What was that local play? There was like a, uh, they were having issues with Muslims uh, in some province in China or whatever. The, and, the Ubers, uh, the yeah, Uyghurs. put them all in a Uyghurs. camp. Yes. Well, no, no. They, they interviewed, they interviewed like some local cop. And asked him like, "What are you guys? What are you going to do about it? Right? Like, if they if they start, you know, start shit." And he's like, "The boots of the Communist Party will stamp down on their fucking necks." Like he was all, "We're going to fucking massacre these yeah. people if they don't sit down." Yeah, out. they don't fuck around. Yeah, you, you know what they do in the concentration camps for the Uyghurs? They uh, force them to drink alcohol and eat pork. Not kidding. That, that's, that's and they, they they force them to learn uh, Mandarin. The way that the camps were described, the, they, I read like a New York Times piece on. I think they're called the Uyghurs, not the Uyghurs. But Wait, sorry, my, my they had a um. Had a <laughs> their cult of sink. <laughs> 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 but they were talking to them, and I think ethnically the Uyghurs are uh, Kazakh. Yeah. There's something like that where they're more closely related to the, the Kazakhstan people than, than the Chinese. So what they do is they round them up. They teach them Mandarin. They teach them uh, to eat pork. They teach them uh, to love the party, to love Xi Jinping. Uh, they teach them about Mao. And then they get out. And all I'm thinking is, you know, the, they're, they're describing this like they're in the concentration camps waiting for the Holocaust to come around. But it's like, it doesn't sound that bad. Like, I, <laughs> I realize that this is completely anti-ethical to, like, American people. But as far as, as horror stories and death camps go, it's like, just fucking eat your pork and stop talking about <laughs> Muhammad. You'll be fine. Uh, like, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any empathy for your fucking shitty San Negro religion. I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't care. No, yeah. I, I'm trying to look for the article because uh, I want that guy's quote because it was funny as shit. Like, he was full, we're going to fucking hurt people. If they don't <laughs> the fuck out. Well, while you're looking for it, uh, quick super chats. Uh, Jay Taylor. Uh, Josh stared too long into the abyss. Um, oh, I'm gone. Was, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, dum dum dum. Uh, Cyber skull. Gas the furs. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, look, I used to think that furries were just funny, but but now with this shit coming out, Jesus. I mean, I, I thought it was kind of weird. Um, I once saw like on Jackass that uh, some episode that uh, Brad Pitt was on, and they were all dressed in his panda suits, right? And just like. The frolicking in public, and I thought it was funny as hell. And I thought that was my picture of furries. They're just like goofy fucks who like to dress up and, and you know, fuck each other in their stupid costumes. That's what I thought. But this shit, Jesus Christ, I, I just don't, don't understand it. I, it. It's just beyond my, my bourgeois imagination. Just... Oh, I, I love this. I'm reading, uh, when I went looking for this quote, from Business Insider, because this gives some perspective into how cocked Europe is. <laughs> um, they're talking about the shit China's doing to the Muslim population over there. Yeah, and it's it's talking about why are they, it keeps saying, you know, Muslim countries have been silent over China's crackdown on its uh, Uyghurs, a Muslim majority ethnic minority in the country's west. And the experts say that the reason that all these Muslim countries won't say anything is because they're afraid China will fuck with them either <laughs> economically or militarily. <laughs> yeah. And yet Europe bends over backwards for all these North Africans and Middle Easterns that are flooding them to be, you know, culturally sensitive. China well, doesn't give a fuck. The same can be said about uh, Russia. I mean, all this shit's happening in Ukraine. Is Europe going to do anything about it? Fuck no, they're not, because Putin sends them the gas they need. Uh, I mean, you're not going to see any any military action from, from Europe protecting Ukraine, because uh, Ukraine doesn't have the fucking natural gas. Yeah. So, no, Europe is... is 
totally and utterly beholden to the superpowers right now. They need they need America's help, they need Russia's help, and they need China's help to even exist. It's it's pathetic. They're in well, nobody in America is going to support going to war for Ukraine either. So honestly, oh. if Russia just took over the whole place, nobody. I mean, nothing's going to happen. I mean, they might get some sanctions or whatever, ostracized, but yeah, as far as military action. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, I doubt if the Russians would take over Ukraine because think of the hassle nah. of having... No, it, it, it would be they don't want perpetual. Yeah. Like, Russian, if you tried to have people in Ukraine trying to govern over them after one giant invasion, like, it would just be fucking mass hysteria. People would be getting gunned down in the streets. It wouldn't be pretty. Uh, the reason why they could take over Crimea is because a, a reasonable There's portion of the community mostly, was complacent yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 No, no. The the idea of them invading Ukraine, it's it's pointless. For them to keep on like just like like sort of like bumping the edge of the desk all the time and keeping Ukraine unstable, like they're doing in in Donetsk region and that kind of thing. That's what they're going to continue to do. And so Ukraine is always going to be you know at sixes and sevens, and never really get their shit together insofar as the economy and so forth. But you know it's never going to devolve into outright chaos. Uh, so I'm 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 not particularly concerned to tell you the truth. I, I think it's. Yeah. it's the way it's going to be, you know. There's no upside to invading Ukraine, and there's shitloads of downside. And think of the number of people you'd need, administration, all the rest of it, to take over the fucking place. You know, it would just, it would just be a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Josh, you ready to bug out if they get, if we get invaded? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I like this place. It's comfy. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Uh, but I, I've already made arrangements, if need be, to get out within six hours. I can get out, you know, and me and my family. Fuck yeah, I'd be crazy not to have, like, prepared for it. Which is kind of um, cool. You know, you're living in a place where things could go tits up like that, you know, and that's pretty what's cool. The, uh, what's the cost of living over there? Like, if you, can, if you can put it into... If you put it into American dollars, what would the average price of like rent a gallon of gas or a gallon of milk be? I live well, downtown. I live in a very nice area. It's a uh, downtown. I have everything I need. My my rent and utilities are about five hundred. So it's it's comparable to living in like a, a like a, a more you know removed place in a city, like an apartment. But my place is great. I eat like for four dollars a day. That's everything I need. If I eat, and then I go out, like if I wanted to cook and stuff, it would be pennies on the dollar. Yeah. But I can go out and I can get borscht and stuff every day, and it doesn't cost anything. Um, to put this into perspective, I pay twice as much on the kiwi farms and the infrastructure for the site than I do on anything that I buy. Yeah, I can I can say like um, I mean I've I've looked at my numbers over the last um, I don't know been here about a year now. Um, I can say that uh, for how can I put it. For a thousand a month, you can live very well by yourself. A thousand extremely a, well. Yeah, extremely well. And how, how are you? Are you living there? Are you expats or like is this like? Yeah, a, that's what a, I was gonna ask. How did, what did you have to do to like get into Ukraine? Let me, let me tell you my in, immigration process. I arrived without any prior notification. The border <laughs> agent had his phone pressed to his head. He looked at my passport, saw it was American, looked up to check the picture, stamp it through. I did not say a single word to him. Yeah. And I've been, <laughs> I've been there ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it cost me, uh, you get 90 days on your passport, right? On any U.S. passport, any passport, uh, pretty much, okay? 90 days uh, in any 180-day period. Now, you arrive, and you can get a lawyer. The U.S. Embassy has, like, a list of uh, accredited law firms that they deal with. And you get a lawyer, and it's going to cost you 1000 bucks to set up residency. And, I mean, the lawyer, lawyer fee plus about 150 bucks per person insofar as the actual fees, governmental fees that you have to pay to set up residency. Once you're a resident, you can set up bank account, the whole shebang. You know, and it's- It's, it's not too easy, bad, easy. honestly. It, it's, <laughs> it's, I think that it is, um, I mean, I'm here because my wife is Ukrainian, right? And she wanted to live with her mother and she wanted the kids to learn Russian. And so, okay, fine. Uh, and I didn't mind it, you know, I thought it would be kind of interesting to live in, in, uh, in Ukraine for a year or two, right? Which is basically the plan at this point. And I mean, after this, you know, I'd personally want to live in Tokyo. That's that's where I want to live for at least a couple of years because that would be cool. But anyway, um, I think that Ukraine for an expat, uh, especially somebody who's living online, I think that this is the ideal place to tell you the truth. Yeah. If you make your money online, you can go anywhere. But this is probably one of the best yeah. places you could live. Yeah. The, the only hump you have is uh, the language, you know, because relatively f outside of Kiev, relatively few people speak English. Uh, and I'm lousy with languages, okay? But, you know, if somebody is moderately good with languages, you can pick it up pretty quickly. And uh, it's, it's an easy life. It's, it's very 
it's fun. People are nice. You can walk around. At no, one night. of the one of the reasons I like I I plan to travel to Asia and stuff and do stuff over there. But one of the concerns is, and you hear this from a lot of people that even go over there to do a profession, right, where they're working a job, um, is protection under the legal system and access to like uh, medical aid, police services, fire services. Like when you set up residency, you're not becoming a citizen, right? You're you're just right. you're a foreigner residing there. So yeah. what what are your rights comparative? Like what happens? Same. You can't vote. Can't, you can't. Uh, you should be aware that, especially in China, uh, there is no social medicine. Like there is no must treat laws with the hospitals. If you get fucked up, you have to make sure yeah. that you have money. Yeah, but so the medical expenses are cheap here. I mean, really, really cheap. And I'm talking top of the line care. Okay. Uh, but what made me laugh is I was walking down the street once, and if I hear it, like this is my prejudice. If I hear English, I'm thinking those them motherfuckers up to something. <laughs> they're up to no good. But I was walking on the street and the people in front of me were just casually talking English. And the guy reveals to his partner that he's a fucking neurosurgeon living here. And he says that it's just it's easier to practice overseas because uh, the American medical system and shit is just a wreck. And he, he does better as a doctor in Eastern Europe than he did in the United States. No, no look, I had a recently I had um, I had like a med medical procedure. No big deal. And I got uh, top of the line care, and it cost me the whole thing cost me under fifty bucks. This was private, okay? And it was a heart thing that they had to like put some thing in. To, it was a um, what you call it? coronary a stent? Yeah, no, they didn't put a stent in, but they had to, to do the 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 needle thing where they check to see if your coronaries are okay and shit like. That. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the whole thing cost me fifty bucks, or no, a little bit more, about seventy. Okay. And it was like a real procedure. And the doctor... He <laughs> Is he with... using like a bicycle hose pump? Like, <laughs> it's this real medical gear they're using or what? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was perfectly fine. Perfectly acceptable. You know, no, no... Um, you weren't concerned about it. You were like, okay, I'm, I'm at a perfectly good uh, hospital and getting checked out and no problem, you know? And the doctor was clearly a doctor, not like the... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he looked and sounded like a doctor because he was and he spoke to me in English and he was like... Perfectly, um, you know, perfectly fine. Well, uh, people talk about how it's easier, it's cheaper to get a hip replacement. And like you can go to Spain and get a hip replacement twice. And the travel expenses included and the, the hotel fees included for your recovery mm -hmm. uh, is less than it would cost in the United States. And, and it's true. Yeah. And the main reason for that is in the United States, uh, the hospitals can write off any money they don't collect. If you, if you bankrupt somebody, you can write that off on your taxes. Yeah. But more importantly, Everybody on Medicare and Medicaid, uh, they can charge. They have to charge everybody the same price. So because the government will 100% pay for any person on Medicare and Medicaid, uh, they will charge exorbitant fees for everything, like $50 for an aspirin, $100 for a plastic tube. They charge you out the ass for every goddamn thing that they they do medically, and they have to charge everybody the same exact rate. But the the even though they bankrupt all these people with the medical expenses. What they get out of it is for everybody on Medicare and Medicaid, they get it, the money 100% from the government. So it, it benefits them to bankrupt people and not collect the money from the majority of middle class Americans so that they can collect uh, guaranteed results from the government for the elderly and the poor. And outside where you don't have that system, which is everywhere outside of the United States, uh, it, it's, it's cheaper to get health services. And in socialized countries, they dictate what the prices are for everything. Yeah. So they don't have that either. So you can only, okay, this is the other thing I'm curious about. So you can only rent though, right? I mean, that's the other no, issue with expats. They'll, you let you, they'll let you own property if even though resident. you're not a citizen. If you're, if you're a resident. Yeah, you can, you can own property any place in the world if you're not a citizen of that country. It, yeah, no, not not like in the Philippines, you can't own property unless you're a uh, a citizen. And the interesting caveat with that is the Philippines is one of the only countries in the world besides the Vatican City that doesn't recognize divorce. So what happens is expats go to the Philippines, they marry, the woman can never divorce them, and then you just put everything in her name. But I mean, there are some countries where you can't buy property as a foreigner, but uh, Ukraine is not one. Yeah, it, it, there's there's no problem at all. And um, and. Uh, it, it's worth your while to own property and rent it out here. I mean, so far as investing is concerned, because you're getting basically about, oh, between 8 and 12% return on investment in so far as rental property, because there's no mortgage market here, okay? Uh, there are a few mortgage loans uh, put out, and therefore the price of, uh, of properties, of assets, is much lower because of it. Because you've got to keep in mind, the United States and, and Western Europe, 
the prices of, of housing are exorbitant because of the availability of mortgage loans. And so, you know, more loans means that the prices just go up and up and up because you're just paying the, the, in, the, um, the, the uh, you're making the mortgage payment at a fairly low interest rate. But in Ukraine, since there are very few mortgage loans out there, most people just pay for the whole thing. And to get a mortgage loan, you've got to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You know, the, the prices are just much more reasonable and therefore the rental income is just, you know, between 8 and 12 percent. It's just a great deal, you know. And to tell you the truth, honestly, you know, you got to live by the, by the, um, by the motto of uh, Rothschild. You know, buy when there's blood on the street. You know, it, it's it, since Ukraine is unstable because of the Russia situation, asset prices are always going to be low, or they're going to be low for the for the foreseeable future. And well, so, yeah, I mean, if I if I want to buy when there's blood on the streets, I'll just wait for the housing bubble in Canada to burst. Fuck. No, no, because they'll prop that up. That's the thing. In, in oh, there's mo- no way. Have you seen the prices of a shitty fucking two room yep. house in some places? It's like two, three million dollars. There's no yes. way they're going to prop that up. They're going to prop no, it what? up. They're, they yeah. they did it before. They'll do it again. They'll prop it up somehow. Canada and Australia have, uh, and New Zealand have amazing housing prices right now because yeah. the Chinese. The, there are there are millions of millionaires in China. The, the, they have so many fucking people. They have like as many millionaires in China as the United States has people. And the wealth inequality. Well, that, and I'm not so middle, sure. Well, not not exactly like not the same exactly, but they have millions of millionaires, and the wealth is kind of spread even between them, uh, more so than the United States even, and. Uh, what they do is when they have money, they don't want to keep it in China because the government can take the money whenever they want. So they buy property in Canada, they buy property property in Australia to the point where like the official Chinese government owns almost 1% of Australia's land mass. So the reason why the price is there, it's fucking over the, the locals. If you're a local Canadian, you can't buy shit. There are empty houses all over the place in Australia and Canada that nobody lives in that's owned by the Chinese that people can't buy and it, it's causing a housing crisis. No. I, 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 I disagree with both of you. There's no way they're going to keep that propped up long term. I, I don't care how much money China pours into that. Three million dollar fucking suburban two room house is ridiculous. <laughs> that's never going to last. Yeah, uh, well, it'll pop. Ir- ir- uh, irrespective. But the, the thing is, you're asking about Ukraine. I think that Ukraine is the future. I don't understand why more um, uh, guys who work online don't move out here. Because it's ideal, okay? I mean, if you're, if you're online, if your life is online uh, or you're retired, you know, what the fuck are you doing in, in the U.S. and Western Europe? You know, you can, you can fly out there. It, it costs, what I was, I was pricing it the other day because I got to go to New York uh, in January. And, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, like, I think it was 1100 for the flight and the, and the week-long stay in the U.S., right? So why wouldn't you do that? Live in Eastern Europe and go to the estates, you know, once or twice or three times a year or whenever you need to, right? And, and the, the, the price of going and staying in the States is going to be just, you know, so much less than what you're saving here. I mean, it, it just seems obvious, but th- that's just me, you know. Uh, if you're online, fuck the States, quite frankly. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's, it's just not... Um, it's a shitty life, especially the issue of health care, because he, see here in Ukraine, you know, um, the health care, the private health care is good. It's very good. Well, it's private health care has always been good everywhere. And there are always going to be assholes who have enough money to buy the private health care. But since you don't have so many of the disincentives that Josh was, Josh was talking about, Medicare and all the rest of it, you know, it, it, the price of private health care here in Ukraine is reasonable. The same went for, for living in Chile, for instance. In, in, in Chile, the, the, the private health care was, yeah, sure, it was, it was more expensive than the, than the state health care, but it was reasonable, you know? I mean, we had our kids in Chile, right? The whole thing in the best clinic in Chile cost me 10 grand. I mean, the whole thing, and it was, uh, they were both by cesarean, right? The whole operating room, the whole, uh, the anesthesiologist, the, the, the doctor, the, the whole thing, 10 grand, almost exactly, for both pregnancies. No insurance, just cash, right? And in the States, that same pregnancy would have been between thirty and $50,000 each, you know? I, it, it, you know, healthcare in the States is ridiculous, and I don't understand why more Americans aren't looking into other countries to do a lot of their healthcare needs, like dental shit, like hip replacement or whatever the hell. I mean, expensive uh, procedures that, are, that can be elective, that can be done whenever you feel like it. 
I don't quite understand why people didn't do it, but you know, they're grown-ups. And somebody asked, can you have guns in Ukraine? You can have rifles if you're a citizen. You have to get a special permit from the president to carry a pistol. Um, but you can, you can buy those. <laughs> yeah, uh, th that's the one problem I don't particularly care for about Ukraine is that uh, corruption is fairly prevalent, but they're trying to crack down on it. I personally prefer uh, countries where there isn't corruption because then you never really know where, where the line is. It's just, I personally prefer things to be a little bit more clear cut. Um, I, I myself have never participated in any kind of bribery or anything like that. I'm just not interested in that. Um, but um, th that's the one little issue about living in Ukraine, that sometimes you do need to bribe people to make things So, <laughs> Coach, can you rename this stream uh, Josh's Remembrance Stream? <laughs> Why? I, I don't know if after admitting you're an illegal alien who bribed for gun permits, I don't know how well things are going to go for you next <laughs> week. And I just said, <laughs> and then. Hmm? What's that? What? I didn't say that I was an illegal alien. I said that well, I, no, just... I, I asked how you got in, and Coach was like, well, you have to go through these steps, and you're like, I just showed up at the border. <laughs> no, no. And, then I, and then I asked for a gun permit. Here's 20 bucks, officer. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just revealing my repository of information, and if I get drafted into the fucking Ukrainian nationalist movement, remember me as a flailing spastic who accomplished nothing, <laughs> if, if, unless, I, unless I earn freedom for, for my country, my new country I mean... that's that's how it works in a lot of these countries, though. You have to. It's just it's patronage. You just graze a few palms, and that's how you get that's how you get things done. I mean, it's how it works here too, a lot of times. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's pretty much out in the open. Uh, in, in the, well, in the states, it's how, different. How, how is work over there? I mean, this is the thing, right? I'd imagine. I mean, this sounds really attractive. If I was if I was younger and I'm making YouTube money and I'm on my own, I'd travel and do shit over there. But like. the YouTube money shit, the internet money stuff. I mean, you got a couple years of that, and that that's good, but. Say you set up residence in some, you know, Eastern European country or some Asian country, and now it's two years later, you're not making YouTube money. What the fuck are you going to do for work to support yourself when you're just some fucking resident? I lived in Australia. I lived in the Philippines all doing work for uh, for foreign companies online. I'm on, I'm going to be set no matter what. If uh, Plan Omega comes in and I have to shut down my site and move to China or something, I can still do development work and make money, good money for, for the local economy. How about you, Coach? What, what's your take on that? Well, my, my situation is a little bit different. So I, I don't quite, you know, I mean, if the YouTube money, I'm, I'm not, I don't depend on the YouTube money. Hey, it's great, you know. And, uh, you know oh, I'm, I forgot. I forgot you and Quartering got into a pissing match about bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, you're probably fine. <laughs> uh, but Ralph uh, and I, on the other hand, would be fucked in Eastern Europe. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, no, you no, guys no, would no. be fucked. I'm fun. going to do tasteful uh, Roman documentaries if I ever uh, collapse. <laughs> on, on no, you know, I, hey, um, Ethan, you mind if I discuss what I that suggestion I made? No, I don't mind. You can go ahead. Uh -huh. You know, I, I was listening to Ethan and Nora talking the other day. They were making fun of some... Some, some chick who had like ripped off some article, whatever the fuck, okay? Like, they made, I mean, I'm sure they're ad an adorable couple in real life, but I'm talking on air. They sounded terrific, you know, that, that combination of, of Nora's, like, you know, she, she has a lovely voice and she's got that, that cute British accent. And Ethan, you know, he, he sounds like, a, you know, like a, a, redneck, like a hillbilly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, the, the Brit and the, 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 the aristocrat and the hillbilly, they should do a show together. No, I'm not kidding around. I, well, I think you know, that's what's funny. I don't feel like everybody knows this. Um, you know, some people do that, that watch the show long enough. But Nora actually was one of the people who founded the kill stream back in the day. We used to do it, me and her and, uh, and Janet Bloomfield, uh, that used to be the, the hosting, uh, rotation there and then uh well i went to jail and then i got back <laughs> out and uh you know she's doing other stuff now she doesn't have enough time to do it every single week um so and then we moved to five days a week so it's been me gator and zadan since then but yeah she's we've done a lot of stuff together actually so. no it's, i was thinking that you guys would make a great couple like like some sort of like you know couples podcast or some shit like that something more mainstream than than the uh, than the kill stream you know, I, I, I don't mean this in, in any kind of, uh, I, I, this is a sincere suggestion. I think that you guys would be terrific, you know? You, you sounded lovely together. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing something maybe like uh, once or twice a month with her. Uh, just, you know, a side project from the kill stream. Uh, but, yeah, we have good chemistry. I mean, we, we're married, obviously, so we had to have some type of chemistry to make that happen. But, yeah, I do enjoy talking to her. So Yeah, but it's a, not, a, not everybody who's married together has good, like, on-air chemistry. That's true. That's you know? true. 
And so, so yeah, I mean, that, that kind of like, and, and that juxt juxtaposition, that's the thing that I loved about Andy and JF's show, that you had like two very clear personalities and their juxtaposition was just, it, it was just really amusing. It was like fun to watch that juxtaposition. By the way, whatever happened to Andy and, um, and, and uh, JF, they had their reunion. Was it any good? I didn't see uh, it. Yeah, it was pretty good. I watched some of it. Uh, I think uh, they're talking about doing it every couple of weeks now, um, like rotating the channels. The band's uh, getting not... back together. Yeah, so that's what they're talking about. I mean, we'll see if they, if Hi, they okay. keep going. Did you guys hear that? I, I could have sworn I heard an Indian screaming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I heard that too. Yeah. That's just my prediction. What? What's, What's your prediction? That? that fight's not going to happen. I said that. I said it wasn't going to happen. I think it's going to happen. And I know for something's going to happen regardless. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I won't get into it too much. But there will be, there's some type, they're talking about some type of backup plan as well. So, I already have the the the, uh, the headquarters booked there in Knoxville. So. I, I have faith that Andy will show up. I, I, yeah, I, I as, far, as far as Donga goes, I can't. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm split on it. He well, seems even, so far invested now that how could he pull back? But even with Andy, like the, Andy, Andy, like I was on that stream where he had the uh, the chick from the the company that was going to sponsor the fight. And he like I was floored. My jaw hit the fucking floor when he just kicked her out of the conversation. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you? Why are you yeah, doing? No, you, no, you see, yeah. no, Andy. Okay, I'm gonna say this because I believe it wholeheartedly. Andy played that right. Tara shows up. You're talking about Tara Larosa. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Tara Larosa, big badass chick, right? Can hurt people. Andy basically says, "Shut your fucking whore mouth and make me a sandwich," <laughs> and throws her off his stream. After that, Tara liked him. She was very nice to him. I don't think she's used to guys saying "shut the fuck up" or. I, I think it's like this weird thing with strong women, where if you treat them like that, they they respond to it. And like Andy, oh. I don't know if he stumbled his way into it, but he did. Jim, it would work for you and Jim. Try it out. <laughs> oh, I was. No, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Tara came in there. They got really heated each other. Mm -hmm. He throws her out after talking shit. She comes back in. Now they're all buddy buddy, and she likes yeah. him. She comes back with her tail between her legs, and she just licks no, his I, hand. I, I, dealing with fucking crazy people. That's my take. <laughs> I, I just think that okay, he's like, okay, we, I tried to do my uh, the, like my big tough talk because he was he was basically shitting on her for a fucking hour, and then. <laughs> Comes back and like, okay, I get how it is. I just want to lay down the rules, and she does it as uh, neutrally as possible to get get it out of the way. But I, I don't know. Annie could fucking surprise me. Um, I would be I would be shocked if Tonka showed up. Well, I mean, Andy's been the one pushing for it. Like I've seen him talk to Larosa. I've seen him constantly kind of push. Like, when are the contracts coming? When can I sign the contracts? When can we get the promo shit up? It sounds like Ralph and him have a, a room or a venue booked or some shit like that down there. So it seems like he's invested in showing up. But like Tonka. I'm not seeing the same thing. He doesn't seem hyped about showing the contract. He doesn't seem hyped about doing promo picks. He doesn't seem like he's trying to keep in contact with La Rosa or Leroy, the guy doing the promo or the venue. I mean, like it, it, to me, that's why I'm kind of iffy on it. But I, I, how is he ever going to come back online if he doesn't show up at this point? Well, he hasn't thought it that far. Come on. The guy's well, operating second to second. OK, I'll tell you what I want to see. You, you see that uh, old show Boondocks on uh on Adult Swim, there was an episode of that where a blind guy beats the fuck out of the grandpa, and they schedule a rematch. It's a huge thing, and the grandpa just beats the shit out of the blind guy because it was a fluke that he that he won the first time. I hope that I don't care who wins. I just hope that it's a completely one-sided fucking disaster where somebody is just completely mauled the first round in seconds. That's that's what I want to see. I don't want to see a fair fight. I want to see some guy just get obliterated, like lopsided. You want it lopsided? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't, I don't like fair fights. I'm not for that shit. Me and Jim, no, no, me and Jim, like like punching down. That's that. Well, it is no. funny how Tonka was talking all this shit, and then all of a sudden it came Tom to the contracts are submitted, and he didn't say anything. Andy had to confirm that he actually sent the contract in. You know, Tonka sent it in. Uh, and it just seems, I don't know, some of the stuff he was doing, no, like, I'm not going to send in a promo <laughs> pick. It just seemed like he was trying to throw up, um, you Roblox. know, walls. And, yeah, yeah, exactly, where it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to bluff Andy out of doing this. And then yeah. Andy, you know, did it. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. With that, I that mean, stupid condition of that you, Jim, had to sign over, uh, sign off your channel or whatever the fuck. That was just. Oh, I, I, like I said, I've already said, uh, yeah. you know, if, if Tonka, so if he wants to do bet for bet, I'll, you know, if he yeah. wins, I will delete my channel. But if Andy wins. 
Tonka has to dress up like a woman with high heels, put lipstick on, and walk up and down the boulevard outside the fucking venue telling people he's a $2 whore that got beat by a coke addict. <laughs> he, has to do it, he has to do it for an hour and it has to be filmed. Look, he's not going to show up. But fair not to see the guy you're fighting before you fight them? Like, I've never heard of that before. Somebody told me, I said, well, what is his logic on this? I didn't listen to the Kuma. I heard like 10 minutes of it. And I was like, well, what is his logic on not submitting a pick? And they said, oh, he wants to surprise Andy with how he looks when he gets to the fight or something. And I'm sitting there thinking, Bullshit. what the fuck? I've never, that's not fair. Well, you maybe know? it's, maybe it's, maybe, I, okay, I mean, there is the off chance that, Andy's showing up thinking he's going to be fighting Tonto, and instead T-Hawk walks into the fucking room <laughs> with fucking 38-inch pythons ready to rip him in half. I don't know. I mean, Jim, Ethan, I'm sorry, but you guys are so fucking naive. He is not going to show up, and he's going to shut his channel down after. I'm out thinking of sheer embarrassment. it's going to happen. He's not going to I'm shut down his channel. On, I'm going on record. What's it's going to happen. For? His channel is garbage. He's, he's got like no. 200 sub uh, viewers or 300 viewers. And, and holy shit, I got like this 1300 coach, coach, right now. I'll bet you I'll bet you $20 that it that he shows up and it happens. How about the big bet here? I'll bet you uh, $20. Big bet. Okay, fine. I'll I'll take the I'll take your money. Happy to. You just, I just sign don't it, see how sign he it over to St. Jude's up. now because that's where I'm going to be <laughs> sending the money. You know? All has, that all that shit he talked, he has to show up, right? I, I don't know. That's what I think. We'll see. That's like five bowls of Boris. That's not that's not play money. That's that's good money. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, I'm I'm magnanimous. I'll I'll send it to St. Jude's and the and the little dying kids of cancer that the Wall Street jo Journal fucked over. Yeah, yeah, we'll they, have to have they can get it. borscht. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, Jim, you know, going back to this issue of of living in Ukraine. I mean, you were asking about this. I, I honestly, I, I mean, not not kidding around. And forget about the issue of like two years down the line. You know, YouTube might cut you off or whatever. I honestly think that uh, for for people who are making a living online. Eastern Europe is the way to go. It's cheap. It's uh, easy to live here. You don't need a car. Um, you know, it, it's well, yeah, that that sounds uh, attractive. To, I mean, don't get me wrong and stuff, but I, I I like to be the kind of person that would be able to have uh, backups and alternatives sure, for five sure. years, or ten years, or fifteen years down the road. Yeah. I, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and be like, oh. I, I'm making a little bit of money on the internet and things are going great. And then if people in Ukraine are like, okay, you know, fag, what, what kind of work can you do? <laughs> no, no, no. You're not no, a citizen. No, think of it in these terms. Think of it in these terms. See, imagine you were to spend two years in Ukraine, right? Uh, and, and you're thinking that the whole YouTube thing is going to sunset in a couple of years, right? Okay, fine. So you, you live and work out of Ukraine. Everything is cheap. I mean, shit, you guys, this is my, my uh, studio space, right? It's 650 square feet, and I'm paying with uh, electric and, and internet. I'm paying uh, 450 bucks a month, right? And so it, it's cheap to live here. It's it's you can you can you can save a lot of money by living here. Okay, you don't have to think of it that you're living in Ukraine forever. You can be like, okay, I'll spend two years there. Uh, whatever I'm earning online, say just for the sake of argument, I'm I'm earning five grand a month, and um, I'm I'm by living in Ukraine with all in and travel and all the rest of it, I'm spending I don't know like um, twenty five hundred a month. You know, it'll be twenty five hundred that you can bank over a two year period, right? That's good money. That's uh, sixty grand over over a two year period that you just put in your back pocket. You know, it's what he's wild. trying to say is start doing more streams. You make like a thousand dollars an hour doing your streams. Make that money now while you can before it's over. And then, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, don't get me wrong. I do like streaming occasionally, but it's not a prime motivator. The money is not a prime motivator. Otherwise, I'd be streaming every fucking day. Who would You're do right, that? I, I do. I do, make, I, do make, I do make good money streaming. I mean, if that was the motivator, I'd be doing it every day. What kind of Jew would stream every single day? What I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. You know, you got to make those sparkles, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We want more. What was it? D Live bananas? What were they giving out in? Uh... Ninjaginis and ice creams and yeah. uh, what was ice creams. lemons. Yeah, yeah yes. lemons. Yeah, that was. It, D Live is so dumb. I will never understand why you'd have a small platform. You suddenly have a, a chance at a large influx of people to come in. And you're not willing to accommodate them to keep the audience of a hundred appeased. I mean, this isn't even like an established community. It's a fucking hustle for a Bitcoin offshoot. Yeah, that they, they actually the prices on. They actually messaged me the other day and they said, "Oh, I'm just Shane, we just want to come keep back." You. Is that no? What the they're just like, was? "We just want to keep you up to date" because they said they were launching like a mature side of the site, basically oh, X-rated or whatever you could do, whatever you wanted. 
And they're like, we, we just want to keep you up to date. We're not launching that on Tom, but we're still planning on it. You should, you should email them back and be like, the only launch I'm interested in is when you launch your ass into space, bank. fuck off. <laughs> well, I do wish I had went directly to streaming now, just right from the start, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I hadn't talked to him yet. And, well, um, I can I can see your hesitation. The site is like uh, to me before you fucking move. It was just the Narcissa stream. Like that was the only <laughs> thing that I knew that was there, and it had the unicorns and it had the sparkles. And I'm like, this is a gay shit stream site. Well, some for- of them have been getting pissed off. So there was another uh, transgender individual on there last night, and they were doing a stream. I think it's a Narcissa like acolyte or something, and they were doing a stream that's I forget what the title was. It was something like. Um, uh, stream me in the KKK. Hope you enjoy the the money or some shit like that. And it was just all bitter. Are you talking about Kitty style or is that a different no? No, it was somebody else. It was another tranny, and they were all mad. And the title was talking about stream me's the new KKK or some shit like that. But the stream, <laughs> and, they and, don't, and they literally don't give a, they don't care. Uh, so with with Kitty style, that dude's like a schizophrenic, and he's on welfare. Yeah. And... What what is the story with that? I, somebody was like, you have to check out. They're like, you have to check this guy out. So I turned the stream on to watch him. I'd never watched any of his shit before. And it's just him. I think it's a guy. It's like Norwegian or something, right? Dutch. He's Denmark. Denmark. Or De- yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, one, of, one of them. So, but it, like, he's fucking <laughs> screaming his head off and, and arguing with fucking chat about shit. And then he'll get really calm and laugh. And then he he'll sits there and smokes again. weed he, he on his stream. Uh, he he got for 18 in. hours a day. And he, he was got, saying... Like he, he got put saying, in jail over there, Josh. Did you see that for like threatening a politician? He had to do six yes. months in a in a Denmark prison. So yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, schizophrenic. Prison, he has he has a what? Uh, uh, time, you know what I'm saying? So, say it again. Yeah, no, I'm saying that doing time in, in a Danish prison must be pretty pretty. Yeah, easy. No, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, hard time there. No, he's a schizophrenic and he smokes weed. And if you know anything about schizophrenics, like usually. Oh, it's a good help. idea. It's a very it's good, good idea. Fantastic <laughs> idea. Smart, I think. He has a kid. He has a baby mama, and he he's living off of the welfare system there, basically. And he streams eighteen hours a day, like every waking moment, he's on stream. And he was even saying, like uh, Ralph, he he only streams a couple hours a night, and I I am the hardest working person on the stream. I'm on it eighteen hours a day. Why does he get all well, the? What, what does he stream about other than screaming at his audience? Like the hour I saw was just him going off on people. He, yeah. It, yeah. Have you ever seen a Narcissus stream? It's basically the same fucking thing. Narcissus streams eighteen hours a day. I can't. Ooh. I can't. I can't watch Cosmo. Like it's too depressing. It's too fucking depressing seeing what that. Oh, happened. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, a lot of the people on there are kind of mad because, uh, you know, um, the kill stream and Zidane and Gator and a lot of other people showed up and they have a like a leaderboard thing every week where they give out cash prizes and we pretty much just took them all. We took it over. Top. Yeah, they took them took them down a peg or about eight pegs. Well, the first place uh, was used to be Narcissa and the first place on the high score table is six hundred fifty dollars a week. Like that's a full time fucking income just for getting number one consistently, which is Ralph now. But after uh, after he came over, I need to stop fucking. Chess gonna eat me alive. Like keep saying over wrong. But all these people came over, and they took over <laughs> all the spots between like one and twenty five, bumping down the people who were on stream me before. Uh, to like the the twenty dollar mark on the high score table. So all these people who had like full time income from Stream Me for being on the high score table are suddenly earning jack shit. And I I multi stream there, and I get like I'm usually in the ninety to hundred dollar range just because uh, I I don't think I will be anymore because you have so much competition there. Now. Well, that that's what I find interesting about them. Like if you compare that to D Live, D Live gives you bananas that are worth uh, imaginary pennies if you can ever change them in. Streamy's like paying out weekly fucking funds to people, and it seems like they've been doing that for a while. Well, yeah, plus they're pretty happy to have us there because they were paying $650 to somebody getting like 10 people per stream. You know what I mean? You uh, fuck so- their golden goose, right? You understand yeah. that? How much hate they're going to have for you? Well, <laughs> they the, really do. The best part, when I started doing it soon after Ralph moved, and I was just starting with my stuff, and I was I was like in the you know the seventh place and right over Kitty Sal. I had tuned into a stream once, and he was literally just him staring there with a scowl in this webcam on the high score table with me right above him <laughs> and he had he had his mouth uh, his mouse and his little cursor was just drawing circles over my name right on top of his <laughs> like just looking like he had fucking murderous intent and he talks about how i do not want to be on this, this kiwi farms i don't want to be on it you're ruining a good thing for me and <laughs> that to me was funny well i and came I, into his chat the first day i was there you know i try to 
you know, be nice to the other streamers or whatever. So I came in, I was talking to him. He's just like, oh, good to see you here. It's probably going to push me down the list a little bit, but I'm glad you're here and was telling me his life story. And then I check in on him a week later and everybody's like, wow, this guy's talking all kinds of shit. He's mad because his money's lower now. And uh, I don't know, I guess he had a change of heart. Uh there after a week or so yeah because you stole his money <laughs> oh god but the first day he was all like oh good to see you here if you if you mention me don't don't mention me too much because i don't want my stream to blow up and all this and that and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know what happened <laughs> he, he took away his weed money now he can't fucking relax <laughs> he's on edge the the fucking demons are yeah, coming out after him now stole his well, weed he money his as long as my fucking arm like uh i was I don't know, dudes. Just sit there and chief. Yeah, some, somebody needs. in chat said they've been doing this for two years. Yeah, and on their little page, one hundred seventy thousand dollars they paid out in two years for their weekly streaming. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Who's really? bankroll? Who's bankrolling this site? I actually do not know. Th that, that's the question to ask. That's. <laughs> the I've heard ask. some ideas about some people who have some investments in it that I won't reveal on air, but um, some known folks. But I, I won't go into all that. But what, do, they happen, do, 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 do they happen to like? Uh, uh, oh God, I can't remember the name. Did they happen to like um, a, a drink? Uh, and fuel, possibly, fuel yes, drink possibly, that, possibly, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not really <laughs> F fuel or an H fuel, yeah. but somewhere uh -huh. in between. <laughs> yes, I have heard that. Yes. Oh, you heard that? Oh, okay. No, I was wondering if it, if it were people with, um, uh, you know, vowels at the end of their last names. What? Everybody no. goes silent. <laughs> 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 what the <laughs> fuck? Jesus <laughs> Christ! Explain <man>. yourself. <laughs> No, I heard, I heard the I heard the fuel thing. That that's the same thing that I heard. Uh, so, uh, wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. Ever. Ralph, what is your opinion on uh, since we're talking about fuels unrelated? What's your opinion on G Fuel? <laughs> I love it. It's a delicious drink. It helps me get through the day, and I, I can just <laughs> it's that delicious. forever. It's delicious. It's probably my favorite drink, honestly. It's great stuff. I like the cotton candy flavor. I think that's probably my favorite. And that's your favorite one, is it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What Keem's around? Is he in the chat? No, they're just, they're just oh, saying okay. that, I think. No, I like how you're instantly able to identify what we're talking about <laughs> just from that. No, no uh, why, why is he hanging around here? I mean, I, I just idle curiosity. I can tell you why. His audience is fucking kids, and he has more fun being a dick over here because it's not it's not such a sanitized place. Because he has, he has to watch his ass when he's on his stream because he's not even supposed to be on his stream. Like he his drama alert thing is is like a shell company owned by well, somebody he was else. Banned. Yeah, he was banned from YouTube too. And that's what other people were telling me. They're like, Ralph, you know you could come back to YouTube. You just have somebody else on the channel just like Keem does. Of course, I don't know. I got a lot of heat on me. I'm not you'll, sure. You'll never get monetized. Though. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. See, don't you should have let me sing fucking Moon Man because it didn't matter <laughs> anyways in the end. But yeah, I don't really think that would work. Uh, but yeah, some people are suggesting that. But yeah, Keem's technically banned from YouTube himself, but he he counts himself as an employee of the channel or whatever. And so I guess somebody else technically owns it or something. I've, I've actually heard uh, something interesting in regards to the um, uh, in regards to the monetization for live streaming and stuff. Yeah. And about in regards to if you'll ever get a second channel monetized, like if you get banned and you come back, or if you have a second one you want to get monetized. Apparently, if you are able to enable channel memberships, you know, that little join button with the yeah. fee, that means you're, from what I understand, you're okay with Google. You can set up a second channel and they will monetize it. But if for some reason on your existing channel, if that is an option that just is not appearing anymore for you or that just won't enable, you're on a shit list, hmm. uh, which means that you're never going to get a second channel monetized. And when you're gone, you're gone for good. Hey, uh, can somebody check my channel? Because I, in Ukraine, I can't see that, that join button. They would oh, never no. let me enable the. Yeah. Oh no! The, the way you go to your creator studio, um, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you where it is. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. You go to YouTube settings. That's where it is. And look at view additional features. It's the one that tells you, like, do you have copyright strike? Do you have a community guideline strike? Yeah. And at the very bottom of the list is channel memberships. And if you're on a channel that has over fifty thousand subs and that's not enabled, uh, mm -hmm. you're on the shit list. That's which one is this? This is. Uh... In community? No, oh, uh, channel, channel, got it. It's got on it. the status page where yeah, it shows you your yeah. strikes and stuff like that, and I, then there's I, I a membership the, thing. Studio beta thing that I forgot. Yeah, I'm ineligible for channel membership. Oh, so I'm one step away from. You should fun. definitely be eligible for it too. That's another good thing about streamies. They have 
you know, they enabled, you know, they call it subscriptions over there. They enabled that right away. Could it be that us. I'm in Ukraine? No, it's you're on a shit list. Oh, okay. Good to know. Really? Mine is still enabled, I think. I'll check it, but I'm pretty sure that when I got my... Check, check your memberships. I just, I didn't enable it because I didn't know what it did. Also, if you set up, so they had a thing where if you set up your channel as a gaming channel, you could get grandfathered into that and you didn't have to meet the criteria. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking it. post that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, um, They, they enabled it for 100,000 and over. Now it's at 50,000 and over. Yeah. Mm. Weird. Weird. Okay. I have mine. That's, is that's it, interesting. Is it eligible? Yeah, I'm I'm like, setting it up right now. Congratulations, you're not on a shit list. Not yet. Oh, I need uh, like my thing is I've been looking at people to do streams on, and I've I've been intentionally avoiding people who are uh, particularly big name because uh, like I just I I'm enjoying it so much. I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I, I don't want to I don't want to get kicked off yet, but it's gonna fucking happen eventually. Oh yeah, no, everybody's gonna get there. We're all we're all yeah, fucking yeah, goners. I'll be on TikTok. So fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you no, know, everybody's gonna be gone, sure. But um, I'm kind of curious, you know. Okay, the balkanization of the internet and all that shit, and and uh, having like a fixed, uh, uh, um, what you call it, uh, uh, email account to all of your accounts in order to track you and so forth. So there's no an anonymity. You know, what do you think is going to happen to people like us? Would we be driven underground or to some sort of like dark web or some, you know, invisible underground railroad, so to speak? Yeah, we'll uh, be we'll be in the secret telegram rooms with the the zoo sadist oh, talking yeah. about retards. <laughs> <laughs> That's the future. Yeah, I uh, know. I think um, you're either going to find an alternative or you're going to just be a ghost. It's not necessarily bad. I mean, if you're not motivated by just making money, if you just want to fuck around, you'll be fine. But if you want to make a living out of doing shit like this, yeah, no, you're we're, we're, we are all fucked. I yeah, hate but to tell wouldn't, you, it be, so. wouldn't it be wonderful <laughs> if, if people like Murdoch, Murdoch? I mean, we would all agree that we like their content, right? And we would like it if they were up the 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 amount of content they're producing because they were doing this full time. There's nothing wrong with wanting that, you know, that that kind of. Um, that we would want independent c uh, creators to be earning enough so that they can do this shit full time. I, I just think it's a, a, it's just a bad, bad thing. And in the long run, it'll just bite them in the ass. I mean, Josh, you were saying about the Chinese uh, experiment that they're all happy about it because they're they're getting all this um, positive feedback, you know, from the from the from the social score that they're getting. But I think that maybe every comment underneath the ad is nigger. <laughs> like that's the real. That well, that's the reality. I mean, they Coca -Cola don't. doesn't like that being a oh, right. Man. They don't. They don't want that shit on their platform. They want that fucking money. Have and a coke and a small nigger. Yeah, that's. I, I, I disagree a little bit because I think I think my thing was um, that with Ralph, yeah, I made back. the joke that there were people who were monitoring his stream very very closely to see how the the super chats interacted and how the, how that all worked, and it, he didn't get pulled. Despite like numerous, well, they probably get people banned if it was just like a video upload. He didn't get banned despite that until so the threat of the love. mistakes I made were one not talking to the Wall Street Journal. If I had actually talked to them and been like, "Oh, it's not, I'm like JF did basically be like, oh, it's not my opinion." Some super chats, which it's not. I mean, I was just reading super chats. Oh no, you were you were the fucking sacrificial lamb. You would yeah, have fucked I, no matter what you did. Maybe, but if I had talked to him, at least I might have had a chance. And then that night, so they turned off my super chats that Thursday night, right before the stream. And then they were watching my show, and so we were going in on the Wall Street Journal reporter. They took us down. They were obviously monitoring the show. Uh, if I had came out that night, maybe and not talked about it, I don't know. Uh, well, but you should have like done. I might have already been on. Yeah. Your job. your your stream after your super chats got disabled. You should have had a stream entirely about like kittens and puppies. Yeah. And how much you loved Israel. Well, <laughs> I didn't realize quite how perilous the situation was at that point. Uh, but yeah, it was the writing was on the wall, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you were the guy that was going to be the uh, the yeah sacrificial. Yeah. They're just like, I, look, I, we got rid of him. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and and somebody mentioned this. I've, I've been holding on to it. That uh, in Venezuela, they've been importing Chinese technology regarding the social credit system and uh, positive reinforcement towards. Yeah, the they need to be importing fucking food in Venezuela. Everybody's uh, fucking no, no. starving. You gotta, you gotta make sure that people just don't know on the internet that they're starving. That's, they that's know, the they, thing. They know when they're standing in a bread line for fucking eight hours. No, not them. They can know. They just can't go online and talk about it. That's what matters. You're not looking at this right from from the situation of, of Venezuelan government optics. 
Oh, who is the uh, who's the president of Venezuela? Because he had a Twitter account, and on, like on his Twitter account, his people are bitching about yeah about starving to death and not having any food or money. Uh, he's posting like pictures of him eating hamburgers and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, how have they not? How have they not killed this guy? Like, he's rubbing it in their face. Well, everybody who's loyal to the party eats. That's just how it works. Well, they tried to assassinate him a couple times, but uh, he he keeps he keeps getting away with it somehow. It's all that padding he's built by eating. <laughs> you would think there would have to be some type of internal coup at some point. But it, it uh, reminds me of uh, is it Mugabe from Zimbabwe who was the president? Yeah. Like they're starving over there, and this asshole's on social media eating cake and shit. <laughs> no, that was Wearing that was like twenty thousand dollars suits and shit. Yeah. That was way where yeah he had I think it was like a wedding or it was some kind of party. It was like a routine party, but he spent like hundreds of years of of the annual income of any person in the country just making lavish cakes and importing uh, uh, entertainment and importing special yes. clothes. And I think did they kill him over that or? <laughs> no, no, they just they deposed should've. him. He's still alive over there. They didn't actually kill him. Yeah, no, he, he, he's, he's. The last I heard of him, yeah, he is alive. The last I heard of him is he wanted an American woman arrested for mean tweets. Like he's a fucking pussy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Tweet. Yeah, he wanted her arrested because yeah. she made a joke about him on fucking Twitter. Well, that was one of the last things they did in his regime there, and then they deposed him, deposed his wife. I think his wife left the country, and she's not there anymore, if I'm not mistaken. But Mugabe himself still there, and I don't think they've seized like his assets and properties and stuff like that. He's just he's just chilling out. He's been deposed. This former vice president, uh, Emin Gagwa, or whatever his name is, is the new the new leader. So no, Rhodesia was um, the breadbasket of uh, Africa, and and look at what these fuckers did to it, right? And I'm guessing the same is going to happen in South Africa. Of know? course it is. You can't South take farmland from, from people that know how to do agriculture on a large scale and give it to unqualified people that can't even fucking grow uh, vegetables in something the size of a victory garden mm. and not expect everything to fucking implode. Yeah. yeah. Well, what gets me is that, do you know what the most peaceful country in uh, Africa is? The most stable, economically stable, most peaceful Probably, if you weren't were to live in Africa, this is the country you want to go to. Which one? Botswana, which is just north of South Africa. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Botswana is so particularly stable is number one, they have diamonds, and they have a fifty-fifty cooperation with the beers called a uh, uh, De De Debswana. Debswana is the name, mm -hmm. and they they mine the diamonds and, and they split it fifty-fifty with the country, and the country reinvests that into HIV care and education. So it's it's a functional country in the middle of Africa, and it, it's shocking. But the other really big issue with Botswana and why it's stable is that there are only six different ethnic tribes in Botswana. Uganda, by comparison, has thirty-two. So you have these uh, these mandates like South Africa I, was a I'm mandate. Sorry, wait, can I say like it's <clears throat> it, it's funny because it's racist, but it's true. So yeah. did you say that Botswana is willingly doing a 50 50 split with the white people if yeah. they'll pay for AIDS medication? <laughs> no, the, the government gets the money however they want. But the government actually puts it towards because there's a huge age crisis, age crisis in Botswana. I, no, that's, towards... you know, wasn't that chick fired from her flight because she was flying to Africa and she's like, I hope I don't get AIDS. And everybody's <laughs> like, that's so terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, 50 percent of people of reproductive age in, in Botswana have HIV. So the fact the government does treat it for free socially. Oh, I'm sorry, it, Josh. Were you, when you said the beers, did you mean boars? De Beers, no, the the Diamond Company. The Diamond. No. Oh my God, I'm thinking I'm, that's like a okay. That's why I said white people. I thought you were saying that there's like a no, 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 no. <laughs> no De Beers, the Diamond, the Diamond Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's a it's a company that's socially owned. Happily with this, just for the. I, I thought it was guys. like a weird accent thing, and I didn't want to correct you. Like, right. <laughs> you were too polite. Yeah. You, Jim, were too polite. What the fuck? No. Well, because he knows I, I have an autistic slur and I can't say the word Erver correctly, so <laughs> he just chalked it up. To... Well, no, that's that's why it was funny to me. I was like, you got this little fucking uh, leftover, you know, colonist farmer collective, and they're splitting fifty-fifty diamond profits. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's so fucking wild. That's why I thought that was all right. But no, the, the country is stable because of of the racial homogeneity. It's one of the most racially homogenous mandates in the country and uh, in the continent. And all of like Middle East and Africa, those borders are bullshit. They're just bullshit that the the European colonists had over. Um, South Africa was bullshit. Like all of it, Syria is the big one. Syria is a huge swath of land of of different languages, different religion, different sex. And uh, they they don't mesh together, and they're forced under this one fake government, and they they don't want to be there. 
And that's why there's all this co constant strife. If it were to balkanize and just become the areas that are self-governing and homogenous, it would be a lot better. And that's why Botswana just happens to be one of the safest countries in Africa. It's because they're uh, pretty much homogenous as it is. Just, uh, just a thought. Well, yeah. the more you know. All right. The, the, <laughs> the more you know. No, the, the problem with Africa is that all this help with insofar as malaria and AIDS medicine and all that shit, all very humanitarian shit like that. But it's the reason that, uh, you know, we're having this migrant crisis in Africa, in uh, Europe, rather. It's the reason why Africa is the fastest growing continent on Earth. And women are having, what is it, like something like almost uh, five uh, children per woman in Africa? I mean, some absurd amount like that. And, you know, the, Africa, the African continent will quickly no longer be able to feed itself. And so... It never the, has. Well, <laughs> well, no, not because that was because of corruption. But now it's going to become because of the issue of just um, of overpopulation. And what the, what the fuck do you think is going to happen with all those people? Like Nigeria? Nigeria has grown fivefold. It's, in the it's last a self correcting years. problem, let's be honest. Ni we know, well, we know it's not if you leave the fucking door them. open. You know, these fucking Europeans leaving the fucking door open. Look, I, th I think the European issue is that they're fucked and, and Europe is going to go down the tubes. I think it's past the point of no return, quite frankly. You know? I mean, I'm I'm black. I, I have on that faith. Issue. I have faith that the Chinese will move inland from the <laughs> east coast. I'm not kidding. From the east coast and from the south, where they're building up their fucking infrastructure and their economy, and they'll just it'll be like neo-colonialism. Like, and nobody will be able to call them out on it. You can't call a Chinese. Uh, you can't say, "Oh, the Asian's racist," because he's doing this. <laughs> God, I, there I, already I, are uh, uh, Chinatowns throughout the southern, especially in the the east coast of Africa. And they teach them Mandarin, and there are there are weird like Sinabu Africans who know Mandarin perfectly, who sing communist songs, and who end up like pop stars in China because everybody thinks it's cool that the one black guy in the entire country can sing uh, revolutionary music perfectly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's you're gonna see what China really likes is the wood. They like huge old trees. They like to cut them down and make tables out of them. <laughs> That's something China likes. So you're gonna start seeing Chinese rail. China built the African Union headquarters, I think, in Nigeria, uh, for free. Just you don't need to pay us back for this. Here's a, have a nice have a nice African Union headquarters in Nigeria. Remember, China loves you very I much. Know. Please give us trees. <laughs> I, I know it's really dark, but I, I suppose there's no better fertilizer than corpses. And if you have overpopulation problem, they all start to death. The Chinese are going to be fucking grateful because they're going to grow. Well, what they're doing is the big shift is China is known for making the small shitty products, the the cheap labor. They want to segue to being what America is and have a massive middle middle class and uh, making manufacturing jobs and then move the shitty labor jobs over to Africa who are permanently indebted to them for the infrastructure they built. I, somehow I'm not thinking that's going to work. I, I well, don't think that the African yeah, population... They've had problems already. This, the Africans aren't too useful. As a <laughs> result. Have, have you guys ever watched uh, Empire of Dust? Yeah. Is that yeah. the one with the Chinese dude talking oh, all this shit? Oh, that is the oh, fucking so brutal. Brutal. The, that, that clip. <laughs> oh, man. Who, who has it? Anybody have it? I'll play it for chat. because it's He's just trolling the dude and just laughing in his face. It's so fucking funny. Uh, Empire of Dust, right? Yeah, it, it's the whole movie's great. Like yeah. they, the Chinese talk about why they won't leave gas out because they'll steal it. He bitches about how their companies don't know how to run anything. He chastises the translator because, like, the Dutch set up everything for you, and you fucking idiots couldn't keep it going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's uh, the trailer. I'll send you the trailer. No, I think uh, the, the, I, this, this is the clip. Um, I got to figure out how to do this OBS shit. No, guys, be patient with me for a bit. Just talk amongst yourselves while I figure this shit out. If you're setting up videos, you should be playing the uh, the black guy singing revolutionary <laughs> songs. It's one of my favorite videos on YouTube. So how about the weather? <laughs> uh, boy, that weather, yeah, that's uh, uh, good stuff. Oh, you know, I, I got something we can use as filler. Okay. Let, let me pull it up. I'll link you to the article, and then you can all take your guess as to how long it'll take creationists to jump on this. I know it's not the in thing anymore. We've moved past that cycle on the internet, but um, I can already Atheism see Atheism is unstoppable, Jim. Haven't you heard? Uh, I think this should go to everybody. It's a link. Here you go. Ready? Yeah. Oh, uh, shit, there you go. Shit, 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 shit. Left side. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just a, a news source, so whatever. Now, well, how do you think that's going to be interpreted? 
<laughs> right? Oh. I can I can already take a guess as to how that one's gonna be. That explains why we're all retarded. Right. We're go. all inbred motherfuckers. <laughs> Which one? Let me see it. All uh, it's humans. All yeah, go oh, ahead. Yeah, read it. Oh, yeah. All humans doing? are descended from just two people, and a catastrophic event wiped out almost all species on Earth 100,000 years ago, scientists claim. What, what, Checkmate, what, what, atheist. <laughs> <laughs> How will that fucking kangaroo recover from this? You know, wipe that smug fucking look off his face. Uh, oh, there's no, there's no evidence for Noah, is there? Huh? <laughs> 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 Is Jim is Jim evangelizing to chat now? It, I'm I'm proselytizing, brother. You need to accept Jesus. Amen. Amen. There you go. How do you pronounce that word? Proselytize or proselytize? I have no idea how to spell it. I'm lucky I, mean, I can even it. say it. If you heard me it. say hyperbole, <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> hyperbole. Yeah, but yeah, for a while I said hyper hyperbole. That's hyperbole. how my wife says it. Yeah. A future sporting event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, for, for chat, let me just put it in the chat, um, you yeah, because, so that you all understand why we're, oops, what, what the fuck happened? There we go. You can do it, Coach, I oh. believe. Thoughts and prayers for Coach, everybody, as, as we make our way through this. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. Uh, I, I get, I, okay, let me see. Ah. Right. Oh. Oh fuck it. Okay, guys, in chat, it's I posted it in chat, so there it should be good enough for everybody. It's a very it's a very accredited news source, the Daily Mail. We all know that they're <laughs> always up to date on accurate information. I'm sure you'll all fucking appreciate it. Hey, Ralph loves the Daily Mail. He said that last stream I watched. I actually do love the Daily Mail. <laughs> you, you, you get articles like this and other like right wing stuff, and then on the side there's like tits here, ass here. Which celebrities, you know, fucking around on their spouse, fucking what's his name, six nine arrested. I see that on the side too, so it's just classic tabloid fodder there. Yeah, I mean they're they're good for a laugh every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, somebody in chat brought up thought audit. I guess I'm behind on that one. What's going on? You didn't see that? You missed it. No, I've been playing video games. <laughs> so like people are, people are reporting like sex workers and stuff for um, tax evasion and other people who are doing like <laughs> that's, that's actually that's yeah. not bad. That's not bad. Yes. Okay. And there's then if a... they get caught, you get thirty percent of the proceeds. The the person who turned them in. So there's yeah. a financial wait really yeah yes thirty yeah. percent of what they didn't pay in taxes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, huge exactly. incentive to, to narc. So, which is why um, they're saying that everybody who's doing it is an incel. They don't work. They're neat. It doesn't so they matter. The money. Which I'd is why they're harassing sex I, workers. I'd sign up for it. You know, I'm I'm sort of like regretting that I hadn't thought of it first. You know, yeah, thirty percent, yay me. You know, uh, what's going? On? People are saying Venti is getting roasted. She's gotten. She's been coming out against it and calling it uh, narc behavior. Oh no, fuck! Or, that's right. Yeah, didn't she get like fifty grand or something? Yeah. Like Thirty grand. Yeah. Arab print. Or something, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Well, if anybody wants fifteen thousand dollars, they know who to talk to. Yeah. My buddy. My buddy at the IRS can sort you out. Uh, but yeah, because <laughs> oh, I mean, that like, is fucking if, crazy. If, if she if she got paid thirty grand, right, and and her marginal tax rate is probably. Uh, up there, like twenty nine percent, thirty percent. Just to make the math easy, thirty grand, nine grand. Yeah, it'd be about three thousand dollars for whoever narks on her. Fuck yeah, yeah, the safest bet is just to estimate it at a third of your income for state and federal. Yeah. It's a smart way to go. I mean, it'll be a little off, but it's pretty close. Yeah, but no, I mean, you know, there's three grand for just that payment alone. Sure, there's plenty of incentive to do it. How fucking hard was it to pay your taxes, though? I paid taxes. I paid like $75 in federal income taxes last year. Just fucking do your taxes. It cost me more money for TurboTax than I did for the uh Well, that's actual... deliberate. That's deliberate. You know, oh, they're saying the Findom community is freaking out about it, too. Yes. Yeah, uh, they should. Oh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Of course. Oh, man. Yeah. Because Holy th there's shit. A this limit. is a cash cow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, th there's a limit to uh, gifts that you can give to somebody. Okay, I, I, I think actually it's two thousand a year is the limit. Two thousand a year? No, I think it's higher. I think it's maybe ten thousand at, at, at the most. Uh, I, I, I honestly, to God, forgot, but I do believe it's in the five figures. But after that, it's taxable income, and it's like a one-off. I, I forget the rule. Well, I, I totally how are they it. avoiding? Okay, but how are they avoiding paying taxes? Because almost every platform you collect money through, 
I, I'm fairly certain sends you what is it a 1099 like YouTube will and they make you for- sign a, a W nine before you even get paid uh, right which is yeah, why everything yeah it, it's just uh, I guess that's why it happens if you send a tip like this guy on this platform collecting this amount of money probably not paying taxes and they can just pull up the the fucking paperwork and say oh yeah that's true send over uh, one of our guys and we'll get that money <laughs> send over one of the guys <laughs> with the the baseball bet get the money and we'll pay the incel <laughs> their, their cut for the good work well one of the things yeah, that people, keep... people don't talk about in so far as the irs is concerned is that they're understaffed severely understaffed okay and and this has been something that the republicans have sort of been pushing for in certain in term in the house of turning off the spigot on the irs they don't have enough people to police everybody oh okay yeah, that's what, true. The, what the fuck is a premium snapchat or snapchat people are saying that's where it started you pay you pay money to be on the snapchat list where they send out nudes yes <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's just whores sending out nudes and getting like what PayPal tips then? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, and then they don't. Okay. All right. I see how this is going. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to. I was trying to think like, how are they avoiding it? Everybody's sending you a ten ninety nine, but they're getting it in such small amounts. I guess is that it? Yeah, small amounts, and uh, I mean, I'll put it this way: I I do contract work still to make ends meet because the fucking kiwi farms is is heavy. But one of the companies that I do business with was explaining that in their area for, I think, tens of millions of people, there are maybe like four IRS agents work in the entire area. Yeah. So they're and they're saying that's because of Trump. It, it, like they had they already had too few. But then after Trump, the number Holy of shit. working. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Somebody said selling underwear. I just thought, doesn't Repsion sell his underwear and sure. his fucking feet fix? <laughs> yep. Do you think he's paying taxes on his degeneracy? I'm guessing Send not. a tip, Jim. Be the first. <laughs> be, the first. <laughs> be the first. Come on. Get that money. Put it in your fucking Ukraine savings account. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go for it. You know what I mean? Um, shouldn't have Shouldn't have said that. You, you, the, there's already some motherfucker in chat trying to skip you. Tip.irs.gov. Go. <laughs> Oh, how mad are they? They must be fucking furious. Dude, they're fuckers. furious. Yeah. Fucking having to pay taxes and shit. God damn it. <laughs> like a normal person working a real job. Well, one of the hey. things about the, the lack of IRS personnel that they're not talking about is that if it, gets, if it becomes widely known that effectively the IRS doesn't have enough people to police uh, everybody insofar as their taxes are concerned, then, then tax avoidance or, or outright tax evasion is going to skyrocket. So once that comes out, you know, because what happens is that, see, if everybody avoids uh, taxes or evades taxes, uh, let's call it properly such, if everybody's evading taxes, there will never be a point where IRS has enough people to police all the people evading, okay? And it'll just... Especially if there is violent resistance from the tax man. Yeah, exactly. This happened in Argentina, for instance. I I have some experience in this issue, that in Argentina, people would avoid taxes, and there simply were not enough uh, uh, tax people, tax authority people, to police them, and not enough police to go out and and execute search warrants and all the rest of it necessary to, to get everybody to comply. And so in Argentina, their their tax revenue just went down the toilet, see? And so that's the thing in the United States, and you want to be real careful about that, because if enough people get wise, uh, you know, the, the IRS and the Treasury Department is fucked, because they're not going to get any tax revenue. They'll be able to collect it from corporations, but not from people, because it'll be just too many people. It's like wrangling a thousand cats. You're not going to... Well, in China, that. let's look at China again. How, how does China, a billion people, very hard to collect taxes from over a billion people, right? Mm-hmm. But what do they do? They don't have cash anymore. Even if right. you're buying food from a street vendor, you're using WeChat. And WeChat has like sending limits now. So here's the, here's the nice future for us. We're going to get MasterCard, Visa Card, PayPal. They're all going to be consolidated under a government regulation. They're going to have AI checking where money is going and being sent from. Nobody's going to be using cash anymore. So yeah. it's going to be very easy to tax people. Yeah. Oh, fuck. What about all the deviant artist uh, people that do commissions and shit on that website? Jim's going to be fucking raking it in. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a list. He's checking it twice. He's yes. Medicare the tax snitch, is that your new career move? Oh, that would be fucking funny. Well, I know. I can just imagine this growing beyond a thought on it. it, it I can see this becoming something that's going to freak out half the internet. 
it's probably a good idea to get your taxes in order uh, for everybody listening that does stuff yeah, well, online. Well, uh, I can see it evolving taxes. into like a, you know, a, that's a why war I suspect that the people. crowd has been uh, sniffing around for my social security number and my uh, credit card. I numbers. saw that. Yeah, that got posted somewhere, didn't I? I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck do you need? Well, first of all, what the fuck do you need my credit card numbers for except to cheat me, right? Uh, you, you know, so what the fuck's that all about? And the uh, social security number, I'm assuming he just wants to uh, get it so that he can, uh, you know, you know, is, you know call it? up the IRS or so something. Who is no, phone? Uh, the, the wife's calling. Oh, I'll just message mm -hmm. her back. Oh, yeah. Now, we all knew that Jim was a Fed. I just didn't think he worked with the IRS. That, that <laughs> oh, takes me by yeah. surprise. <laughs> Oh, I wonder, does this apply to crypto too? Because like a lot of people have Bitcoin links and shit for their... Uh, it would be much harder to audit crypto. Just saying, if, you, uh, if you're if you looking for more reasons to get into Bitcoin, as a humble Bitcoin theocrat, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally <laughs> there, there are many totally good shilling. reasons. Yeah, no, I mean, Josh and I have had long arguments about this. Bitcoin is, well, it's going down the tubes right now. And, and we're seeing that. It's correcting. It's, it's, fine. it's, yeah, it's, it's correcting. Fine. That's what they call it. That's the euphemism. But oh, well, didn't it correct itself from like twenty grand to four grand? Oh yeah, it's yeah. sitting at right now. It's uh, it's about I think last time I checked, probably like three point eight. I don't know, but no, it, it'll it's it had massive dips before. It's just it's just the nature of the beast. Oh, you buy low, sell high, yeah. And then some fucking Chinese guy comes in and fucks with the market, and you can't sell any of your crypto, so you're stuck with well, it. And the price drops. Nobody, nobody knows for sure what caused this one. Usually, it's uh, it used to be the Bank of China would continuously flip flop on if it was going to ban cryptocurrency or not. But right now, it is uh, de facto banned or de jure banned in, in China. I think what happened this time is that a fork of Bitcoin Core uh, called Bitcoin Cash forked three way, and they're being childish fucking spastics. So I, I think uh, confidence in, in cryptocurrency overall has dropped a little bit just because of the uh, the Bitcoin cash faggots fucking it up for everybody. So how long has this uh, thought audit been going on? Is it just today then? No, just a, I think a few days, right? Two or three days, maybe something like that. About a week. I can't really? believe I, I can't believe I missed this. Yeah, I know Sargon did a video on it already. You've been busy playing it. Fallout seventy six. <laughs> of course, the hottest new fucking piece of entertainment from Bethesda. Who doesn't love Fallout seventy six? Great, great video game. Well made. Good, good job, Bethesda. Well, at least they've got the modding community to fix it. Oh wait, no, they don't. Oh, uh, there's no mods for it because it's fucking online. Wow, they're fucked. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking embarrassment. As I do not play video games because I'm a grown-up, I have no nothing <laughs> I know. interesting to say about that. Why do you uh, play I'm video trying to, games? I'm trying There's to think so of like many a, other a, better a, things to do. Hmm? Why do I play video games? Oh, they're fun. Why do you read books? Why do you play chess? Because well, I learn things. I don't play chess because that's like way too gay. Uh, but no, I learn okay, things. Okay, why, why do you play Go? Um, I don't play Go anymore. Oh, you did play it, though? Yeah, but when I was, like, 14, 15, yeah. Why did you play it, though? Because it was fun when I was 14, 15. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, games are fun. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like, I, I prefer adult games. That, that came well, up. Well, I, I don't want to hear about <laughs> As I was say, what, where's your, where's your that, coach? <laughs> I don't know where this conversation's going. I don't want to hear about orcas. Bring Let's... it back full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that like, like V dreams about going to SeaWorld? Yes. <laughs> and just being ravaged by the dolphins on the tank. <laughs> no, Do you know dolphins. that, that the dolphins are the other animal that is known for sure that rapes... Um, fellow uh oh yeah i do yeah. remember reading about that yeah, yeah that, that's pretty interesting oh but dolphins way. are actually assholes uh they will kill porpoises by driving their bottlenoses into them at like 80 miles per hour yeah. underwater are we, i can already tell where this conversation is going to go it's going to end with dolphin rape caves <laughs> <laughs> well one of the zoo status was a dolphin and we're currently sending down submarines to find the fucker <laughs> we're, we're gonna get them <laughs> Uh, by the way, let me do a quick uh, super chats. Uh, Trump Nation says, uh, Killstream Kitty needs to happen. Well said. Uh, Denton, if you pay taxes, you are a commie. Brittany Venti. Yeah, or quote, if you pay taxes, you are a commie. End quote. Brittany Venti. Yeah, that's that's what I heard her say. Penti. Did, wait, did she, did she really say that? No, probably said that, you know, you were a scumbag or something. She got pissed off because, you know, 
her money's getting taken from her. So, oh, so. how have I missed all of this shit? All yeah, right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I missed it on the whole V loves orcas shit, shit. So you know, Penty spray furries with salt from a pressurized hose. Well said. Fash Badenkut, you're starting to look very Jewish, CRP. Mm, interesting. Der <laughs> Grobman, uh, except for Jim, time will be a thing of the past. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Let me try it again. Except for Jim, time will be a thing of the past because if I'm getting paid to do videos, I can't really go on hiatus and shitpost on Twitter. Okay. That kid, is Coach Cool? Hey, accept kid? or expect? I don't accept. Except for Jim, time will be a thing of the past because if I'm getting paid to do videos, I can't really go on hiatus and shitpost on Twitter. Oh, he's saying well, welcome, except, welcome to... except oh. Jim time uh, will be a thing of the past. That's one, that's one sentence, Coach. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just read it's, it's a well, fucking the... caps, no punctuation. What the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> you're just too old to, to catch up with the new grammatical structure. If, if you played video games, you'd have a quicker mind. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, clearly. Okay, that kid. Is Coach Cool Kid doing Cool Kid Collins? Uh, yeah, well, I was supposed to do Collins. I will do Collins in a little bit. Rawhide76, I go to the gym thinking this ended two hours ago. What have I missed? You missed a lot. Uh, Valkyries, uh, Jim, tell Mr. Anti-Bully to check his Twitter. Okay. Jim? Check it for what? I don't know. I love when they don't. <laughs> like, hey, just like, what? <laughs> All right. All right, go, go fucking look, I guess. Yeah, and do you see anything? Naked pictures? Naked, Naked pictures, pictures of an orca and V? I want to see I'm, V and there's, orca. Probably, there's probably a whale getting fucked somewhere in here. I'll scroll. <laughs> um. Are you waiting for a status update? I've got to scroll through. Oh, <laughs> yeah, mind. we're waiting here. Yeah. No, we're doing a uh, holding breath contest. <laughs> uh, Ralph's going to win that. He's a champ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, what else? I don't understand Do the grammar of this fucking sentence. Do you need help? Do you need yes? Do you I need, need youngins to dissect it, let me, it for let me you. Put it into the fucking. Uh, I, I'm side not. Chat. I'm not seeing anything on. T I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Well, you know, it's 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 the whole thing is like a haiku. No, like a like. A, there's like a no. Zen there's koan. no. It's a Zen koan. Tea life getting fucked you know, in the, it's, my it's, timeline. It's like so one of those things that you you just don't quite understand what the hell is going on. I put it in the side chat. You guys, th this is yeah. what. Um, uh, who said this here? It was, uh, let me just check the name here. It was Der Grobman. This is a fucking train wreck. Why would you pay, why would you pay money to send this? <laughs> Proofread your fucking message. Well, I think he's trying to say, except gym time will be a thing of the past because if I'm not getting paid to do videos, I can't really go on hiatus and shit those on Twitter. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a jab at Jim. I'm, I don't fucking know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Welcome to the Spoonie experiment. All right, I found something on Twitter that they might be responding to. Uh, looks like it's from uh, the champ. It, it does Tonka have another fucking Twitter account? I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not up Ralph? to speed on that. I don't know. Yeah. If uh, it says, uh, "Hi, receipts lady. I want you to know just how full of shit people are really uh, quick because I'm not being told to literally not say." Jim has a problem with faction people. Prepare for a dump of nonsense that should have been obvious. Uh, he lied to people to say I didn't say anything. He knows 100% I did. It also gets worse. As everyone says, he couldn't have uh, seen it coming. I literally told the dumbass a week before that this was a plan for that or for them. He was told a week before what the plan was. No way around it. He's literally playing confidant about it because he thinks his Twitter being gone is the end of the evidence. I was smart about it and knew he was a bullshitter. So I recorded myself reading my DMs with him. I don't, my Twitter's not gone. I've been suspended for seven days. Uh, and I don't know what the fucking retard is talking about. Uh, I... Send everybody the same DMs for the IBS apocalypse stream. Uh, no doxing, no bullshit. You know, try to send me your videos and your pics ahead of time. <clears throat> Tonka DM me saying he had concerns, but I told him what the rules were. So I don't know. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Nah, fuck him. Yeah, isn't it's funny to me because I expected Ralph to be way more in the know, and he's just like, I don't fucking know. I don't. But I it's don't like know. none of us. I've been checking up on the other side. To see I, I haven't really. To. <laughs> I, I haven't been paying attention to him, to be honest with you. Like, um, except for like the fight. I keep waiting. I was like waiting to see if he'd sign the contract. 
uh, and I was waiting to see what his promo pick would be, and that was about it. I don't want to watch the Kuma, like I don't want to watch that. It's boring as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, what got me is I was I was on there briefly to to shit post on uh, Sirachi, and uh, like even when I was there, there were there were so many awkward pauses. Like we're having pauses just because this has been going on for for hours. So we're naturally running out of things to talk about, but like he'll talk and it'll be pauses even with a guy there that you're having a conversation with. And it's just like, I, I don't understand how, how does he retain an audience? And I, I don't have anything against him personally. I just, I could never get the, the appeal of the Kumite. I, I don't I know. Try, I try I, to I'm looking it. forward to January. I want to see what happens. Maybe a fight happens. Maybe it doesn't. I, I don't know. Oh, by the way, uh, Braving Ruin has sent me like a little tutorial as to how to share a screen, and you know, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Uh, but he says something interesting that you can give a one-time gift of up to thirty thousand uh, for the IRS thing. Yeah, interesting. But uh, I thought that's if you're. I thought that I'm pretty sure that thirty thousand <clears throat> one-time gift has to be from family. Yeah, that, that sounds right to me. No, I think yeah, that's a, not a random motherfucker sends you thirty grand. No, 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 no. That that would not be a one time. That's it would, ten thousand dollars. It would have to be through a like a bank wire or a direct cash exchange. It can't be like through a, a platform like Twitch. That's obviously going to be uh, a, a tip or some kind of service income as opposed to just a gift. Like I'm I'm, I'm very sure that's how it is because DSP is up shit creek right now because he's a uh, he's been collecting money for years in in Seattle and not only does he have federal taxes. Not only does he have state taxes, the fucking city of Seattle has taxes for entertainers. So he's paying like three <laughs> levels of taxes. And he didn't even know about this. His, his, he says his tax account fucked him over. So he has like years of back taxes on three different levels for, for his income. And he's been struggling with that all year. And he'll still survive it. You're DSP? Yeah, he'll still yeah. survive it. He'll be he, fine. <laughs> he, he could get into the world's worst situation, and he will find a way to stumble out of it. It's amazing. <laughs> he's, he's like fucking Kenny from South Park. You could just take an axe to him, and he would be streaming the next day. <laughs> He'd be completely fine. No, I wonder how uh, Sargon's tax situation is going. Yeah. Uh, oh, I haven't heard an update on that. Some, uh, some fucking lunatic on my... Oh, you don't, you don't know this? What? What? Uh, the tax situation with Sargon, because Jim sounded confused for a second. No, I, I don't know. I'm not up on that one either. A guy on the forum, one of my, uh, I think he's a, I think he's an accountant or a lawyer, a solicitor in England in real life. But he went through all of Sargon's publicly available information because taxes in the UK, the only thing that's public information, arrest records, all this shit is not public in the UK, but tax payments are. Any any really? tax payments are, yeah, they're open. I don't think for private individuals, but for companies they are. Um, and even then, I think it might be for private individuals that are open. But he, he has not paid any taxes, which puts him in an awkward situation because either A, he's not paying taxes at all, or B, he's using an American company to get his uh, to collect income and pay taxes to the U.S. government instead of the U.K. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, but if is, that is, is. if there's, that's there's the case, tax possibly between the U.K. and U.S. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, I mean, even in that case, it's like you have a British quote unquote politician who's avoiding taxes in the UK, like fucking JK Rowling pays her taxes and she pays out the ass for it. Yeah. And the, the law is pretty clear uh, between the US and the UK and so far as taxes are concerned. See, if, if you're, you have income in one or the other country, right, you, you can pay in that country and that uh, tax payment is credited to your tax bill in the UK. So that way you don't pay twice for the same money. You see what I'm saying? Um, and and it's that, that tax reciprocity is like, you know, it's, it's a standard thing. It's no big deal. It, it's nothing that you have to jump through in any kind of weird hoop or anything like that. Um, but, if it, but here's the thing. He could potentially be earning revenue in the U.S. and saying that he's going to declare it in uh, the U.K. and then not declare it in the U.K., Okay, and uh, that would be a big no-no because it's it's perfectly fine if you're in the U.S. if you're earning revenue in the U.S. and living in the U.K. to earn the revenue in the U.S. and pay in the U.S. or say that you're going to pay in the U.K. Either is fine, okay, but you have to pay it. If you don't, if you say that you're you're going to pay it in the U.K. but then to the U.K. you don't pay them, then you're up shit's creek. You can get in a lot of trouble. I mean, I mean like uh, jail time trouble. You know what I'm saying? Didn't didn't this just happen with the royal family? Uh, what's the new princess's name? Meghan Markle, that that chick. The... Yeah, she's she's getting freaked out because the earnings that her family or she's making in the U.S. 
it, like they're they're coming after her for it. It's like she's worried she's going to lose five million dollars or something like that. Wow, oh, Jesus! I, I just read. I just read a fucking. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I'm I'm surprised that that chick, uh, you know, she got pregnant. Man, that fucker better check that it's his. That's all I got to say about that. Okay, because of her marriage to the British prince, both the Duke and Duchess of the Sussex tax returns to the U.S. are being looked into. This means the royal power couple may have to pay tax on not only Meghan's $5 million, uh, but also Prince Harry's main source of private wealth, the yearly $300,000 trust fund on which he pays U.K. tax income. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. No, their staff fucked it up, okay? They should have, uh, this kind of situation, they should have known ahead of time. They're probably like doing like a joint return or some shit like that. Oh, fucking morons! This is just bad accounting. That's surprising, actually. Yeah, if if they're willing to pay the taxes and it doesn't look malicious, they're probably just going to end up paying the taxes. Well, what she has to pay, uh, from what I understand, five years before she can completely cut off her U.S. citizenship and not get fucked by the IRS. Yeah, five years. Yeah, five years. yeah. but she, she did she resign her U.S. citizenship? No, it takes five years for her to do that. Is yeah. what the article was saying. Yeah, yeah, that, it does take five years to once you once you resign your citizenship, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's that, that's their plan. But I guess she's still getting fucked on taxes. They both are. Well, yeah, because you're you're saying that he has to pay U.S. taxes, and that that means that they must be doing like some sort of joint uh, uh, revenue or whatever. I don't know what it's called in the U.K., but it's it seems like back bad tax planning on the part of of uh you know the the royal family staff or whatever that'd be kind of weird and stupid that they fell into that uh, easy trap you know what i mean kind of surprising but, no, I, but i'm sorry probably boring your chat with all the tax shit do you want to <laughs> pull in discord callers so they can call us faggots right. yeah let's, oh, let's pull in discord before we faggots. do that though i want to i want to recount a story i talked to somebody who knows sargon i don't want to say who but uh he said the the little feud between the skeptics and the squeedy squad are going to result in everybody getting deplatformed from everything and they even people suggested that that was your plan jim are you planning to kamikaze strike sargon i, I i'm a good boy <laughs> <laughs> so short answer yes <laughs> I you can't. You know, I'm a, I'm a good boy. I just do good things and laugh at stuff on the internet. I don't know what to tell you. It sounds like they're paranoid. I don't know. Well, look. I thought they, wanted, look, to, look, I thought they wanted to roll around in the shit. What are they, what are they worried about? <laughs> well, I mean, like looking at it, like just purely on on a, on a tactical basis, it would be the smartest you move from your point of view because you don't care if you have the channel or not. Right? You don't have a channel, you get rid of it and get a new one. Because you know. No, I obviously care deeply about my channel. That's why I'm willing to bet it for Tonka's dumb fight with Andy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah. But Sargon, you know, he's never going to see those 850,000 or 870,000 subscribers again. You know, so he, he definitely cares about his channel. I, I have never understood this situation. Look, if YouTube asks you when they're when they're doing the great Showa and they're removing all the drama from YouTube, you don't know me, Jim. We, we're not <laughs> let's do the we're not friends thing. We don't know each other. Uh, leave leave my little my little channel. Alone. I, no, I'm gonna <laughs> tell them. I'm gonna tell them and be like, that's my other channel. Can I keep that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he, he's just reading Kiwi Farms threads. The exact same fucking thing. Just take it. <laughs> take it. Now this uh, little informant, um, did he pretend, was he LARPing as a doctor slash lawyer and did he want to fuck whales? <laughs> no. He has a big channel and uh, he's in a precarious situation and he would prefer not to have a great deep. Oh, tell, tell, uh, tell Dankula I said hi. That's, a, that's an interesting guess. <laughs> so so this, uh, this source of yours, right? He he, mm -hmm. uh, he thinks that the 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 banning is going to come for everybody the sweetie squad the sweetie squad and the uh, and the um, yeah skeptics. they're going to shut down everything Google's going to have a, a a a image crisis an optics crisis where they're just like uh, everybody all these people are flinging shit at each other they're flinging shit on our platform it's they're going to have a like Jim Sterling if you ever listen to Jim Sterling God forbid nobody listens to him besides me in this fucking community. But that's fine. Jim Sterling rants and raves constantly about the drama communities being a, a big problem on YouTube that they need to do do something about. And that's probably what's going to happen. So when the show happens, they're going to take everybody who's involved in internet drama and they're going to cut them all off at once. So it's, it's going to be people like Dankula, Sargon V, um, Jim's channel, Jim's backup channel, the Metacurist archives, my channel, 
maybe Andy's, maybe Tonka's, uh, maybe maybe Coach Red Pill. It's just all those people who are kind of involved in flinging shit on the internet are going to be systematically blown out all at once. Well, I've, I always thought that that whole uh, alternative influencer network, that, that, that graph, I basically thought that that was a target list. You know, this is the hit list. These are the people you should uh, take out. You know, and I, I figured that, way, when, that's when that happens. Gonna, that's, yeah, it's not going to happen like that. They're going to pick people off one by one. It's not going to be some type of You know of the funny show. thing about all this, though? You know who's going to be just fine? Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> they already threw his ass off. <laughs> he had a plenty of time to, to rebuild. He's sitting pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay, let, let's take bets. Who do we think is going to be the first to go? The first to go, um, probably Jim. To be honest, it, no, no, I'll take no. that back. No. I'm I'm probably gonna go before Jim, just because Jim has more more social consciousness. Like my shit, I have people who are legit terrorists who dox high ranking members of like PayPal. I got kicked off of PayPal. I'm so thoroughly banned from PayPal because this guy went after an executive's family that I can't even take an Uber with one of my credit cards that I had associated with my PayPal account because even my credit cards in a abstracted sense, are banned from They got from tainted? PayPal. Your, your credit uh, yeah. cards got tainted? All, yes. So thoroughly banned. So they're probably, like, I already have people trying to trying to go after YouTube right now just because I'm, I'm making, I've made $200 off Super Berries. So they're going to go after that as soon as they I can. I would say Worski, Jim, probably at the top of the, at the top of the list of people trying to, I mean, there's people moving, like, it wasn't an accident that the, um, Wall Street Journal wrote about me, and JF was in that article too. Yeah, uh, this this was not an accidental thing that they were just uh, happened to, you know, stumble upon this. Somebody put that reporter up to this. It was and the IIR I, I, report. I, yes. I think you guys are. I think you guys are wrong. I, I mean, I understand what their concern is. Again, you tell. Thank you. I said hi. Um, I, I think what the the big uh, push is going to be against is not uh, shit flinging. I think it's going to be prep work for the next election, and I think it's going to be politically focused channels. Yeah, I and agree. I think you're going to see people like Alsup and Sticks and others that are going to be maybe not outright banned, but are going to definitely start to feel a push from Google. Yeah, Demonetize, maybe they'll probably well, start with that. With, yeah, uh, with Dankula in particular, his Discord was deleted like the same, like the day before the Brexit vote, I want to say. Like the day before the Brexit vote, his channel was completely deleted off, off Discord. And they they said they claimed it was because everybody there posts scat porn twenty four seven, so they, they had to recreate the Discord channel, and it's all been up people, ever since. All the people in chat saying, "Well, this person will cause too much of a stink," or "This person will cause too much of a stink." They shit kicked Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, that was that was, the, that was the the Rubicon. That once they kicked him out, they realized, "Oh, we can kick out anybody. Nobody's really going to give a shit," and they're right, you know. Yeah, I, I actually think it's going to be, you're right, I think it's going to be the political YouTubers, Alsip, um, uh, Styx, but also like Lauren Southern, I think they got, they really got a hard on for her because she's starting to do like really serious work, I think. I mean, I, I really I think a lot her. of people will have a hard on for Lauren well, Southern. Well, you know actually. what I mean. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I think that, that they're going to go after the more political user. And the one I think is also going to be in their sites is uh, JF. Yeah, I, I think that a little too... Um, too yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and, and the fact that he's like chummy with uh, David Duke, you know, I think that they'll use that as the perfect opportunity to, to shit can his channel. Is he? Yeah. There was a ah. couple people that told me that he was the actual target of the Wall Street Journal article and that they just kind of lucked into getting me, that they really wanted to take him down because he's more of like, I mean, our show is pretty much an entertainment show. I mean, we do politics too, but it's not really, I mean, it's just a comedy show. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. Uh, people in chat saying Fuentes. So yeah, no, he's definitely yeah. going to be on that list if it's yeah. politics. He's you still think on just... YouTube? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, still fucking, Yeah, he's we gone. People I like changed Jared my mind. Hope. Target him all the time, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's lightning in the bottle then for, for Streamy at this particular moment? Like, if YouTube starts deplatforming politics or even drama shit, uh, right now, and people start transitioning over there. Do you think they'll have enough fortitude to at least hold up for a couple years before no. they start doing the typical shit? That's what I've been no. told that they're they're going to hold up for as long as they can. So, um, well, I mean, they're not going to be able to financially support themselves because there's already like their their business strategy does not work. Uh, I've already expl explained to Ralph why that's going to fall apart. I, I think they have cash funding. Though. I mean, if they've already dropped yeah, 175000 Well, that's the difference. They, uh, they obviously um, have ties that they're not just going to get blacklisted from PayPal out of the blue one day. That's not going to happen. Well, I mean, no. will they be forced to take some people down sooner or later? Maybe, but it, it's not. They they have some know-how. You know if, what they, I mean? if they have PayPal by the end of the year, I will be shocked. Okay. 
Well, uh, we are uh, almost the end of the year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Doesn't matter. This happened. The switch over to to stream that me happened recently. All it takes is one particularly loud guy to to fucking Samson shit and bring down the. Roof. I, I I don't know. I mean, I, I I do agree with you that there could be pressure applied, but at the same time, I think part of the strategy we're seeing with a lot of uh, vocal people online is to segregate them. If they have a chance to isolate people away from a main website and there won't be as much of a fuss about it, I think maybe they'll look the other way long enough for that shit to get kind of set out to pasture and then later on come back and wipe it out. Yeah, I, I, I agree that they, they could use Stream Me as the dumping ground for everybody that they don't like and just leave them there for a while. But they also want they also want people to not have money. They don't just want to de deplatform you. They don't just want to quarantine you. They want to make it financial. Yeah, they want they want to make you financially destitute doing things that are wrong. Thing. Yeah, it's First not off, just good enough. I just think Streamy has enough connections. They're not just going to get thrown off within four weeks. Uh, that's, the only I, way I, I can I, imagine that that's right if Keemstar is involved. But more than like even I don't think Keemstar. Plus, what do is. they have to lose? I mean, their top streamer was like twelve people watching. Like, there's no. no they might not kick lose. you off, but you they've, might not be able to get paid unless they are. Up, they've jumped up what like forty three thousand spots in the global ranking since since we moved over. Like, and then it, when Jim jumps over, like there's nothing but growth potential here. See, now, this eventually, is, this is what I, I'm curious about is why don't these kind of sites uh, institute a pachinko style. Uh, Waveling with money, right? Uh, Pachinko, that's a Japanese they market, do. right? The the currency on stream.me is sparkles. Yeah, yeah, no, but what I'm saying is uh, you can still have PayPal involved. You just have yes. a secondary company trading in the fucking sparkles. Like, there's a, there's I, a, I can tell you. Wait, let, let me correct something. The sparkles are just one thing on there. Yeah, they also have direct donations that are just like super chats, except it goes through, through PayPal, basically. I, I, can't, uh, I have been through the motions for this for years. I can tell you exactly because we did this with the Kiwi Farms. We had a different website called local.us and it didn't have any direct association with the Kiwi Farms, but that didn't matter. What happened with local.us? is my special friend bought some fucking stolen credit cards off tour, rung up $14,000 in donations in okay, a single well, hour. Did Local.us have millions of dollars of financing behind it? I don't well, think that's, they did. That's, the difference then is that you have angel investing that's propping and it up. Capital, like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you say it was funded with stolen credit cards? Maybe that's <laughs> what got No, attention. I'm saying that somebody bought stolen credit cards, rung them up, and then after I uh, returned the money, it prompted a internal review and they decided to close the account and I haven't tried opening it since. So you can have people who will attack the site by buying stolen credit cards and triggering fraud investigations. And if they keep doing this, so they go after PayPal, they go after the directors in PayPal, they make, they, you know, target the, the family of the people in PayPal and fucking the crazy bastards out there will. And unless you have serious financial backing, and I, I don't know. I think they're pretty serious. Now, look, is it going to last forever? Probably not. I mean, I'm not fucking delusional, but I think that there's a good one to two years uh, and possibly longer if, if they can hold together and people actually start, you know, making the move. So, yeah, I'm pretty – I'll stand by that statement. And, they're, and also, the, their PayPal is not going anywhere within the next four weeks. I mean, I just think that's – ridiculous but i mean we'll see if 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 you end up being right i will come and i'll it say took, Josh was yeah. right. it, it, it took nothing like these these companies i'm i'm actually Josh, i'm just saying they're dealing with big money like i mean they got investors it's not a hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars is not big money i don't know how much money keemstar has but unless cutie pie is backing this it's not gonna like it's not big money it's a drop elon musk does not need stream.me he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't fucking care uh, there is nothing special about this website. Okay, we'll see. See, that's where you're wrong, because Elon's the investor. <laughs> <laughs> Te uh, Teslacast.tv, it comes streaming Nazi stuff on there. <laughs> Elon Musk doesn't give a shit. That'd be, no, he, that'd just, be. he smokes joints and hiles Hitler. He doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand why you're quite so black on it. I mean, will it eventually fold? Yeah, probably everything does besides YouTube. But, I mean, they, they welcomed me over. They actually recruited me to come over to the site. They've been letting us do whatever we want on our show. Uh, so I don't, I, don't, I don't really see a reason to be so, so like, down on it at this point. I'm pretty, I'm pretty psyched. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. Tom will reveal all. Well, no, I think that stream me is going to be stable for at least a couple of years. Uh, That's because it's not enough. high profile enough. There's no, there's no reason to go after you, Ethan, specifically at this point where you're in stream or stream as a platform, uh, because it is a small out of the way nook. Gab uh, was small and shitty, and look what happened to it. 
yeah, but okay, we you have to compare how Gab presents itself to the rest of the internet compared to Streamy. Streamy doesn't have a Twitter account where they're constantly shitting on yeah. Jack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, there was that. Uh, and Jack is an investor, isn't he? In fucking PayPal or one of the creditors or one of the payment processors that was fucking with Gab. Well, it isn't, all of them did. And it's, it's not even their option. Like, the thing is with Patreon. Here's the thing with Patreon. You have um, H, HN, when HN was getting big before Frederick sold it to uh, Jim Watkins, uh, he had a PayPal or a Patreon for, for HN. And that got taken down. And they said well, we can't. HN also had fucking child porn posted on their boards and stuff like that. I mean, that's not happening over at but, Street Me. I'm just saying, like, with this, after 8chan's thing got taken down, Frederick made another Patreon, specifically for his YouTube videos where he was talking about the Philippines. And they took that down, and they completely blackballed him. And I don't know, I mean, you can say that, but the decision to, to take somebody off Patreon isn't always Patreon's thing. That's because true. Patreon uses Stripe, and Stripe requires MasterCard and Visa card to make any of its money. So if MasterCard, Visa Card, Stripe, Patreon, any of these, these chains, these moving parts decide you can't have this person on your platform, you either comply or you lose all of your business. And the higher up the person is who fucking hates you, the more trouble they can cause financially. I don't disagree with you. I just think your time scale is off. That's, That's all. what I think, yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, I'm not it, saying it's not going to happen. It's almost assuredly going to happen at some point, but I don't think it's. If, some it, if it was, if it was, I mean, a I'm built still on thing. Patreon. Jim's still on Patreon. I mean, sure, it could end any day, but I, I don't think it's going to be like the a only thing missing problem. is is somebody particularly dedicated. Once you get that person who really, who maybe they're they're living in a boring ass fucking place in the middle of England, they don't have much to do because they canceled their favorite show and start going fucking psychotic, uh, they might start making. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, we're, we're talking about people that are killing sites. I mean, if you want to talk about why BitChute lost Stripe, if you want to talk about why hey, PayPal got fucked, same with Gab, same with the people getting pulled off Patreon. These weren't some spastic that had a crusade going on. This was a decision made at a high level within banks and credit cards that said, we want this done. Now, I can't speak as to why they particularly chose to do it, but they decided, fuck BitChute, fuck Gab, uh, fuck that guy's Patreon. We want this done, and Stripe and PayPal have to bend the knee because the guys they're talking to are bigger than them. I mean, I get that. I understand that. But it's it's not that just somebody gets upset and files something. There's something going on with the, the financial connection and the background that isn't really out there yet, and I can't really put my finger on it. I don't know if it's one person or a group of people or a group you know that's dedicated to this that you know works with all the different credit card companies and the financiers, but somebody... Involved in so, banking a little bit? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, there's something going on. I don't know if it's meant to kill smaller platforms, if there's some kind of uh, a, you know cozy relationship with certain bigger platforms. I don't know what's going on, but it is happening. But I don't think it's like some dude in England whose show got canceled, who's on a crusade. It's some executive in a boardroom I mean, and a fifty thousand dollars suit. It's a combination of the two because you you have you have a deliberate political movement, then you also have the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and there are a lot of squeaky wheels, and they just need to be pointed in the right direction. That's all it takes. Because pay, pay, PayPal is PayPal is the flakiest. It is the flakiest of the flakes because they have a special situation where they're not considering considered a, a financial processor or a bank. They're, they're just not. And they have to be extra special careful because if they fuck up really bad, the government's going to say you have to abide by banking regulations and they don't want that. Yeah. So PayPal, PayPal is, is, is dangerous, especially as the core, the core payment processor for your application. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a, I'm sorry, I, I'm kind of amazed. What's the uh, the the fact? Uh, Kim.com. Why hasn't he ever tried to do like his own version of PayPal? He's always writing tweets talking about revolution, but he because they they try to fucking put him in jail over m movie hosting and shit. I understand that, <laughs> but he's sitting on like six hundred and fifty million dollars. He could start uh, a company and do a payment processor. He could be a PayPal if he wanted to. He w he wants to make Kim Coin or some shit. I don't know. I don't have much faith in Kim.com because he seems like a bolivating fucktard most of the time <laughs> but like i've tried to contact him i've sent emails saying like look this shit's happening and i need help and i've sent emails to, to a lot of people i've never gotten any replies people with lots of money living com comfortable lives don't want to stick oh, in oh yeah no shit josh <laughs> hey i run a website that makes fun of retards can we talk about finance <laughs> Yeah, that's not a joke. Uh, well, like, yeah, but uh, welcome to the world of moot. Nobody fucking paid him any attention, and it was a, kind of a similar situation. Well, until the feds got involved and, and bankrolled that shit for years. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, bring back snacks. It's like you, you need a Jim Watkins. You need a sugar daddy to, to like keep the shit going because it, it costs fucking tons of money. I'm at a point where I can't put my site on any traditional uh, host. I have to do it pretty much myself, and that costs like a thousand dollars a month. It, it's not it's not easy, and it, it's it's going to keep getting worse. It's going to continually get worse, and more and more people like it. It's really cute. It's really cute watching Gab walk this fucking shit from that I was dealing with four four years ago. But the thing is with Gab, what's really inexcusable about Gab is they had millions of dollars. You had millions of dollars and years of time to prepare for the shit that you knew was going to fucking come. And he, that fucking fat retard, Andrew Torba, didn't do shit. He sat on his fat fucking ass making tweets about Jack for fucking years. And he didn't harden his infrastructure at all. And now he's got shit to show for it. Well, I think he was dealing with a delusion of, uh, you know, scope and size. Like, maybe he thought, I won't deal with something that, you know, a Josh at a Kiwi Farms would deal with because my site's bigger, it's got more funding, uh, it, it, it presents more of a risk publicity-wise. So- sounds like a lot of uh, arguments I've been hearing with uh, skepticism regarding my prognostication. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a common delusion to have when you're, when you're trying to do shit online. Well, no, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like Torba thought he was probably more insulated than he actually was. He he, he I guess he it, he believed the hype. Let's put it that way. Well, he had a lot of support from sites like Breitbart and Daily Caller and stuff, and he might have thought that he was yeah a little more insulated than he was, and he ended up getting his wigs split. I, I really think the Jones thing should be the the. Well, I I thought the uh, Andrew Anglin thing, like when when that went down with the Daily yeah. Stormer, yeah, I knew shit was that was a that turning point. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the beginning of that stupid poem. You know, first they came for the socialists or whatever. Yeah, he was the first guy. And then. Well, it was the people involved in it, the hosting companies, all of that, like giving speeches saying, well, it's just this one guy. I knew it wasn't just going to be that one guy. And you know what? uh, I remember you're talking specifically about Cloudflare. Cloudflare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cloudflare made this fucking big post about how I, I, this is the first time we've ever done it without a court order. And I, I, <laughs> I flicked the switch and it was like strangling the life out of an infant and it's all my power. And it made me question my, my role in the internet and the importance yeah. that I have. And then after, after that, they had issues with their domain name being seized. So they went to, to Tor and then Tor said something like, we stand against uh, Nazis. And it's like, you are fucking, there is so much child porn and horrible fucking shit on tour, and you motherfuckers come out and, and make this moralizing argument about fucking the Daily Stormer. Fuck off. Fuckers. We, yeah, I, can, I love that publicity statement. We at tour won't... <laughs> we, we at tour will accept fucking toddlers, but not fucking toddlers if you're a Nazi. Take that yeah. business. Well, they, they, they don't have any option in it. That's the the thing. And it's like to even come out and say it, say it. it's like, you know, you're, you're really missing the forest for the trees if you're hating against tour. Because this is how people in China have to connect to the internet. They want to get outside of their, their circle. So it's like you have, it's a double-edged sword. It always is with, with freedom. You have, you have the good and the bad. Yeah, it, it's a fuck situation. I, when it happened with England, it, it was kind of like a, 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 it was it was a sign bad things were coming, and then more and more sites started getting fucked with financially with hosting. Uh, you know, Gab had what was it? Microsoft Azure started fucking with them. You need to remove this two posts by this one guy, and if you don't do it, we're pulling the whole fucking site down. Well, before I even came on here, I, I my stream I scheduled for Wednesday. I, I titled it, and I've talked to Coach Redpill about this. My term. Internet juche, the idea of self-reliance on the internet. And it, it doesn't fucking work. It's impossible. There's always a contingent. There's always something you rely on. There's always something you need. That well, just, can't just build your own internet, Josh. What are you doing? <laughs> just build well, your whole don't internet. Don't worry. You're going to get your little eye internets very soon. But there's so many, like you have the DNS servers. The DNS servers can stop. Like even if you, if you go out of your way and you become your own top level domain, if you make your own, like if I made my thing called dot Libra or something, it was going to be my free speech thing. If I paid the hundred fifty thousand dollars to get re- recognized by ICANN, the U.S. company that Obama stole and gave to the United Nations, Christ. and I, I've paid that money, and now I'm on ICANN, the DNS servers like Google, everybody uses eight dot eight dot eight dot eight and one dot one dot one dot one, which is the cloud player and Google DNS servers. They can start refusing to resolve your domain name, and that cuts you off from most of the internet. So you. you 
there, there's an infinite number of things and increasingly exponentially expensive things that you can do to become more and more internet juche, more self-reliant, but you will never be completely free of, of yeah, dependent yeah, yeah, you're, you're, operations. You're right, you're right. So uh, th this is my thinking on, on this issue, that, that the smart thing is that, okay, the, the internet as a, as a playground of private companies should come to an end. And I think that we actually have somebody who could really help us out here, which is Matthew Whitaker. The um, the new acting attorney general who's going to be in there for, you know, at least another year because, you know, the Democrats are going to block any nominee uh, just on, on just for the sake of being assholes. And so Whitaker is is actually somebody who understands the online world, certainly better than Jeff Sessions did. And he could potentially be the guy to push through the notion of uh, um, not merely an Internet Bill of Rights, but sort of like make it clear to all the platforms that, hey, if you want to be considered uh, uh, um, just uh, platforms and, and free from liability, then you better start acting that way or we're going to consider you publishers and start suing you. you well, know? I agree with you on Whitaker, but he's not, they're not going to nominate him from the long term. As no, 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 but he's going to be de facto uh, but, the AG for a long time. Yeah, but time. they're not, but you can't block nominations anymore with 60 vote. Like it's just the up or down. 50, you know, 51 majority on nominations now because they got rid of the filibuster on on cabinet appointments, so they can they can put in whoever they want if the Republicans have enough votes, which they, I mean, they will. So, so who's who's next up for AG? I don't know. I just read a couple articles that said he's probably not going to get it long. I wish they would give him. I would like to see him become attorney general permanently. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he said some stuff about the Mueller investigation and stuff like that. So I don't think that they're going to give it to him permanently. But I would love to see that. Yeah, and but will he remain on staff? Yeah, I don't think they're going to get rid of him completely. What was he? He was chief of staff to Jeff Jeff Sessions. Yeah. So. Um, uh, I don't know. There's also a lawsuit that says uh, Rod Rosenstein should technically be the new attorney general. Because oh, fuck that. You guys, you guys have to. Yeah. It should be uh, Trey Gowdy. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you. I'm just saying they're suing because Matthew Whitaker wasn't confirmed by the Senate. He was just the chief of staff to Sessions. And Trump just said, well, you're you know, you're the attorney general anyway. Uh, but there's some type of attorney general secession act. Uh, so. Uh, they're trying to sue and say that Whitaker's actually illegal attorney general and it should be Rosenstein, not him. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in that. But Whitaker, yeah, I wouldn't I mean, no, Rosenstein is, Yes, Rosenstein has, has got to be fired. That fucker should be gone. I don't understand Trump why why he allows such people in his cabinet. But, I mean, what what the fuck? Yeah, Lewandowski and uh, I want to say David uh, Bossy have a new book out about Trump and the embedded enemies within his administration. Yeah. That he, that he basically let in himself, uh, and they've been fighting him every step. Now, of the see way. all these people in chat saying Gaudi is all talk, no walk. He's the dog that doesn't bite. You're giving him some teeth with that position. Now he can bite a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's not much he could do in the position he was in. I mean, I like Whitaker for one. He's a, he's an old school gamer gator like myself. So uh, I'll have to. Oh, that sounds <laughs> fucking awful. <Why> <laughs> I couldn't resist, but did you see that where, where he, he wrote an article about it? And there's, uh, I don't know if he wrote an article about it, but there was some tweet uh, where he's talking about his PC build and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty funny. So. Now I don't want him in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't okay. know if he was a food. What? Go ahead. He, was just, he was on the sidelines. He was one of those famous third party trolls, probably uh, part of it. Yeah. Uh, let me knock out some super chats here. Um, uh, Grand Moff Alexander, how long until we hear Chris Chan is dead, lads? Oh, hopefully soon. I don't know. You were going wait, to bat. What? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, you were going wait, to bat for him, right? Like what the fuck? And now he's yeah. That was a he, he, cats. We, I, I systematically <laughs> dismantled all these people taking advantage of him. I, I did. I, I fucking skewered like a dozen little fucking retard kids that were fucking with this guy. I got all these bad influences out of his life. I contacted the police to try and get him help, try to get these people who were <laughs> swindling him of thousands of dollars money and built up a nice little circle, filtered out people. So he wasn't getting his delusions uh, emboldened by people trying to get him to do shit. And he didn't want that. He, he he like he faded out of contact with everybody because people like people didn't want to talk to him about fictional universes. Wait, I, I just want to be clear on this. Are you telling me the dude that runs Kiwi Farms, you got conned by one of the biggest locals out there? I didn't, get conned. <laughs> I didn't lose anything for it. 
Well, well no, you've got, you got, you got, you got all the trolls off his back, and then he dumps your ass like a bad date. Oh, <laughs> the, the people who were fucking with him were funnier than Chris has been for years, which was uh, part of the, uh, the double edge for that. Um, but, uh, like, I gave him a chance and said, look, I'll help you out. And I had people who were willing to help him out, and he didn't want people who were not uh, playing pretend with him and with the dimensional shit. And eventually it's just like... Chris, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not going to talk to you about, I remember about me, me too. I remember getting in a huge argument about this, like, I don't know, five no, or six No, I still hold, if, if he were... And, then, and now you're just like, they said, when we're going to hear Chris Shan Dodd, and you said, hopefully soon. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck? That was out of nowhere. I still stand by everything that I said. I don't regret anything that I've done. I gave him a chance, and he didn't want it. He okay. wants to talk to people who will play pretend with uh, Mewtwo and Sonic 2 <laughs> and... <laughs> And it's just like, you know, I don't want any part of that. I'm not going to embolden your, your delusions, buddy. I'm sorry. I would, I would be willing to help you out if you were trying so to help you, yourself. Were you under the impression that his behavior was spurred on by those around him rather than... I mean, so you learned the hard way that like he is the source of his own fucking problems. He, he is, but in this particular... like I don't even know where, like how much these guys broke him to the point where he's willing to continue to use the things they got him to say as like a blanket. Um, I, like I don't, I don't know, uh, but I, I fucking well, what's, hated what's going on with like the convergence shit and the CPUs and the dead cats? Like, I don't is know. That, I haven't been talking to him. He used to send him? me, he used to be sending me text messages and stuff every day. We talked about you know inane shit, and uh, eventually he got more and more uh, less and less frequent with the messages he was sending to the point where we don't talk for weeks unless he wants something. Uh, I, I gotta more. say, man, like the videos he did with Barb disgust me. Like she's she's yeah. all withered up and she looks like she's completely there's dead eyes and those shit. were her idea. I don't buy that for a second. She she hands it up for the camera. No, nah, that that look you can't fake that look. That's the look of a woman. Oh no, yeah, Barb six. Barb has been an emotional manipulator her entire life. I I don't I don't disagree. I, I, and I I think she's been a horrible woman that's done terrible things and has used him quite a bit. But uh, I think she's gonna be dead probably by mid next year. Like probably, she is on her way out. Her her video the videos with her. Are her idea. I, I tell you, uh, you can disagree. Now, who told you that? Chris told you that, and Chris played your ass. I don't buy what he's <laughs> no, telling. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I, I gotta ask, who the fuck are these people? Sorry for being <laughs> they're, Chris, they're, Chris, they're, Chris. they're retards on the internet. Yeah, there you go. Okay, fine. And and what these pe these two people were a couple at one point, and and now she's. Like, <laughs> 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 well, yeah, that bad. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea what what you, who you're referring to. Chris is the OG lolcal. If you ever hear the word lolcal, Chris yeah. Chris was it. Chris was numero uno, and his shit's still going on. But he's in a more and more pathetic state every fucking year to the point where this vibrant, dumpy kind of sped guy who was making cartoons and 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 laughing about it and trying to do his comics his comics on the internet. And now he's dressed in drag. He's surviving almost entirely off of uh, McDonald's. He looks like uh, Benjamin Franklin with purple hair. <laughs> and his mother is on the verge of death. And before, like, they were both alive and stuff. And, but now she's, she's so nasty. She just, like, stays in her chair and, and has him go out and get fucking McDonald's for her and shit. And she's going to die in her own trash. Yeah, I, I, like, Coach, I don't know if you know the look I'm talking about. But, like, there's this look people get. Mm -hmm. Like when they're on death's door and she has it, it's like a dead eye look. Yeah. Where yeah, it's just it. vacant. They're vacant. Like it's the lights gone out. Yeah. And like yeah. she is, she is toast. Like the will to like, live is gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's if with her, it's over. So I, I don't, it's going to be the darkest saga for him. Cause once she's gone, I don't know. Yeah, what. I disagree. Is. Once she's dead, he's going to, he's going to be better off because she, she takes a lot of money from him. She, she takes like $950 out of the $1,300 a month he makes off of uh off of uh, welfare income for disability. And she spends it mostly on shit. Well, yeah, but he's not going to be living in that house. No, right? the house is gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you think he's going to be able to competently manage his bills? He's going to spend it all. He's going to take his tugboat and he's going to spend it on the newest PS4 games. And then he's going to go on the internet and say, buy my comics because I'm going to be homeless if I don't pay my fucking rent by the first or the well, third. The thing is, when Bar we had a plan in place for Barb dying. And we were legit going to fucking drive over there and manage it. <laughs> no, I, I swear to God, I am, a, I am a fucking bleeding heart. I was going to do this. I had other people who lived very nearby, people who had uh, contacts with... Uh, 
uh, assisted living facilities and shit. And we had a fucking battle plan. And it's just like over time, you, you lose you lose a lot of sympathy for him just because of how intentionally he he alienates people who don't want to play exactly to the to the T with what he wants to do. And what he wanted to do was further submerge himself in this fucking delusional bullshit that I can't stomach. <laughs> I want to see just, this. I'm picturing a reality show with you and some of your fucking mods living with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. I get it. It's 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 fucking hysterical, and people make jokes about that shit. But it's like I I, I just imagine myself with like one of those those green see through visors over a calculator, um, like planning the taxes and shit. Like <laughs> that's how. Like that's my mental image of this shit, and I, I'm just not gonna do it now because. I, I can't I can't deal with the fucking the Mewtwo shit. And whenever you talk to him, you never talk to him because whenever you talk to him, he sends a message back like, mm, "Yeah, I had I had a conversation with Mewtwo, and she's a she assures me that this is going to happen in the next week." Or I'll tell him something like new information that he should be aware of. And he's like, mm, "Magichan told me about that, and this just confirms that." And it's just like, eh, I'm not I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, but not sorry. I'm not I'm not playing this game. This sounds so depressing. This sounds like, oh, who are these people? Why are they entertaining? It, it, it is depressing to a point, but it's also pretty funny. At least it was at the start with Chris, because Chris, in the beginning, was mostly just Chris. But then you had people kind of coming in and directing what happened. I mean, you had the, you know, the PVCC stuff. What was it? Blue Spike, the one that got him to sh uh, shove stuff up his ass. <laughs> uh, you know, just yeah, like that, and you know, now I guess Josh is gonna fly out and hug him when his mom gets him. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't uh, know what the fuck is going on anymore. I'm, I'm Josh. I mean, people should know this. I'm a I'll, nice I'll, guy. I'll okay. Trip. Oh man, that's fucking funny. I mean, the... I don't, I don't mind helping people, but you gotta <laughs> please tell me you were gonna show up in a pickle suit and fucking dig his mother up or something. <laughs> <laughs> No, dude, I I have a lot of fucking sympathy for people. I'm I'm not I'm not out to get people. I I think that surprises a lot of people, but it's just it's just true. Like I, if I, 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 if somebody I, I, I hear this story, I always, it sounds horrifying. It sounds like like just horrifying, like something out of some perverse sideshow uh, freak show or whatever the hell, you know? Yeah, as time goes on, you realize more and more that he, like, his life after Barb dies, if he, it can go either way. Either he can get help and he can fix himself, which he might. If he's in a dire enough situation, he starts to, his, his bullshit goes away and he's willing to, to play game with people. But if he sticks to his guns, yeah, he's going to be like, uh, I did a stream on Tommy Tudor. He's going to be, he's going to be worse than Tommy Tudor. He's going to be homeless. He's going to be digging through the trash. Probably live streaming himself on his fucking iPhone, oh, digging God. through trash, oh, like God. in the McDonald's and shit. Like, yeah, it's it's like it's gonna be fucking dark. Jesus Christ, um, this is what Western civilization has arrived at. You wonder whether it's worth saving for crying out loud. Jesus well, Christ, I, I don't fucking wish that on him. And I even said it's like you know if somebody if somebody on my site who has a thread who is a perpetual fucking embarrassment can pull himself up by his bootstraps and and make a good life for himself. I, I hope everybody has that. I don't want people to be miserable. I, I, I don't. But, you know, with Chris, I don't see it. Because not only does he not know how to take care of himself, he doesn't know how to how to receive help either. And it, it's in contrast because uh, do you, Jim, do you remember Allison Rapp by any chance? Yeah, wasn't that, that was the one that faked being a girl mean, and their house burned down, right? Or are we talking about the no. Nintendo person? The, yeah, Nintendo. the Nintendo person. Yeah, 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 I remember that one, yeah. The, 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 pro, the, the person who had written pro-child pornography legalization. <laughs> yes, and, and she not only, and she said that we dox her and shit. She, on her fucking LinkedIn, she had a link to this thing about her and the legalization of child pornography in Japan. Well, while working at Nintendo and saying that she worked at Nintendo. And she well, was, was married. That. Wasn't her husband a cuck or something? There's some weird shit with yeah. sex stuff. With that. No, yeah. She she was More moonlighting cucks. as a prostitute. Her her prostitute name was Maria Mint. And <laughs> she was married to this guy uh, named Jake. And Jake, uh, can, he had on Tumblr, he had this service for uh, teaching men how to be okay in open relationships. So... He was he was talking about how hard it was for him to live in an open relationship, and he was willing to coach guys. He was basically Coach Blue Pill. He wanted to teach guys <laughs> how to be okay with letting their wife be a fucking prostitute. And he was openly admitting how fucking miserable he was and how hard this was and what a strain it was on him. And he came to the fucking forum, and we're like, bro, 
we're making fun of you. We're making fun of your wife. And we think she's a fat piece of shit. But you need to get out. You need to get the fuck out because you're going to be unhappy for the rest of your life if you don't get the fuck out of this marriage. And uh, he was like, okay, if you, like a week after, he never said thank you. He never said, I'll do that. But a week after, he was like, if, if you're going to be in an open relationship, I am too. And he started dating this other woman. And eventually they divorced and he's still living with her. So I like I want that for people. If you can help yourself, please fucking help yourself. That's the quote, folks. Josh wants to break your marriage up. Put it on a fucking <laughs> If you're married to a fat piece of shit who's literally a whore, I, I want to break your marriage up. You can do better. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. You can do better. I promise. Yeah, you can always do better. And that's the thing that most guys don't seem to understand, that there's always somebody better, hotter, tighter just around the corner. And, and they just... Uh, wrap themselves up to some fat pig and they just go down the tubes. I don't quite get it myself, but oh well. Uh, Super Chats, well, uh, Lord Rap of Rap Mountain. We should call the purge uh, YouTube Ragnarok. Good title. Kill Moose Kill says, stream.me is funded by Coachcoin. Ah, contraire, Kill Moose Kill. Jay Taylor, Jared Taylor, says, who is this group, Echo? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, the the uh, the beginning of the white nephto state or, or what? I don't know if I'm considered white, you know, being Hispanic and all. Because you all are white. I'm I'm like uh, the Latino cowboy. Come on, man. I, no, I, I, I feel bad. I'm a potato nigger. We're not white. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just made me laugh because it's like all the heroes of the alt right. You got fucking Coach Red Pill. He's from Chile. You've got fucking Jim. He's married to a Chinese woman. You got fucking <laughs> uh, Ralph. He's married to a Pakistani. All the all the alt right heroes are like. They're, they're well, either like they're, they're sticking their dick in I rice would... or or they're they're from South America. Enoch is. Jay... To, I'm not even alt right. Why do people think that I'm alt right? <laughs> You're an influencer, motherfucker. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, well, Mike Enoch is married. Wasn't he married to a Jewish woman or something? Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, nobody else. Nobody else wants to answer that one. Yes. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you. Yes. He was. Yeah, and, and uh, Richard Spencer, well, he got divorced, but, uh, or what happened there? What the, what the fuck happened there? I don't know. I hear all these rumors about Spencer, and I, I never, like, nobody ever backs him up. I've heard he's gay. I've heard he's dating a black woman, but nobody ever posts any proof of any of it. No, the, the last I heard was that uh, he'd been accused of beating up his wife, which is, like, you know, par for the course whenever you get Probably true. I'm just going to, I'll say that. I think he beat his fucking wife because he advocates it towards his fucking, his fan base. Like, oh, if you want to have a good, obedient woman, you got to beat her. Then his wife says, he beat me. He's like, I categorically deny it. Like, shut the fuck up, Richard Spencer. You fucking beat the shit out of her. But does he go like the, the, the Sean Connery route that, you know, a woman needs to like, <laughs> everyone to have? Okay, I feel, I feel like I missed something here. What, what are we talking about? Uh, Spencer beat his wife? He's when being sued happen? by his you wife. Didn't see that? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. missed it. Well, that was the allegation that he... Yeah. he is this another one? Yeah, but is this another one of those always oh, gay or oh, oh, always dating a black chick? Or is this no, actually... No, 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 this is no, uh, this allegations actual... in court. Yeah. 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 Wait, really? Yeah, yeah. divorce yeah. court. Yeah. He yeah. was on the kill stream, a, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago now. And we, we talked about it. Dick Masterson was on. It was the week before I got banned, actually, from YouTube. So end of October, probably. I, I don't know. I can't really picture him as a woman beater, though. Yeah, she said he. Well, you never know what's going on behind closed doors, and on the other hand, you know that women lie about that kind of stuff during divorce. Yeah, well, you know, to, to well, up the he money was... and up the up the possibility of getting the kids. You know, and like, all the people in chat are all offended and horrified. Oh, he's spreading secondhand smearing. It's like, well, no, you realize that he was like... dating a fucking a satanist. <laughs> like he was cheating on his wife with a fucking satanist. What are you defending what? him for? You? What? What's that all about? He was he was fucking around with this lib shit girl and she was posted on instagram when people found out like haha all the nazis found out that we're we're together i'm gonna start posting my church of satan stuff and it's like how the fuck do you people like defend him after this to be clear he denied all the all the allegations he's he's a fuckhead he's a liar this is a fucking uh i I just want to state for the record that he came on and denied those allegations okay wait wait just so i'm clear like i okay (laughs) just so i'm clear on this he's getting divorced right and at the time he's getting divorced, the wife comes out and says, he beats me. Right. And he's fucking a liberal Satanist. Yes. Yeah. And okay, people are think, saying... Wait, but the, do you think maybe the wife, to get a better settlement in the divorce, is saying he's a woman beater who fucks liberal Satanists? No, no, the, the liberal Satanist apparently came from the liberal Satanist that he's supposed to be banging. 
not from the wife. Apparently. Am I, is Josh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, the wife was not a liberal Satanist. That was the... Yeah, no, 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 the, but the, the wife was not the one saying that the girlfriend is a liberal Satanist. It was the... No, no, girl. that was just... That was her. That was her yeah. on her Instagram. Yeah. And people are saying, oh, oh, she, she's lying. She's lying to cause them problems. There are fucking pictures of them together in front of a gay flag painted on a brick wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Your fucking hero, Richard Spencer, is a fucking faggot. He beats women. He cheats on them. And he cheats on them with shitty liberal Satanists. Get the fuck over it. Find somebody else who's, well, was who's she, less was of a fucking retard. Looking? Was she decent looking? I don't remember. I just remember. Well, I, then, I, couldn't, then, no, I can't then, remember no. her face over the blinding colors of the LGBT flag behind them. No, if, if, she's, if she's good looking, well, you know, you got to make concessions. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, know, Josh. How do you know he wasn't red pilling her with his dick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that angry uh, right, alt right dick. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, look, I, I don't quite understand why we talk about uh, Richard Spencer because, I mean, I like him on a personal level. He's uh, he's a nice guy. He's always been nice to me. But, you know, I, I don't see that he has real political influence other than being the bugaboo of the left in so far as the mainstream media is concerned. I mean, does he have any real political power? Has he actually accomplished anything politically speaking? I don't see that. I don't see that. Maybe I'm blind or I, I, I'm not looking in the right direction. But what has he accomplished uh, and I don't mean this in in in, in a way of like uh, raising anybody's hackles, but you know what the fuck is the point of Richard Spencer except being the poster boy for Lib saying yeah there there's the alt right. What does he do? It's a genuine question. Nothing. He makes his fucking money off his trust fund, and he he goes around and he says I'm the leader of the alt right. Nobody knew who the fuck he was until alt right became a turn in the mid, the mid 2016s. He ran his shitty little site, and nobody gave a fuck about him. Now he walks around with this this bullshit uh, close cut haircut that the Asians all wear, and he's calling himself you like really the leader. You really don't like Spencer, do you? I'm worse this. I didn't realize that you uh, had this like beef. Or... He, he's just a faggot. <laughs> he's just a faggot. He doesn't. He does. If he were to have like, there are people on the far right who I disagree with on some issues, who are extremely far right, who advocate for a lot of the same things Spencer does, but they do shit to get things done. And they're worth looking up to. They're worth talking to. They're worth supporting. Richard Spencer is a is a is just a drain. He's a drain on everything that these people say that they they believe in. Wait, I'm curious. Who do you look up to on the uh, on the right? Then he I'm looks up saying. to me. What do you not mean saying. you're not saying? I'm not saying. <laughs> I I plead the fifth, officer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Oh, well, and, well yeah, okay, somebody, somebody, Jim, I'll, I'll flip the question at you. Who do you admire on the on the right? I don't admire anybody on the internet. No, not not on the internet. Like on the right. Well, tell me a political leader that's not either on the internet or a faggot from Washington that I would admire. I like Gaudi. There you go. I like Gaudi. I find Gaudi entertaining. I like watching people. Who was a little uh, Mexican dude that he would always go? Chavitz, was it? What the fuck was his name? Yeah, Jason Chavitz uh, from Utah. Dude, have you ever watched yeah. those two when they're in a yeah. session together? I don't even really care if they accomplish anything, but they'll just shit talk people as they're sitting there. Like, they just don't fucking care about the time. That I find entertaining. I, I don't have a lot of faith. And listen to it, too, because I, it's Congress, yeah. I, I don't have a lot of faith in political leaders. I have uh, faith in people... I guess acting as a group for political motivations, but not uh, for the people that necessarily want to head those groups. If you put your faith in a politician, you're probably retarded anyway. <laughs> yeah, I put my yeah. faith in Sargon. That's my hero <laughs> on the far right. Uh, and that's not a deflection. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I mean, no, yeah, I, I, I'm chewing what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, don't, I have more faith in people than the leaders of those people. Let's put it that way. I well, like I, the idea I, I, of an anonymous horde, which kind of makes me sad that the internet's going the way it is because that's going to be a thing of the past. Oh, yeah, you know what? Actually, you know what? Let me let me recheck that. I will give you a name. You want somebody on the right that I, I sure. look up to that I, that if they were to run for president, I would vote for them. Well, sure. Just just on the premise of one speech and interaction that I saw them have. If Tucker Carlson yes ran for president, I would vote for him. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Uh, when I saw him sit down with Ben Shapiro and they were having a discussion, and he was bringing up uh, the you know uh, what it, what's your thoughts on uh, automation? What's your thoughts on you know autonomous driving cars? On the future factory workers? 
Like, what do you think on that? He was trying to basically bait him into saying something anti-capitalist. Yeah. Yeah, I, right. And I, I like that Tucker shoved it right down his fucking throat and said, listen, uh, it's not a fucking religion. There's no Nicene Creed that I have to take for this shit. There's some stuff I like, some stuff I don't. Yeah. And he just hammered him on, you know, the yeah. concept of I want to try to protect America's working class and the middle class. Like, it, it amazes me that somebody like Tucker Carlson, who was the ass end of a joke for Jon Stewart. Yes. Right. That, yeah. Like, when he came back, and uh, all I could think of was Crossfire yeah. and how Jon Stewart fucking mauled him like a grizzly bear on television. And now he's like, actually put together. It's unbelievable. He needed it. That's why bullying works. Yeah. The bullying so, does work. Yeah, Tucker is well, a great example of that. Yeah. It, my thinking, actually, with Benway, we talked about it on an, on an episode recently on the on the podcast, is that, see, Tucker Carlson, it, it seems that, that uh, for years he was like the, the, the approved conservative for the liberal media. But the motherfucker seems to have gotten really red pilled. And Benway was of the opinion that it's when he went from bow ties to straight ties that that was sort of like more or less when it happened. When, when Tucker Carlson's all of a sudden started thinking to himself, this is real and this matters. And, and started taking it really seriously. I agree. Well, Carlson's I agree. one of the, yeah, he's one of the only people I've really heard address my concerns. And my concerns are, what are you going to do with 9 to 10 million people who don't have a fucking job in 10 years? Yeah. What are you going to do with all the truckers and all the fast food workers and all the assholes at gas stations and grocery stores? Because they're not going to go into another fucking job. All the you know, illegal immigrants have the fucking manual labor shit. You've given machines all the working class shit. They're not going to go into the tax sector. They don't have a fucking degree for that. Yeah. So when you've got 10 million people, and he put it well, he said that's not just 10 million single people, that's 10 million families. Yeah. The, the, the drain on society that's going to have, because now they're not paying taxes, they're taking tax money to survive. So yeah. it's a twofer. You're getting hit twice yeah. for 10 million fucking families, and nobody's paying attention to that. Well, you know and what happens I, when that happens, right? What's that? That's when civil war is going to happen. Well, yeah, you fuck with the economy and the money and jobs. <laughs> yes, you always especially. Have no, it's not just that because you look at Ukraine and Ukraine's always in a tenuous situation because you have a country split right down the middle. You got the Ukrainian top half, you got the uh, Russian southern half, and it's always tenuous. You look at, like I mentioned, with Botswana and Syria and the mandates where you have mixed cultures, mixed languages, mixed religions working together. You now have a situation where a once almost entirely white almost entirely English speaking country is now split right down the fucking middle where you have the Spanish speaking Southern half and you have the English speaking white top half. And the moment economic situations become dangerous and nobody has a job, all these fucking guns we have in this country are going to be pointing at each other. And yeah. we're going to see a massive unending serious style, knock down, drag out, decapitating fucking lighting people in fire civil war that might not end for decades. I agree, but I don't think it's going to be like um, I used to think that it could be like the Spanish Civil War, the, you know, like like some something like uh, house to house, street to street kind of situation where everybody's just like fighting each other, uh, but in very intensely. But I actually don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be uh, like a prolonged, drawn out kind of thing with the elites trying to maintain some semblance of order, but like sporadic militia groups and Antifa groups sort of like clashing. You know, it's so, so like a protracted kind of Lebanon type situation. You, you see what I'm saying? That's that's my honest to God think. I do believe that the United States is going towards a civil war. And, and I think that it's it's just inevitable. And I think it's going to be triggered by an economic downturn. And an economic downturn is is in the cards because of the way the American economy is structured, because if basically of all these people who are going to be redundant with nothing to do. And, and poor and broke and, and with no opportunities and nothing. Well, think of the, the overhead, too. I mean, not only, you know, if you put aside even the uh, the job argument with the 10 million families, right? Right. You're looking at baby boomers who are going to be going into their 60s and 70s. Yeah. We're going to need increased medical care, and they're going to be more of a burden on their families. They add back in. So, I mean, like, it, it's fucking crazy to consider. You put 10 million people out of work. And then on top of that, they don't just have a normal family to support. Now they've got grandpa and grandma who are sick and need fucking care. Yep. And you try to go to a hospice or, you know, that kind of thing. That's going to bankrupt anybody. Like, it's just a really bad situation coming up. That's why I like Carlson, because he kind of seems to tune into that. And he kind of seems to get that that's a big fucking issue that's 10 to 20 years down the road. Yes. And, is. you know, as far as <clears throat> what's going to happen when the economy goes to up and something bad like that happens, people will side with whoever the fuck can promise them a job. That's yes. going to be your winner of your future civil war. The that's guy right. that says, 
I will put you to fucking work and you can feed your family. That, that's why yeah. Trump won. And that's why he'll win again in the, the election because you have so many people working right now and they're thankful for it. The, the, Jim, the only thing I disagree with is your time window. You say 10 to 20 years. I think it's going to be more like five to 10 years. I think that we're a lot closer to a brink than we sort of like realize. Well, I think it'll be phased. I mean, I, I think we're seeing service industry stuff. Um, we're seeing it with supermarkets. We're seeing it with yeah. fast food. Mm -hmm. I think once it gets to truck drivers, mm -hmm. that's going to be a critical tipping point. And I think that they're going to keep pushing it. And yeah. it's just going to be, you know, replace more and more and more people. And that's, you know, I, I, yeah, I, maybe 10 to 20 years is a bit of a, an overstatement. But I, I think everybody can kind of sense that it's not looking good. And, you know, Carlson raised another good point, too, when he talked about, you know, because uh, Shapiro's counter to that was, well, we survived the Industrial Revolution, where we went from agrarian to, mm -hmm. you know, industry. Uh, and he said, well, no, I mean, look at um, the amount of families that got fucked up by that. And on top of that, you're talking about something that took place over a span, of, uh, a longer span of time with this. It's just going to hit like fast. a fucking hammer. Yeah, it's too yeah. fast. It's going to, it's going to, the, the, the breaking point is going to, it looks like people are saying probably after 20 years, it's going to look closer and closer, the closer you get to it. Like it's, it's going to be exponential how, how. Uh, bad things you get because the more shit's eliminated, the more that censorship happens, the more people are put out of work for political reasons, the more the mob mentality grows. Like we haven't even mentioned that, that people are fucking hysterical. They are in a, a zombie mob mentality right now going after, you know, their fellow Americans. I mean, it's, it's going to, it looks far away right now, but it's going to look closer every year. Well, what has and, increased the polarization is social media and the siloing of uh, mm. differing opinions. Like, you don't have to hear uh, the other side unless it's, the, you know, you want to rail against them. You're, you're not really exposed uh, to different opinions because that's just how everybody's become socialized online now, where the only time you, you hear out the other side is when you're railing against them. Uh, and there's just, I don't know, just the level of hatred for people of different political persuasions now is kind of off the charts. So. Yeah, or if you as disagree. Long as, been, as long as I've been alive, anyway. Well, it, it ties just a disagreement. You're a political it, enemy it, it, if you disagree. And, and, and Josh, yeah. well, we were talking before about the furries and the fact that before in the olden days, you know, some, some guy who wanted to fuck cows or whatever the fuck, his town thought that he was nuts and he sort of like tamped that shit down. But now with the online world, he can reach out and find other furries or other crazies like himself, right? Same with politics, because before you had to interact with other people who had radically, potentially radically different political beliefs. And since you had to interact with them, your own radicalization was tamped down because of the necessity of having to interact. But now, since we're all like atomized and we're reaching over one another to find our, you know, our, our, our colleagues and patriots, our, our, our friends, our ideo ideological uh, counterparts uh, online, then we can afford to be as extreme as we want to be. I mean, nobody serious would have been a socialist 20 years ago. Now there are a bunch of socialists because they can reach out to one another and, and feed into their insanity. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's what happened with trannies. It's like yeah. you're, you're not, my thing with the trannies are you have autistics, right? They're the ones most susceptible <laughs> to becoming uh, transgender. And they're socially inept, they go online, they find each other. And they're like, oh, you don't feel like a man because you're not alpha. You're not out there. You don't have the confidence. You don't feel like you can support a family. Well, you know, you might you might be trans. Have you considered, mm -hmm. you know, wearing a dress? And then they'll they'll c comfort each other like, wow, you look great in that dress. You really passed. You're, you're doing a great job. When are you going to start taking hormones? And then after that, you hit a certain threshold where you can't renege on it. You can't say, oh, this has been a horrible mistake. I, I hate myself even more now. You just got to continue to find more and more delusional people to make you feel good. And it's it's not just trannies. It's a lot of shit. A lot of shit's like that. The zoo Seda shit is just like that. And there's a lot of these, I'm going to call them cysts. There's social cysts that are just waiting to fucking pop. And it's going to be it's going to be gross. Well, my, my thinking is that we're headed towards a civil war for all these reasons. This, this atomization on the one hand of the, of the people and on the other hand, this coalescing, the siloing, as you were calling it, this coalescing of of homogenous beliefs that are radical. They're too radical, really, for any kind of society to be able to hold them all in. And so, yeah, I think that it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to explode. And it's going to be like the American Civil War, that the American Civil War was between centralization and decentralization, but it was post hoc said to be about slavery, to give it some sort of moral justification. I think that the same thing is going to be happening. And I think the moral justification is going to be, on the one hand, immigration, and hear me out, this is going to sound a little bit nuts, but I think on our side, the moral justification will be abortion. 
uh, I know it sounds a little bit I weird. I heard you say that before, Coach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think that a lot of people are going are gonna to raise that up as a banner because the, the pro-choice or pro-abortion side, whatever you want to call it, um, it'll be easy. They, they are. They tend to be all of one stripe politically, and it'll be easy for those opposed to that stripe to pick up the abortion banner, and run with it, and 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 cudgel and 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 unify behind that banner. The only way I see that working, because I think people my age are too nihilistic to put too much value into a fetus. The only way I see that working is if. Um, if it becomes a race issue and people are like, you know, we need to get rid of abortion because the, the white race is dying. I can see people. I, I think I think you guys are putting too high an ideal on what the dispute's going to be. Again, I think if it reaches the point of a civil war and it's a bad economic downturn and people are out of jobs, it's going to be short term necessity that drives people to this feud. I'm not doubting that. And, I'm not doubting and that. And it, it will be whatever side has the most attractive offer of fixing that is going to be the side that has the best chance of winning. Yes. The one it's going to be an authoritarian who has right, those well, opinions. And the, the one interesting you know, side note to that, when you're talking about how the internet helps to kind of facilitate these extreme views and we see um, them kind of sanitizing it of one political viewpoint to you know, bolster up the other one. Yeah. Um, it's an Achilles heel that they're presenting. What do you think is going to happen if in 20 years a civil war breaks out and it's nothing but an internet that's basically used by and promoting leftist values? Ew. And this is where they're getting their fuel for their beliefs. Well, you hit the infrastructure. You take out the fucking oh, yeah. internet. You take down the power grid. Now what are these faggots going to do to fucking constantly get that dopamine hit that they're in the right? It's going to be taken from them. Well, with the uh, the, the first civil war, you had issues where entire cultures relied on, on the slaves and the agriculture there. And so it was pretty much a, a regional thing. But the current civil war that's coming up is you have sprinklings of people of both ideologies everywhere in the country. There's, there is some regionalization, but... Uh, especially with the cities, but the cities are the most vulnerable. All it takes is one crazy fucking uh, uh, screw your optics guy in L.A. to detonate something that brings down serious uh, infrastructure for everybody in a city of millions of people. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of domestic terrorism, a lot of uh, sharing things over uh, like a, a makeshift jury rig kind of Internet that is completely separate little eye internet just between radicals but you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of that shit and i do think it's gonna take some catastrophic event like a financial collapse or some type of well yeah they, it, has to, it has to have a huge catalyst yeah. a lot of people are apathetic they might read politics they might talk shit online but as far as like actually going out and picking up a gun or participating in the civil war i think it's gonna take some like uh catalyzing event economic downturn is the obvious answer it could be something else but the, the main like the other, only other Not thing just i can downturn, think of though, i think like a shock collapse honestly oh Something. yeah but sure. ralph i mean look at the amount the average amount that the american household owes in credit card debt it's like fifteen thousand. Oh, yeah. yeah so you're living paycheck to paycheck you've already got fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in debt you lose your fucking job nobody gives a shit you try to go online your fucking sense of there from bitching about it and this is happening to everybody in your fucking neighborhood. Now they come to take your fucking house away. Now they throw your ass into the street from your fucking apartment. Your kids are hungry. Grandma and grandpa are fucking sick. You can't afford the medicine. You're going to have millions of fucking pissed off people that have no outlet to vent that frustration, who feel like they have no voice to be heard by any representative. The media doesn't give a shit about them. Society doesn't give a shit about them. When you get a lot of fucking angry, unemployed people who have no money and who are getting shit on by society... You're dealing with 1930s Germany. Yeah, well, exactly. Earth, That's what I was going to say. Right it yeah. sounds like the, Talk the about automation, so. and you already hit on this already. But uh, I know some people see that and they laugh and they're like, "Oh, yeah, great." You know, put the McDonald's workers, you know, out of a job and stuff like that. But the more that takes hold, the more people are put out of work, and you have yeah. all these low-skilled people with nothing else to do besides go out and you know. Well, kill also, them. what's really interesting is that uh, this is kind of obscure, but you know, the U.S. military actually did a study on a potential civil war in the United States. And the, because sure. most civil wars, it, it's because the, the military uh, either gets split or, or some competing faction, military faction arises. And well, the, the issue because the, the U.S. military concluded that um, th that the um, the U.S. military concluded that it would be split internally if there is a civil war and that it would course. never capture any part of America if that part decided that it wanted to break away from the, um, if that, a large enough part wanted to break away from the, the, um, 
from the rest of the republic or I, wanted to i know people yeah. People in the military and they say they're mostly leaning towards trump but they you know there's people who side the other way so yeah, yeah exactly. the military the idea that the military is going to come in and just crush people by dropping bombs on the entire it's not going to fucking happen because yeah. you're going to have higher ups who disagree you're going to have divisions saying well, we'll fucking kill you if you do that yeah that's not going to happen and the comparison to the weimar germany is apt because you're describing you have all these people with no outlet well god wouldn't it be great if the politicians came to some place where people can convene like a, a beer hall and everybody can kick around some ideas on how to fix this fucking problem? Like, yeah, you're going to you're going to get some nasty shit. And in terms of a shock issue that brings people to the brink of a civil war, even if it is like, let's say Trump's current financial bubble pops. But then on top of that, the 2020 election comes around and Trump wins some huge margin of votes. But then something happens and they take it from him. That that would cause instant fucking chaos yeah i don't if they're ballsy enough to do it it would be people politicians would be getting fucking gutted the next day yeah 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 uh by the way let me do a some quick uh live um super chats richard dempsey says epic stream lineup thanks coach for putting this together i wish i could say i put it together but i didn't it just sort of like happened uh so thank you very much though for the compliment jan dewitt just look at the protests in france now it looks like the collapse of the welfare state Yes, it does. You guys have been following that shit? It's, uh, I have been, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's basically, a, it's all sectors of the uh, political uh, environment over there, too. They're trying to blame it on Le Pen, but it's not just nationalists. It's leftists and, and you know, yeah. avowed socialists all uniting together to pretty much, you know, try to get Macron out of there. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, because Macron is the ultimate centrist, if you think about it. And and yeah. so it's sort of like looking at that, because I think that that's the thing that concerns me the most, the, the polarization, that the center is getting squashed out. And it's just a barbell, you know, the left and right and, and everybody in between is like a no man's land. Let me just finish up these super chats real quick. Uh, Penty says, water molecules move apart as they boil. A society atomizes as it collapses. Well said. Very well said. Old angry normie. Six hour stream has little of everything. Take my two dollars. Thank you, old angry normie. Trump Nation, we had a civil war because of the last major rift that developed between agrarian and industrial states. Slavery was the old way that had to be purged. Uh, thank you very much, Trump Nation. Um, yeah, what do you, Ethan, what, what's, what's up with the, why don't you talk about the, the French situation? Because there have been protests. I haven't been following it that closely, but I know that it's sort of like falling apart over there. Are you talking well, about they, the yellow vest thing? That's what you guys are referring to, right? The what? I'm sorry. The yellow vest protests in France, right? What are we talking about? I'm sorry. I I, I thought you were talking about the riots. Yeah, there's been riots going on in France for like the past I don't know three or four days. Uh, yeah, yellow vest. Yeah, that's what they call it, yellow vest protests. They're trying to blame it on Le Pen, How? Uh, but they've been. Uh, that's just what they're doing. Like the official government line is blaming it on Le Pen, even though it's clearly not just nationalists out there. Um, I mean, there are National Front or whatever they call themselves now. I forgot. They might have changed their name, but um, there clearly are, you know, those types out there. But it's mostly just it's like a just a general, you know, feeling of being fed up with the Macron government and just French society in general. So um, yeah, that was and ga fast. gas prices is a big part of it, too, because gas over there, I mean, it's, it's not like it is here. It's what I don't even know, 10, 12 dollars a gallon, probably more than that. Um, so yeah, and he also he's you know he kind of pissed off the left too when he came in fo uh, forced in some uh, some changes to the law as far as unions go and worker protections go there. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he's pretty much a corporatist stooge, basically uh, the ultimate, like you said, centrist that kind of got in there. It's always a good uh, idea to, to piss off the French <laughs> as a as a leader historically. Well, the nationalists worse. already hated him, so he did that, forced that through, and then he's just had a really bad run this whole entire year basically like when when he first came in his approval ratings were sky high uh, and they've steadily gone down uh and he's focused a lot on international affairs and uh you know big ticket stuff as far as foreign policy goes uh while kind of neglecting the the french national scene besides forcing through those worker reforms like i talked about but uh yeah it's it's just well pretty much everybody's fed up with him over there i think his approvals are like in the like 20s or high teens something That's like that bad. so yeah it's it's definitely uh it's definitely did, dangerous did you all see there. those gay pictures of him with those two black guys i didn't i don't <laughs> think <I saw> that. <laughs> <laughs> oh that was pretty funny yeah you missed raising it. coach raising yeah uh there were these uh this picture of macron that he's like uh like hanging out with these two black guys shirtless black guys 
and one of the black guys is like flipping the bird at the cameraman. I'm, I'm telling you. I, mean, I, I, I kid you. I kid you not. I, I entered the search term or search term Macron gay pick black guys, and it popped up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Daily Mail fucking tagged is that or what, but I see what you're talking about. I mean, just so fucking gay, man. I mean, I'd be embarrassed if that were the leader of my country. To tell you the truth, it'd be like Jesus what Christ, how fucking, far we've uh, from De Gaulle to the this? guy from Canada. What? Oh, Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah, Trudeau is a yeah. fucking joke. That guy's a fucking clown. Oh, I, I I love watching the train wreck that is Trudeau. Did you see when he was in the wheel? He gets in a wheelchair, right? To, I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he buys the most expensive fucking wheelchair. It's like 20 grand or some shit. And he's trying to relate to people that are in wheelchairs while they're driving around in like $10 shitters. <laughs> He's such a cut. He's Wait, such a yeah. is that <laughs> he? <laughs> he does that every time he meets a marginalized group in some way, and he dresses up like them, like he's doing fucking blackface. <laughs> <laughs> like he went to India and he put on all the shows. Yeah, yeah. Doing the tribal dance or whatever. Yeah. Like, look at how Trump does it. He just walks up and fucking shakes their hand like a normal goddamn person. He's not. He's not running around on the the iron buffalo trying to make friends. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a twenty three thousand dollar wheelchair. Somebody said in chat, and he's in it for like a day. What a fucking cunt. <laughs> I mean, talk about cultural appropriation. If I were like paraplegic, I would be offended by that shit. I, I would find it just, just disrespectful. If, if, oh, man. It's just pathetic. But, well, how on earth? Well, we don't have any Canadians to explain the, the, the Trudeau situation because it just seems absurd to me. It's just pathetic. And, and when he was like shitting on that woman from Quebec, do you guys see that, right? where this woman, he was giving some speech in French, and some uh, Quebecois woman is saying, how are we going to pay for these migrants? And he just calls her a racist. Where he called her a racist, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christ, man. Basically, <laughs> shut up, you old racist bitch. Yeah, that's pretty much what he, what he told her. Well, didn't, yeah, security chased her off after that, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they were pretty fucking nasty about it. And, and somebody had the wit to, I don't know if they streamed it or just filmed it and uploaded it later. But yeah, the guys were clearly like twisting her arm, literally twisting her arm. And she's some old lady. She looked like everybody's mother, you know, some aunt or some shit. You know, she looked perfectly normal, not any kind of like, uh, you know, a, a politically minded uh, a middle-aged woman. No, she looked like just a housewife or just, you know, a, a normal middle-class woman asking something perfectly legitimate from her elected leader. And, uh, you know, the, the security services uh, drag her away. And that, uh, to me, seems so, it, it was like, uh, not epiphanic per se, but it was sort of like this classic issue of like the, the leadership classes in the Western democracy uh, uh, just wanting only shiny, happy people and shiny, happy crowds. And whenever anything is out of line, they just whisk them away. And I just find it so despicable that the, the elites in the Western democracies have become so out of touch. I want to see them be crushed just because of that arrogance, to tell you the truth. Well, I, I have to say, at least in Trudeau's case, I, I am glad he is an elected official for Canada because he, <laughs> he is the easiest person to make fake quotes and fake videos for. And you can make them so outrageous, but people will still believe them. When that, what was the big fire that went on up there? You know the one I'm talking about where it just it was a... Yeah, it was a huge fucking fire that happened up in Canada. Uh, they were going to fly in firefighters from around the world. Okay, I missed it. So, what happened? I vaguely remember it, but uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, this was in September, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm looking yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, um, I made a fake video clip of CNN reporting the news with the fires taking place, and it had Trudeau at the UN giving a speech about feminism while people are burning to death in the upper left-hand smaller fucking video thing. Yeah. And I put it up on Twitter, and people were like, is that really fucking him? Did he really go <laughs> talk about feminism while people are dying in these fucking... And like it's, but it's that believable. Oh. Like he's that much of a cunt. People believe it. I also put up one where it's him like uh, making like a, a face and acting like it's really hot. And the quote was, "I don't know what's worse, uh, our AC going out or living in a world without feminism." <laughs> and people really believe that he actually tweeted that out because he's that much of a cunt that that would be something he would do. I thought you were gonna say if we put out the fire, it wins. <laughs> 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 That, that quote's entirely fictional, but that that's like that's canon. It might as well be true. If there's a history book that touches on it, it'll it'll say it's true. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was Fort uh, McMurray. Is that it? Fort McMurray was that? I can't, I can't remember. It was a really fucking big fire, though. Yeah. No. Yeah, that no, was a, those apocryphal sayings. Yeah, they stick with you forever. I'm sorry. You're saying? No, I was gonna say that was in 2016. I thought it was something more recent, but oh yeah. no, no, no. This this was a while okay. ago. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. 
I, I, I used to post that video clip all the time, and people were like, wow, he is such a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> If, if, if think of it uh, of the fact that um, the, that somebody would would get to a point reputationally that people would believe such absurdity as that. I mean, you, you must have fucking just fallen far. Uh, but here's the thing I want to ask, and and this is a genuine question: Do you think that the left actually believes that Trump is some sort of fascist, or or they're just saying that because he's never done anything remotely? Uh, racist or anti-Semitic or fascist? Oh, or no, a- absolutely. They're indoctrinated <laughs> enough to the point that, yeah, they really believe the the programming. Yeah. A yeah, lot was, of them definitely believe it. Now, the was, ones up top may be just doing it, you know, to roll up the base, but I feel like a lot of them even believe it, too. So Yeah, I was wondering if that was, like, a, a rhetorical question. Because, yeah, absolutely. They totally fuck, They believe he's the second coming of Hitler. Literally. I, I, I just find that so bizarre. I mean, they, that they don't even recognize who he is. I mean, because basically, as a conservative, I look at him askance because I recognize what he is. He's a New York Democrat. That's what he is, you know, at best, oh, yeah. a Rockefeller Republican, at best, right? He, he doesn't, he, he's pro-abortion, you know, he's, he's pro uh, all kinds of uh, subsidies and shit like that. I mean, he's a New York uh, real estate guy. Of course, he's going to be in favor of subsidies and, and, and shit, you know, and I don't understand why they actually believe that he's the, you know, uh, uh, Hitler or shit. I, I just don't quite get it. Hey, can you play a video for me? I, I would like everybody to watch this video together. Sure. I'm going to post it in the messages. Uh, just say one. It's one of my favorite things of all time. It came from the 2016 election. Okay, well, let me just... Uh... Uh, loading up. Hang on. Let me just figure this... <laughs> <laughs> title already. All right. This is going to be hard. <laughs> this is going to be hard. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Thoughts and prayers, chat. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know what version of OBS you're using, but you should be able to or desktop capture no, and then yeah, show yeah, I'm, the... I'm trying to. Oh. <laughs> oh, play from the play from the start. I, I can't. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Just right click interact and then set it back to the start. I, I I think I'm like at the memory at the limit of the memory of my computer. I'm oh. I'm on a shitty laptop. Hang on, no, I can't do it. Uh, rest in peace. I'll just post it in chat, and everybody can look at it at their leisure. Um, this oh, is yeah. one of the best things that came out of the election. It, it, it's it unironically stirs the fucking spirit watching it. <laughs> I don't know what they were going for when they put this shit together, but it uh, is unironically just amazing. I, I can't I can't run it. So, uh, you know what you know what be a better series of videos to show if you really want to capture uh, <laughs> the liberal side of things. Sure. Have you ever have you ever heard of fuck hate? No. Yes. It's a campaign that's run by a guy, and I'm not making this up, whose legal name is Sissy Fag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you can look it up. He changed his name legally to Sissy Faggot. Um, and it has the most obnoxious fucking videos about immigration and gay rights, and especially about Trump. Uh, it's FCKH8, if you want to look up the channel. He actually I- typed in sissy fag into Google, and Luke Montgomery came up. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's his yeah. fucking head. It's a guy. <laughs> yeah. like, you, can you put it on the side chat? I'll try to put it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring this guy's picture up. He's standing next to, uh, what's her name from Glee? I forgot the old bitch's name, but. Oh, there's his uh, Wikipedia right there. Uh, and this should be their uh, their YouTube channel. I'm trying to remember where. I think I'm on, like, the Democrat mailing list for some reason. I think I was on Bernie Sanders' mailing list just to see what the mailing list was. And then after he resigned, he sold his mailing list to Hillary Clinton. 
And then somehow I ended up on a bunch of other like Democratic mailing lists. And I, I still get shit from from fuck hate. And I get shit from Hillary Clinton and from Bernie Sanders and shit. And it's just like I didn't consent to this. Oh, hey, actually, somebody in chat had a good idea. Uh, if you want to show videos and stuff, um, you, Ralph, you, you can you screen share through Google Hangouts because you could play the video on your uh, end. I should be able to. I have about 500 tabs. Of them, but let me see if I could uh, screen. So which one are we trying to play? Uh, if you want to go to check the fuck hate link, if you just want to pick one, okay. it, it right. gives any of these fucking horrible videos would give you a fucking good idea. Okay, let me see. Sissy fag. <laughs> I know it's the he, look, look, it's the name he went with. <laughs> the naked truth about sexism. Uh, oh, uh, try kids versus racism. Five fucked up facts about okay. the fucked up. There you go. That's right. that captures oh, the election. Oh Jesus Christ! I know that fuck. That's where I fucking know it from. That video. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can do this. He also has one about uh, immigration, where he's got this like little brown boy that just constantly has got the world's worst braces. And he constantly just screams fuck about Trump over and over and over again. It's the same formula. It's the same. Every one of his videos, every account is the same fucking thing. And then they sell merchandise. Hey, uh, Ethan, you uh, can you share? Oh, I'm putting yeah, you he's like up he is. he's got it. He's got it. Oh, yep, there we go. Click his click his icon to make sure that it stays up. OK, let me find it. There we go. All right, okay. so it should play the sound and everything through here too. Right? I usually use OBS, so I, I think so. Yeah. All right, let's let's just try it then. No, no sound. Can you hear it? No, I'm not hearing it. Well, I don't know if you even need to hear it. I think you get a good idea to show the fucking yes. visuals of what these assholes are doing. <laughs> it's, oh, it's literally. God. I don't even know if that's a boy or a girl. I think that's intentional. Yes, it is intentional. It's just the little uh, brown people. Yeah. He they're they're literally saying things like Trump wants to deport the Mexican and that's so fucked up. And they got the guy with the Confederate flag hat and he's just being a, a racist cunt to these children and the the children are, are epic poning him in real time with uh with facts about love. The great truth that n the Negro is not equal to the white man. Ooh. Yep, they're preaching the gospel yeah. of sissy fag right at him. Oh man. <laughs> It, it's a good thing that all these that sissy fag has un unmonitored contact with all these children for his fuck hate campaign. I'm really glad that's a thing that's happening. I'm sure that won't go horribly fucking wrong. Yeah, these videos got. Uh, I, I don't know. Let me see. Let me double check. I remember that uh, they stopped doing them after a while because they got so many downvotes. Like he just. I don't. Maybe it was just too much, and he just gave up. Yeah, is what twenty one thousand down votes to twenty five hundred up votes. So basically, ten to one. Jesus, I'm not okay. KK with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so clever, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, no, top tier stuff. Can we? This is this is the thing that's been said, and it, it was kind of cringy when it first became a thing, but now it's just fucking true. Why can't the laugh meme? <laughs> why can't they do it? Why did they put out shit like that? Oh, I can, I can tell you. I can tell you that exactly why. Go for it. Go for it. Um, this is a. This is like the double-edged sword of PC, right? Political correctness took their sense of humor. I, that this is a thing that's fucked them up now for like the last five or six years. They can't be mean anymore, and like if you want to be funny, you got to be mean, and they can't be mean like they used to be able to be mean. Like you're not going to see like a older version of like a Colbert or a Stewart because everybody's got to be nice and PC about it. That's why they can't mean they 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 don't have the access to the same shit that we do, which is just being a fucking. But they're they're no. mean about like they call Trump like an orange pumpkin and shit. I mean like they're mean to him in that way. Yeah, well they call him an orange pumpkin, but they don't call him a fucking faggot, do they? Like I mean, <laughs> you can't go no, I, you can't I I disagree. Really I I disagree. I see your point, but I disagree. I think it's different. I think it comes from the fact that the left is uh, fundamentally is contradictory in its ideology and the right recognizes that and and can poke it. By the way, uh, Zidane just messaged me and said the link got out somehow because you accidentally shared it. So The link um, to what? To the your hangout. chat. Oh, it's fun that's time. What I'm, oh! that's, what I'm being, that's what I'm being told anyway. We're, I don't know. we're getting some callers, boys. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Where? How did the link get? Uh... Oh, and here's our first caller, Big Black Cox. Hello, Big Black Cox. <laughs> 
He said CRP boomered it. That's all. That's all. I, I boomered saw, it. So I don't oh, know. How the hell oh, I see. I see how he boomered it. You're showing the fucking hangout like on your screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 shit. Yeah, because I edited something. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty out there. Well, so what? It happens. And um, let me just figure this out. Oh, fuck. I don't know. What, what I can't wait to... for the first goat to see to pop up. Or, you know, <laughs> <pop> or... <laughs> Thank uh, you, Zidane, by the way. I wouldn't have seen it because I was looking off screen. There we go. Well, I mean, it's too late now, Coach. Yeah, yeah. well, so what? If anybody <laughs> shows up, we'll just give him a, a warm welcome and kick him. Well, yeah. here's this crazy suggestion. Maybe take the Hangouts window down so when they do jump in and show giant black cocks or something, it's not displayed <laughs> to everybody. No, I'll just, like, leave uh, Ralph as the, as the face of the chat. Look, we've been going on for quite a while, uh, so I think that maybe we should just call it, call it quits on the, on the stream. Uh, I thought you were doing call-ins. Oh, yeah, well, I'm supposed to. Shit. Okay, hang on. Let me just first do Super Chats. Oh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were about to get out of here. All right, fuck it. Keep going. No, but dude, if you got to go, you got to go. No, no, no. Come on. Let's do it. I'm going to ride it out. I already okay, decided. Okay, okay. Uh, it's like 90 degrees in my room, but I've been going. So okay, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, Super Chat. The Bastard says, it's nice to see higher IQ talk and not Sargon's BS. Thank you, The Bastard. Schwanz Grub Gruberman, I have no idea what that means, but I think it's pornographic, says, Hey, CRP, nice stream, you boomer. By the way, ask Jim, when the hell is the next stream or video? Oh, and tell Josh to do a stream on Canada Gin 3. Canada Gin 3. I don't know what that is. Probably a username. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, Schwanz Sh Gruberman. Trump Nation, breaking news. A Chinese research group claims to have used CRISPR to genetically edit human embryos, leading to the birth of healthy twin girls. Yeah, that CRISPR stuff is going to be nasty. You know, the manufactured people soon enough. Lurik L. says, question for everyone. How can Hitler did nothing wrong? How can Hitler did nothing wrong if the Holocaust was a fake news? Either way. 148, bang, bang. Uh, Jay Taylor says, I hope all those uh, fuck hate kids get babysat by furries. Oof, that's, that's harmful, Jay Taylor. A thought, I remember a those guys now too, because they would have all these videos with like kids cursing up a storm and shit, and saying oh, "fuck God, this" yeah. and "fuck that." Yeah, yeah that, that was so disturbing. Uh, uh, I, I find it just deeply disturbing when small children use kind of like that kind of adult language. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's the boomer in me, or or just whatever. But yeah, nasty shit. Uh, yeah, let's go to Discord because I have promised to um, bring people in on the Discord, and so I will. Let me see. I'll go just alphabetical. Cyber Vegan, I'm pulling you in. And Cyber Vegan, you're on. Give us your hot take. Oh, shit. Um, hey, so uh, Josh mentioned that you guys were going to um, like do a fucking like, collab at some YouTube studio. I, wanted, I wondered what you were going to do for that. I, I can't imagine what you would do for that. Porn. Definitely do porn. <laughs> yeah, because... The, uh, the possibility of going to Berlin, uh, Josh has been shooting the breeze about it and possibly going to Berlin because they have like a YouTube studio and you can use it. Um, yeah, porn. Definitely to clarify, porn. we're not doing porn together. <laughs> it would be independent <laughs> videos. <laughs> yeah, okay. It, it would be like filmed onanism, I guess then. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, uh, Coach, yeah. they're saying that uh, the volume on the caller is too low. Oh, my volume yeah. on the call is too low. So uh, right-click it and then just... Raises volume. Yeah. Right click who? Me or the on air? The uh, the person. So when you pull the person in, just right click them and then just pull their volume up, and it should should compensate for that. Okay. Thank you so much. Sorry about that, chat. Uh, El Fideo Rubio, I'm pulling you in, and Fideo Rubio, I'm gonna up your volume. Okay. El Fideo, what's up? Hey, hola, coach. Hello. How's it going, fella? Um, I want to um, I want to make a question about one of your latest videos. Uh, is the one about insults and hiding from your life? Okay, so I want to ask you if you think it's better to come up with a plan before leaving mm -hmm. to avoid possible, you know, having to get back to your parents' house and you know be more defeated afterwards and not have the energy to keep on trying. Uh, good question, Alfredo Rubio. Thank you very much. Um, see, I did a video about hiding from your life and like how it seems like a lot of guys just sort of like 
uh, uh, you know, they, they stay at home because they're hiding, because they're scared. And, and sometimes desperation is the only way to go. Just like walk out the door and just go. Now, th the idea of just walking out the door with any kind of plan seems uh, a little bit foolhardy. And so you should have like a plan as to where you want to go or what you want to accomplish, at least a vague idea of your goal. OK, but sitting around and, and drawing up plans forever, like getting all autistic about your plans is, instead of actually doing something is just an, another trap that you're falling into. I mean, just go out, go out into the world with with like an objective of where you want to go, but not that thinking to yourself that you have to have this mapped out plan with all the risks torqued down and, and every variable, you know, game planned or whatever. You just got to go, you know, staying at home, you're going to die. You know, I think that we talk about shit rat and, and, and kraut and we laugh about them because we all recognize, I think, guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, that those guys are just staying at home, not doing shit as opposed to going out into the world, interacting with the world, and getting a job and getting a life for themselves. They're staying at well, home. I think we laugh at them because they're flailing spastics, not necessarily yes. because of, of their accomplishments. It's not, being, it's not being measured. It's just, it's just the flailing part. I, I, yeah, I'd have to agree with Josh on this. The flailing is really what gets my attention when it comes to these fucking retards. <laughs> Well, I, I, my, my thinking is that the flailing comes from the fact that they're, like, hiding out from their lives. But, okay. Uh, next questioner. Let me see. Uh, I'm pulling in Kitty Shekels. Uh, wait. And, and hang on a second. Let me just raise your volume. Okay. Is my volume good now? Yeah, it's great. Kitty Shekels, what's up? How's it going? So, uh, it, it's good. It's good. You know uh, how Kitty Styles uh, says he's a big brain 160 IQ nigga, right? Who's Kitty Styles? He's the, the schizophrenic uh, weed smoker on stream that we talked about. By the way, they're saying it's still low, Coach. You might want I don't know how to raise the volume. I, I have him up to 200%. Uh, okay. uh, am I loud enough now? Uh, I don't know. I don't have anything muted or anything like that, so I don't know how to bring it up. Any oh, we got his question. His question was, what do you think about Kitty Styles? But you don't know who that is. Just normal Discord? Oh, uh, no, it's it's up. I, I don't know. So, so right click your right click. You see the little uh, speaker icon down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, uh, right click screen? the the Windows like Windows itself down next to the clock. There should be a little speaker icon. Right click the open volume mixer. Look for Discord. Make sure it's turned yeah, all the way up. Other than that, I don't really know what you should do. Okay, uh, forget about it. Just uh, tell me your question, and I'll, and I'll relay it to the the chat. Kitty Styles, right? That guy who was spurging out at everybody on stream me earlier today and a couple days ago, right? Mm -hmm. He says he's a big brain, 160 IQ nigga. Right? Kitty Styles says that he's. Everybody uh, else cancels, and oh, you have no reason to. He lives in his little fucking trailer. You, you think he's a little bit autistic? Maybe, maybe, uh, quote unquote, high functioning? I'll ask. Uh, people are asking, I mean, um, Kitty Shekels is saying whether Kitty Styles, who claims to be 160 IQ points and stuff, is actually autistic. I don't even know I mean, who the he, fuck Kitty Styles is. He could Styles be 160 is. IQ, but his, his main issue is that he's schizophrenic, and he, the shit he says is bizarre. He obviously doesn't have it handled correctly, and he doesn't have any ambition in life. He wants to smoke weed on stream.me and get paid for it, so... Like I don't know if he's autistic or or stupid or schizophrenic. Like any the the result is the same, and it's what you see on on his streams, which is uh, kind of sad. It's more sad than funny. I I have no idea. I've only seen an hour of the guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Look, we've been going on for like like fucking six fucking hours. Okay, so I'm gonna call it a stream because it's like too fucking long, and um, I actually have to go to the bathroom and I have to go to a doctor's <laughs> appointment. So. Uh, yeah. This has been the Coach Red Pill Sunday stream that has gone on very, very long. Thank you to my guests for having uh, joined me. And, um, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Take it easy. Thank yep. you, Coach. Good time.